Hi, you are watching. The story begins inside an apartment, where the MC is a cultured man and playing his game. After finishing the boss, his teammates thanks him and at the same time was friendly to him. But he could only sigh as he wish if only he was this popular in real life too. Since the sense of accomplishment he gets from the game vanishes the moment he returned to reality. Our main character is named Wazi, just like the name of the character from a comic he really like. He is weak and cowardly, he is not tall, not rich, and he is not good at studying. Just another average college student, but he also want to be the center of attention. If only leveling up in real life was possible, he could be popular with the ladies now. But his fantasies was interrupted by someone messaging him, so he checks it who it was. And it turns out, it was from the newbie mage earlier who he teamed up with, as she was asking to meet up. This instantly made him smile. But also he wonders if it could just be an old man. But he must look at the bright side. And he doesn't have money or looks. So there's no need for him to be worried over being catfished. And if he does not want to be alone forever, he must make a move eventually. As he trembles to reply, but he still did it. Then the day has come to meet up with his date. So he went out and as he stand in front of a pedestrian lane waiting for it to turn green, he was in a deep thought as he was nervous and excited at the same time. The closer he gets, the faster his heart beats. While this made him think when he was bullied in school, he wants to run, but he also wants to be brave, as he couldn't control his excitement any longer. While thinking how his date will turn out to be, he starts to walk, but Truck Cohen was on his duty that day, and smelled someone that needs an isekai. So as soon as he was in the middle of the street, Truck Cohen did his job. Lying on the floor Wazi regrets not experiencing life more, but as soon as his consciousness fades away, he wakes up looking at a loading screen, so he asks who is with him. The system talks to him and tells him that he will be reincarnated into a new world, but he finally decides to work on improving himself back then, so he doesn't need a new world. So the system convince him by telling him if he finishes all the mission he will reincarnate back to his original world, therefore he accepts and asks for his mission. But before that, the system advises him to try and get used to his new body first before accepting a mission. As he asks where's his arms and feet, the system just decide to show to him what he is. As soon as he opens his eyes, all he could see from his reflection is a mushroom. He couldn't believe it himself as he wonders why he even turned into a mushroom. In panic he looks around to investigate his surroundings, and he could only see snails chewing, and chewing, and chewing. So he looks up for answers, and he sees a huge game interface in front of him, welcoming him in the brave mainland. He was shocked and stunned as he couldn't even find a word to describe what's happening to him. But surprisingly, the system started talking to him, saying that it understands that it's tough to accept what has happened. But the game has already begun, and they don't have the time for him to explore slowly. So, it will transfer all the information directly into his mind. He stops spacing out, and before he could respond, information flowed into his brain. Now he knows that this is a world filled with magic and wonders. Although every region of the world is different, they are all known as the Brave Mainland. Long ago, monsters and humans lived in harmony. The monsters with more muscular bodies assisted the humans in all sorts of tasks. In the humans, who had a higher affinity for magic, would use their magic to help the monsters survive and prosper. Back then, monsters and humans lived and learned together and helped one another, until one day the demon lord named Gollum broke this peace. Gollum was a pinnacle being among the monsters and was seen as a leader by many monsters. It hated that the humans thought of themselves as superior and gathered all the monsters to attack the human cities. To defend against the monsters, humans also gathered their strength, and this gave rise to many guilds that, under the king's order, began exterminating the monsters. Finally, the legends tell how six of the strongest braves gathered together to seal demon lord Gollum. However, because Gollum was still too powerful, the braves divided its body into six pieces and hid them in six locations, which are in the Castle of Time, Pentachrome Desert, Sunken World, Tempest Grasslands, Source Volcano, in the land of the dead. Even after Demon Lord Gollum was sealed, the brave mainland could not return to its former state. Monsters and humans could no longer live together in peace. Furthermore, despite Demon Lord Gollum being sealed, his loyal followers continued to roam the lands. They constantly wreaked havoc across the lands, looking for a way to unseal and revive the Demon Lord. The entire brave mainland will be destroyed if the Demon Lord is revived. 
That's why he has been reincarnated into this world, to stop Gollum from reviving. Lastly, Gollum's followers have already begun their plans to unseal him, so he doesn't have much time left. If the player has any questions, he may ask them now, so he asks to his understanding if he completes his mission he will get sent back to his original world. To which the system confirmed, but he was angry as he asks the system, if does it really think he is one of the six braves, because to his knowledge he is a fucking mushroom, while he was jumping around in anger he slips. The system asks him politely to not be agitated, and it may take some time to get used to his new body, but it urged him to be quick, since his first mission is about to begin. So he tries to stand up, but couldn't, so it angers him even more, as he begs it to at least turn him into a goblin or skeleton, even if they don't want to give him arms. A slime or spider is fine too, why'd they had to turn him into something so hard to move, as he failed to stand up multiple times, he gives up, while he doubts himself cause how can he beat the demon lord as a mushroom, and was losing hope to go back to his original world. But the system is ruthless, as it doesn't care and notifies him the game will still go on, regardless of if the player is ready or not, and it gives him a mission stating to survive the designated amount of time and he may choose a reward between harden or limbs. At the same time the countdown started, and the snails hides their presence, then the system tells him that the mission has begun, and he must survive because they are coming, which made him wonder who are they, but his questions was answered immediately by adventurers suddenly appearing in the scene. He finally felt the danger in coming, so instinctively he bounced to the nearest bush to hide, and since he is a monster they could be coming here to kill him as he watches from afar, behind a tree, while he watches the onslaught happening right before his eyes, as he realized this little children are dangerous, since they brutally kills the snails without remorse and hesitation, but not all of them are savages, as the green snail was picked up by a lovely girl, which made the snail changed his perspective on humans, but it was too good to be true, as she rips it out from its shell, and putting it on her inventory as she looks for nine more. Meanwhile the main character is now thinking that he didn't feel anything when he played games before, but looking at it from the monster's perspective, the players are the real monsters. Then suddenly out of nowhere, the monsters had a chance to retaliate, as the new bee was knocked out by a snail daddy, a level 3 monster, his dream is to be a biker daddy. Although he usually rides around on a skateboard, snail daddy is actually more of a family snail. As the main character saw this, he wonders why he can he see its information and level, to which the system answers that this is due to his ability appraisal. At the same time the newbies attacks the snail daddy all at once, but he was too strong for them to handle, but another newbie appeared and was a level higher than the snail daddy, but he wasn't scared at him and only could see red, so he faced the newbie head on, but his attack were futile since the newbie was well equipped but still he didn't give up, while the main character admires the snail daddy's tenacity and bravery, for the sake of his family he refuses to back down even when faced with such a big disadvantage, in turn this filled his heart with newfound hope as he supports snail daddy with all his heart, but this world does not revolve around friendship and family, as snail daddy was left lying down lifeless, so the newbie ruthlessly ripped him out from its own shell, and claim his price. In turn this made the main character cower as he wonders if we really be able to survive, while he hopes for someone to rescue him, then a newbie sneakily comes up to him, but to both their surprise, the newbies run for their lives, making him asks why they are afraid of him, to which the system answers that it is to be expected as it suggests the main character to look into his attribute panel, so he did just that, and no wonder those newbies run. A level 5 mushroom monster is basically the strongest thing they'll find here. Then he opens the ability list to see that he has two of them, which are appraisal that allows him to see level and basic information of the target, and second is mushroom bash, and it doesn't even cost any mana points to use. So this made him smirk as he realized that although both are just basic skills, if he combines it with his stats, it is enough for him to dominate the starter village. With newfound confidence he hops actively while laughing and searching for his prey, since he already accepts his identity as a monster and has now turned arrogant from his newfound power. After finding his target he immediately used Mushroom Bash and easily knocked out the adventurers, and gained experience points, but the other newbie was smart to run and climb up from a vine, which the main character thought he could easily climb the platform, but he was easily mistaken so he gave up but his attentions were brought back by the newbie who is now with his crew, 
but instead of cowering like before, he was thrilled to see more prey to hunt, so he activates Mushroom Bash again. The tank received it head on, nullifying his attack, so they decide to get into formation while the Wazi is still recovering his skill and throws a barrage of pebbles towards him. After receiving quite a handful of damage the cooldown of his skill is over, so he counter-attacks again, but the tank blocks his attack for the second time. Now Glasses has the chance to attack him so he did, but he dodged it grazing him only a little. He endured the pain while he is thinking that it is as expected. The strength from weaklings grouping up can overpower even a strong enemy. He has experienced it multiple time in gaming world, but before he could attack again, the group ganged up on him as he collapsed on the ground. After that they celebrate as they were excited in defeating a strong foe, but the girl questions why she hasn't received any experience after defeating it. While the main character is smiling, it is because he was playing dead all along. Any normal monster won't know about this high-class tactic, but he finally got them all to gather up unguarded, and beats them all up. After his victory he levels up, as he feels how wonderful it is and all the injuries and pain have completely disappeared. Now he plans to stay here and ambush the newbies to farm experience. By then he will leave the starter village and easily beat the boss after reaching max level. But he was reminded how cruel this world is, as a lighting was cast upon to him, slightly missing him by a hair's breadth, and three adventurers are now in front of him. All of them are beyond his level, as they are here because of a mission that requiring them to exterminate a monster that is causing problems in the starter village. Now the main character's plan was ruined and now he knows he is screwed. Then the mage follows up his attack, casting magic bullets onto him, but he barely dodge it. He realizes the gap is too much for him to handle, so he decides to use his ultimate technique and run like a wind, and activates Mushroom Bash full retreat, while the player was amazed how that was a rare sight since a brainless low-level mob actually knows when to run away. But they don't plan on making the main character escape as the newbie activates his earth cleaver, and made a stone wall in the trajectory of the main character, which he injured himself. But before he could even land on the ground the archer launched an arrow piercing him. Now he lies on the ground, then the system states how disappointed it is, since it thought he was an expert gamer, but he still got one revival coin so it asks if the player wished to use it, which the main character doesn't have a choice. So he did, returning to his full health and gaining a new skill, which he used immediately, as Spore Blast was cast. He used this opportunity to escape, but the adventurers saw his plans and hunts him. While he is running he asks the system how much time does he have left before completing the mission, which it replied that he has three minutes left, so if he lasts another three minutes he can get a reward so it would greatly increase his survival. But the adventurers caught up to him already. As he wonders how they managed to do that, he soon realized that a prey tracking skill was cast upon him before even making an escape. While he dodges their attack, he knows that this is his last chance, so he refused to die like this, as he cast another spore blast. But his struggle was futile as the prey tracking skill is still on effect. So the archer launched another arrow, piercing him again. Now he entered a critical state, and received a debuff in return. Now lying on the ground, almost at death's door, the countdown started, and before they could launch the final blow, his missions were complete, and suddenly a teleportation magic circle appeared from the sky. At the same time thousands of mushrooms fell from the sky, the mage shouts for them to retreat, but the new bee was more than thrilled to slice the mushroom up, as he was ecstatic that his prey is just fallen from the sky for it to be killed by him. But the two adventurers retreat, while the newbie was wondering why they cower, as he called them a coward for retreating, but they ignored him since there is an enchantment protecting the starter village, so he won't die anyway, and he would just revive. Therefore they went on their own way, while the newbie was still basking in his own glory, but he soon realized how foolish it was to stay here in the first place, as a large shadow towering his presence, and a level 60 mushroom king appeared, knocking him out instantly, and now that the adventurers are gone, the main character was hoping that they all come to save him, but he was ignored, as his consciousness is fading away a figure appeared. In a later time, he woke up in a dimly lit place, as soon as he turns around he saw a few corpses of mushrooms, while the pig was munching some few of them. Now he assumed the pig murdered them all and it dragged him here to be eaten later, so he decides to do something, but as soon as he tries to get up he notices his lower body was eaten up already, as it was about to come over to him. He plays dead, to wait for an opportunity to run away. Then as it looms over to him, 
the pig spits out the chewed mushroom and puts it into him. Surprisingly, the scraps helps him repair his body, and after that the pig decides to take care of him. She even sits down near him and went to sleep. After a while, she wakes up and found out that the main character is gone. Therefore, she uses her sniffing abilities to find his whereabout, but before she could go on with her hunt, she remembers to put out the fire first. Meanwhile, the main character is doing his best to run away from her, since he'd rather die at the hands of a boss than being eaten by a pig. But to his surprise, she has caught up quite easily. Now he realized no matter how much he jump, he won't be able to outrun her. So he uses his spore blast, but instead of being scared of it, she was delighted. Therefore, she inhaled it and made her even more ecstatic. Now with Mushroom on her system, she runs full power, while the main character asks the system to receive his rewards. As the two option was presented, he thinks that although Harden is good as defensive skill, limbs can attack or run away. And as of right now, obtaining it is more useful. As long as he has arms and legs, his attacks and movement patterns can have more variety. So he decides to choose to get limbs. Therefore, he got his rewards. But as soon as he uses it, he noticed how pathetic his struggle was. So he curses at the system instead. But it was too late for him, since the pig has caught up to him. So he accepts his fate and asks her to just finish him off quickly. But she just licked him. Therefore, he used his appraisal skill. Now he knows that it is a level 10 monster. So he wonders how will he ever be able to escape this pig if the level gap between them is so wide. Then suddenly the pig notices something suspicious. After realizing what it could be, it tried to convey a message to him, but he couldn't understand. Then the place started to shake, while this was done by something from the outside. So he tries to run, but the pig was ahead of him to escape. As he shout for her to come back, she suddenly realized that she forgets him. So she went back while dodging all the obstacles, and then throws him in the air in order for him to be mounted to her. Afterwards, she nimbly dodges the obstacles and makes out of there in time, before it collapses. Then she turns around, from the rubble, there were wild boars standing at the top as it revealed they were the ones who did this. As a wild boar chieftain emerged from the scene, and looks at them menacingly, but she couldn't careless as she turns around to do her own business. While this anger the wild boar, the chieftain orders them to halt their actions, while the ribbon pig and mushroom leaves the scene. While they were traveling, Wazi is thinking that back in the cave it helped him to recover his body, and now it is bringing him to leave together. Now he realized that this piggy doesn't seem to have any ill intention towards him. While she was sniffing her way through the grassland, he asks the system where they are now, to which it informed him that they are currently located at the Crescent Bay, east of the grasslands, and he is 200 kilometers away from the starter village, to which he was surprised to even be here. But he assumed that it must be the teleportation spell when he lost his consciousness, and the piggy used it to bring him here. Suddenly the pig notices an attack incoming so she dodges it, which startled him. But the attack wasn't done as the pig dodges it easily, while he thinks that there are dangers all around in the wilderness, and thanks the piggy's high alertness. Then a huge frog revealed itself, as he used the appraisal skill to see that it is level 11. Now in front of danger they wait for it to attack. Suddenly it attacks again. The pig dodges it but Wazi was caught. Therefore the pig throws herself at the frog, making it let go of Wazi, and catching his fall, which Wazi appreciates her even more. But suddenly a wind blade was headed to them, which the pig dodged, but the frog wasn't nimble as her, as it was cut in pieces. Now their attention is to the one who casted the skill. While it eats the frog, he appraised it, and it turns out to be a level 19 blade mantis. Although its health points and defense aren't that good, its attack power is scary, but it suddenly felt their presence, which the pig was on guard the whole time, while Wazi advises her to not be rash, while the mantis was readying his attack. As tension was in the air, unexpectedly a rock appeared, crushing the mantis, but it wasn't a simple rock, since it looks like a mushroom as it absorbed the mantis whole. After that it opens its eyes, while Wazi sees that it is a level 26 boulder mushroom, so they decide to hit and slowly get away from the place. After a while the boulder mushroom retracts as they successfully escaped. After a long journey, they were exhausted, but luckily they found a place to rest with a nice shade, and a great view, as it was safe. Now Wazi can appreciate how beautiful this world is. Then the system tells him that, this world is actually similar to his world in the sense that it also has its own natural laws and ecosystems. Therefore he concludes that a mushroom monster like him is at the bottom of the food chain, and he would have died already if it wasn't for Piggy. 
but he won't be discouraged just like that. He need to become stronger and survive so that he can finish his mission and return to his previous world. So he asks System to give him another mission so he can earn some rewards. Of course the System was happy to serve and lets him choose between three difficulty as he proudly states that fortune favors the bold and considers to take the hard mission. But as soon as he hears the mission requires him to defeat one of the four heavenly generals under the Tempest Grassland, he changes it to an easy mission. Therefore he receive a mission requiring him to collect 10 red berry herbs, which he thinks it will be a piece of cake. So he hastily collects the herbs, which surprisingly he collected six of it easily, but unexpectedly, Piggy eats all of it, which made him angry. He knows not to let this slide, since this behavior will become a problem if he lets it be. Therefore he launches attack to teach Piggy a lesson, but as expected his arms couldn't do anything to Piggy, while he was knocked back instead. While Piggy turns around and was happily wiggling her tail as she thought Wazi was playing with her. So she plays with Wazi, making him fly to the air. After that few hours had passed, Wazi and Piggy completed few missions already, such as collecting 30 fruits which rewards him inventory box, and other collecting missions, making Wazi a level 9 mushroom, but was exhausted since while he collected items, Piggy ate them. After laboring all day, he was only able to gain 3 levels. On the other hand, Piggy goes right to sleep after eating all his mission objectives. As he was about to rest he takes this chance to complete another mission while Piggy is asleep, as the system gave him a mission that requires him to absorb all the collected items and he will get an exclusive ability in return, which made him more excited, as he thought it would be easy to absorb all the things he collected, and as soon as he takes out everything, Piggy smelled the aroma and wakes up, and was instantly delighted and visibly shaking her tail, but Wazi tells her no, which made her sad, so he gave her one apple, which gained her happiness instantly, as he has few extra, so he can spare some, but as soon as he went for the rock, he now wonders how could he even absorb it, so he asks the system for more information, which he saw the mission wasn't progressing at all. So he asks since he ate already five fruits, but it is still at zero. Therefore the system advises him to think carefully about what the mission is asking him to do. As he thinks how could he do it, he remembers how the boulder mushroom did it, and it absorbed the mantis by sitting on it. So it is logical for a mushroom to absorb nutrients through roots. So he contemplates if he really has to do that. In a later time, few items are now dried up, and it turns out that he really did absorb it using his cheeks. After the last item was absorbed he completes the mission, and gained 200 experience points, and a new exclusive ability, while he levels up. Looking at his character information, he wonders what is the use of his decompose ability, so the system informs him that he can now decompose level 1 to 20 monsters, and other objects. After the explanation, he decides to rest first, since he used so much SP absorbing the items, but at least he reached level 10. It was clearly an easy mission, but he felt as if he completed a medium difficulty, but it was worth it seeing that it all turned out to be fine. The next day, this time around the system gave him a mission requiring to kill 10 monsters from the area. Now he noticed that the missions are starting to get harder, but him and Piggy are level 10 now. As long as they can find some lower level monsters, they will be fine. Therefore they went on a hunt, while he was thinking that this world is different from an actual game, because the monsters here doesn't respawn in thin air. Suddenly they spotted a level 8 green slime, as they ready themselves, and Wazi attack it nearly killing it. As he was about to deal the final blow, Piggy went and killed the slime, while she was proud of what she did. Wazi was shocked as he shouts at Piggy for a kill steal and now he couldn't get his mission objective, but to his surprise it still was counted and he received some XP. While he wonders how, Piggy spits out a stone, as he appraised it, and was actually a party stone. When two parties acknowledges each other as a team, it will create the effect of forming a party. Now he realized that it was the weird stone they dug up before, and it actually had such an effect, but Piggy's feeling was hurt, therefore he apologized and he promised to find something delicious to eat as an apology which made her happy instantly, so she looks for more monster to hunt. Then few hours had passed by, they only have managed to found four slimes after looking around all day, they even had to run whenever they saw anything stronger, so killing ten monsters isn't going to be easy, but as they were strolling, something attacks them from behind, but Piggy dodges it since her alertness are high, and it turns out it was a level 18 possessed stump, 
as it attacks them again, which they dodge. But now they know that a level 18 monster's attacks are so powerful, and they need to be careful, as he signal for them to attack simultaneously. But they made a mistake, since they didn't expect that it wouldn't even be hurt, and they even suffered a recoil damage. So he talks to Piggy, but she was dazed because her attack was reflected to her. While he looks at an unfazed enemy, he realized what to do next, as he cast Spore Explosion, so they could run away. After looking around the enemy loses interest and went on its way, but Piggy smelled the aroma of the spore as she plans to inhale it all in one go, but Wazi stopped her before she does that, and instead offer himself so Piggy could still enjoy her daily hit. Then she was on her way to look for another monster to beat, but Wazi tells her to stop and that this is all part of his master plan, and orders her to wait and see. After a while, they see the possessed stump has few mushroom growing around its body, and was clearly taking damage and was weakened, so they attack it together, completely defeating it in one go. Now they manage to jump levels and kill the monster stronger than them. If they use this strategy, they can kill all the possessed stump that they meet, and before they could leave he asks Piggy to wait, as he sits on the stump to absorb it. After a while Wazi finally finished absorbing the stump with his cheeks. To his surprise he obtained more experience from using Decompose than when he killed the monster. But unfortunately his ability cooldown is a little too long. Then he noticed he also gained some single cast ability. So he asks the system for information, which it answers that. These are abilities he obtained from monster he decomposed. At most he can receive two of a monster's abilities. And this are consumable and will disappear after single use while abilities that has duration will last 10 minutes instead. This made him excited as he believes. Usually when a hero is asked to kill a boss monster, they're given cheat skill, and the ability decompose is his cheat. And now with this he felt even more confident in defeating the demon god. In a later time, they rest in a mushroom-made cave. As Piggy was resting, Wazi is thinking hard. Although he is progressing steadily right now, trying to stop Gollum's followers from reviving him at his current level, is like a mantis trying to stop a chariot, so he asks the system if he continues to level up at his current rate, how long will it take before he can change his class, which the system answers that monsters cannot undergo class change, instead, they get stronger through evolution, and monsters has its own unique evolution pathways, but it can also have special mutations depending on their environment and other hidden conditions. This intrigued him so he asks when he can evolve. It tells him that he will receive his evolution mission once he reached 20, and he will receive another evolution mission at level 40. He asks what is the strongest evolutionary pathway is for a mushroom, and he doesn't want to evolve into the dumb-looking boulder mushroom that he saw before, so the system will happily provide him an evolution pathway, but it requires him to offer 200 gold coins for each pathway. Now Wazi grasped the system's intention, and is now showing its true colors, but the system was a professional scammer before, so the system tries to convince him that it is actually generous. Therefore it gives him one pathway for free, which it showed him the pathway of the boulder mushroom, as it made him think. Who would have thought the dumb looking rock could evolve into something like this? So after that the system sales talk him into offering 200 gold coins, since if he knows the evolution pathway, he can collect the requirements beforehand. Wazi then tells it that he knows the system is not dumb, so why does it think a monster like him would have gold coins? It replies that where there's a will, there's a way, so he should think of ways to earn them. Well if it turned him into a human, he might have been able to gather some coins to give it, but right now he still is just a stupid mushroom. Therefore the system tries to make an exception, and will accept materials in exchange, but Wazi stands up and does not need it, since no matter what it say, he already have an evolutionary goal in mind, and that is to become the Mushroom King. The next day, they were in the field, and was dodging the attacks that were coming to them, as they were fighting a Blade Mantis, because they obtained a new mission requiring them to defeat it. Then Wazi used his one-time use Bark Skin, and launched himself to the Mantis, as he was confident that its attacks no longer works on him. But he was mistaken, now he realize he is going to die. Therefore he called out Piggy, to tells her the game plan. Now with a plan in mind, they went on separate directions. Suddenly Piggy rushes to the Mantis, so it tried to land a strike on Piggy, but she was too fast for him, as she successfully knocked back the Mantis. While this was happening, 
Wazi uses his camouflage to erase his presence, since the Mantis attacks are powerful and fast, but its awareness of its surroundings is absolute trash. No wonder the dumb-looking boulder mushroom could successfully ambush it, and when he saw an opportunity he activates Mushroom Bash and killed it instantly. Thus they leveled up, making him proud as he claims to be a pro gamer, so he asks the system for another medium difficulty mission, which it did, and it requires them to go to the Mushroom Kingdom. Now it seems he is about to enter the main quest line, so he asks how far it is, which the scammer system answers that it is actually not that far, since it is only about 400 kilometers away, making Wazi angrily asks if it is toying with him, which the system tries to calm him down by telling him that he actually doesn't have to walk the entire way, since it can tell him other ways to get there for a low price of 200 coins, but Wazi decides to ignore the system as he looks at the bright side and leaves it to Piggy as she proudly accepts. At a later time, with 20 kilometers progress, the two can be seen resting as they exhausted all their SP, and even with Piggy's help, they have only made it this far after an entire day, as he can't help but sigh in realization that 400 kilometers is too much for them, which the sadistic system reminds him that he can't cancel mission once he starts it, as it challenge him, that maybe he can find some other way to get there. Therefore Wazi knows the system wants money, so he states to give it some, but before that he asks for a freebie first, which the system firmly tells him that he won't receive any hints unless he can provide gold coins, and it knows Wazi doesn't have any money, so with no choice he lies down while cursing the smartass that decides to give him a pay-to-win system after turning him into a mushroom. Then somehow the system tells him to try to play around with his abilities, maybe he can unlock something new, as he was shocked to hear a hint from the system, and was about to do that but unexpectedly someone violently descends from the scene, as it appears two adventurers came, while this shocked Wazi to see a familiar face, as he sees his level, he couldn't believe how fast the mage's progress was, even with a system he could only reach level 16 after so long, but the mage has already reached level 28, and there's even someone else besides him, at the same time, the bald mage loudly states that he finally found it, while they approach Wazi, Piggy didn't hesitate to block their way, but her level wasn't enough to be their opponent, so she was easily sent flying by a kick from the mage. This shocked Wazi, as he sees Piggy's unconscious state, but the mage just walks past him, while the hooded mage wonder why would there be such low-ranking species of demons so far out here. At the same time the bald one was happy as he risks his life for so long, he finally got his hands on the final requirements for his class change, a firestorm hawk egg. But to Wasi's perspective the mage is talking about him, making him tremble in fear, so he uses his spore explosion. This surprises the bald mage as to why a mushroom know this skill, but to the wooded mage it wasn't new as he asks his companion to leave the place, since this place is dangerous. To their surprise Piggy launches an attack, but the baldy dodges it, making Piggy hit the stone with a vine on top of it, and now it was acting weird, while Wazi came back for Piggy. At the same time the mages were amazed at a new mushroom they see, as it got limbs, but suddenly the merry go vine unwind and swings the stone around as a defense mechanism. As Wazi was about to get hit by the vine going berserk, he uses Bash to help him leap to get to the top of it, but the situation escalates as the vine was hitting its own, and causing a ripple effect. Now Wazi was concerned as it was going out of control, while the mages were doing their best to dodge all the attacks. But the other monster on the ground wasn't lucky as one of it was hit by the vine and was absorbed by it. After that the vines calmed down, but regrettably for Wazi, the two mages weren't happy of the outcome, as their faces were beaten up. Therefore they ready their attack, but the Firestorm Mother was back, while they cursed at how their 1000 gold was for nothing since the mercenaries they hired was too incompetent to even hold back the Firestorm Hawk for a little longer, while the Hawk didn't even hesitate to attack them full force, but the mages managed to block it. While the fight happens, Wazi appraised the Hawk, as it turns out it was a level 47 monster, but he couldn't see the information since his level is too low. Meanwhile the mages were talking about how to deal with the situations, as they have almost depleted their mana and couldn't block another attack from it, but before they could come into conclusion, the hooded mage was swiftly killed on sight, as it startled the baldy, while the fire hawk finished eating the torso of the mage it turns to look at him menacingly, but now the baldy has a chance to drink the potion since it is far away, but still the hawk was fast enough to lessen the distance between them. 
Therefore, the baldy was desperate, so he threatens the mother hawk to break the egg, which the hawk suddenly stops its advances, but still the baldy sustained damage, but now it was confident enough as he laugh, knowing that a high-ranked monsters like it really do have intelligence and emotions, and now he demands it to obey him. As the hawk hesitates, he casts Thunderbolt onto it, paralyzing it temporarily. Now the baldy has a chance to mock the hawk, as he tells it that he is turning level 50 soon, but he still haven't gone through his second class change, so everyone thinks he is a joke, and even a guild doesn't want him. Not only that, because of his age, the requirements for his class change are also more difficult than those younger people, but he can finally vent his anger today. Not only will he finally go through his class change, he will even be able to kill a high-ranking monster like it, as he laughs creepily, and kicks the mother hawk's face, while he was probably shouting his plans after he changes class. After he vented his anger to the mother hawk, he decides to end it, so he takes out the synthetic potion, and coats his icicle spears with it, to kill the hawk quickly, as it pierced it in every directions, but that still wasn't enough so he charged his attack for another attempt, while still having a disgusting smile on his face. But while this was happening, Wazi used his camouflage to hide his presence and find the best direction to attack the mage without the mage noticing his attempt. Therefore without hesitation he attacks the mage, cancelling his attacks. But the mages also let go of the egg, which Wazi catch in the nick of time. Now that the egg wasn't a hostage anymore, the mother hawk attacks the mage knocking him over a rock. Now the mage realize he fucked up, so he decide to run and use his recall scroll. But it was too late, because the mother hawk already cast fire magic infernal pillar on the spot is sitting on, and burned him to a crisp, making the mother hawk level up, so it healed its injuries and made it powerful even more. After that he went over to the mushroom, as it stares down at Wazi and anticipates something to happen, thus the egg revealed a crack, and then a chick emerged from it, and was looking around, then it hops down, and when it turns around it saw Wazi, so it went over to him, and cuddles with him. The mother hawk got teary-eyed, as it was crying with joy, seeing her child was okay, so she went over to talk to her baby, but she was kicked on the face instead, shocking them all, as it controls its anger, Wasi was already dripping with sweat while he tries to convince the chick not to do that again, but to their surprise, Piggy has two chick on her back, this made the mother chick make a face full of love, so it tries to talk to its children with a smile, but she receive an uppercut instead. After that, the chick went over to the mushroom and pig, as they thought they were their parents, and was playing as if nothing happened, while the mother hawk was all alone abandoned, while Wazi noticed the situation, so he thought of an idea, so Wazi ordered Piggy to follow him. Now they are face to face with the mother hawk, so it stared down at Wazi, looking to kill the ones that stole her child, but still to her surprise the chick defended them with their kind of menacing look. But Wazi tries to correct everything, and tells them to not do that, and conveys a message to them, as he acts what he wants to say, and that their real mother placed her life on the line to protect them. So they went over to her, and now they finally reunite, while Wazi was overjoyed at the outcome, as he loudly states that, now that they have helped out the mother hawk, she will definitely repay them. Then they can ask her to take them to the Mushroom Kingdom and complete the mission. But somehow the mother chick looks over to them with a menacing look. Now Wazi doubts that his plans worked. Then the hawks turns around and leave. So Wazi tries to pursue them while he asks how can it just leave like that, without taking them to the Mushroom Kingdom. Suddenly the mother chick stopped its tracks, and glares at them, while it says how dare a low-ranking monster like him orders him around. Now Wazi realize it understood what he said, and also can talk and the mother hawk was actually a father, now he realized that he fucked up, then the hawk decides to come closer to them, and asks them what qualifications does he have to demand something from him, but the poison was still in his system as he cough up blood, weakened he collapsed, and now his consciousness is fading away, and the last thing he saw is the menacing figure of the pig and mushroom charging at him as he was about to pass out, in a much later time, he woke up, but as soon as he opens his eyes he saw the chick was burning, Still dozing off he was shocked, but he soon realized they actually do that and it is normal for them because they are a firestorm hawk, but was also annoyed seeing the pig was close to his children, so he tries to stand up but failed, as he realized that even leveling up wasn't enough to cure that synthetic poison, then he investigates his surroundings and sees the mushroom was handling the potions, as it asks what he was doing, Wazi smiled, and now that he is awake, 
he brings a potion to the hawk and forced feed it to him. While this made the hawk angry since he doesn't even have the strength to resist the low-ranking monster anymore, but he soon realized that it wasn't a poison but an antidote, and it is a good thing they brought an antidote to the poison, but it will take a while for the antidote to work, so Wazi advises him to stay still. Then he asks why did he save him, which he replies, what will happen to the children if he dies? This made the hawk delighted to hear that, as he reconsider his actions towards the mushroom. He sits up, while Wazi clarifies that they don't have bad intentions, they just wanted to go to the mushroom kingdom, and was just passing by. So the hawks state that the path there is littered with powerful monsters, and even if they somehow manage to make it, as a mushroom he will be fine, but that pig will be in trouble. He asks why is that, the hawk was surprised that he doesn't know, so he informs him that, the king of mushroom is actually quite famous, not just humans, but any monsters that doesn't belong to the mushroom tribe. Once they get near that area, they'll be attacked without question. With this info, Wazi now realized why the hawk got so angry when he asked it to take them to the mushroom kingdom. It turns out that was the same as asking it to send itself into danger. While he was in deep thought, the hawk looks at him closer, which startled him, while it states that Wazi is very weird. A normal mushroom monster like him should be brainless existence, but he is intelligent, and someone like him is an incredibly rare existence, and he would make the perfect tonic for his children if they eat him, which made Wazi scared as he retreats, but luckily the hawk was just messing with him, because he is not the same as those humans who would plunder everything for their own selfish desires. He doesn't really care what they do with the shell after his children have hatched, but in order to obtain the shell, the humans would steal and break the eggs before they hatch. His previous nest of kids, and the nest before that, all of them were destroyed by those despicable humans. While thinking this, made him furious, but this time around, his children were able to survive because of him. So he thanks the mushroom, which Wazi accepts his gratitude. So the hawk decide to bring them to the mushroom kingdom tomorrow, and advises him to rest up, which made Wazi cheerful. He tells him to shut up before he change his mind, which he obliged, but before he sleeps he will just fix some things. This made the hawk curious, so he looks at what the mushroom is doing, while Wazi is mixing the potions, and is experimenting a bit, adding everything in his disposal, and after that, he uses his cheeks to absorb the potion, and after that he throws up the juices that he absorbed, the hawk can't believe what he witnessed, while Wazi proudly gives the stamina potion to him to help him recover. Now the hawk realizes where the potion he consumed earlier came from, as this made him furious. After a long day they rest, but this day was not wasted since Wazi received tons of items, and decomposed potion recipe. The next day, the father hawk is now taking Wazi and Piggy to the mushroom kingdom. Wazi then tells Piggy to not be afraid, and once they get there, she must listen to what he say, which Piggy agree, while the hawk warns them that they are getting near the mushroom kingdom so they must prepare for descent. After he says that, they instantly went lower, making Wazi a bit sick, but once they saw the view, they can't help but admire it. In front of them is a large city known as the Mushroom Kingdom. Suddenly projectiles were cast upon them, but the hawk dodges it and counters attack. Wazi asks what's attacking them, he answers that it was his own kind, and standing on the kingdom walls are the few of the best mushroom vanguards such as a mushroom magician, and it can make a normal mushroom transform into a bomb mushroom, and based on its name, it has the ability to self-destruct, which it happily went over, and mount itself into a cannon mushroom, and it charges itself to sneeze. In order to launch the bomb mushroom towards the enemy, the hawk easily dodges the attack, but surprisingly the bomb mushroom uses spore explosion to change its trajectory, and once they are close to the hawk, they pull the trigger to self-destruct, but the hawk still has few tricks of his own, and uses fire magic wall to block the explosions, so now they are past the outer layer. He explains that he will take them into the inner area, and after that they are on their own, but clearly they were too dizzy to even reply. As the hawk was nearing his destination, he suddenly felt a presence, a powerful aura filled the lands, as it warns him to fuck around and find out. So he halt his advances, and explain to the mushroom that this is as far as he can take them, since if he goes any deeper, he won't be able to make it out, while assuming that terrifying amount of magic is from the Mushroom King. So as soon as Wazi opens his eyes to look where the hawk is dropping them, the hawk lets go, and now they are falling several feet from the ground, but the hawk isn't as cruel as the system, as they landed on a rainbow, to their surprise they can slide on it, making their descent more comfortable than they assumed. 
While this made Piggy happy, Wazzy was internally traumatized by the experience, but as soon as he thought they are safe, several boulder mushrooms looms over them, and this terrified Wazzy by their ugly stare, but the boulder has no reaction to Wazzy, but as soon as they look at Piggy it was a different story, as they were all enraged to see another species inside the kingdom. Wazzy realized what was happening, but Piggy was a brave one as she faced the enemies head on and shouts at them back, which Wazzy smacked her to come to her senses, and drags her to run, but the boulder decides to pursue them, while they're not fast, but their numbers right now is too much for them to escape. After attempting several times, they were cornered, with no choice Wazzy takes a risk, and uses spore explosion, blocking the boulder mushroom's view, while he use every arsenal he got, and do it everything swiftly, and once the spore dissipates, he smirks as he proudly state that the boulder mushroom misunderstood them, but the mushroom was still agitated by the intruder, but Wazi asks them to calm down, since they are one big mushroom family, and behold a new species of mushroom, the piggy mushroom, while piggy was clearly humiliated beyond comprehension, as silence filled the scene and was even deafening, at the same time a mushroom fell from Piggy, which the boulder clearly saw, but Wazi easily explained that Piggy is shedding right now, so it is normal, then, they leave the place, while the boulder couldn't comprehend what they experience, now Wazi and Piggy can breath easily, as they got out of there unhurt, while he thanks that those things were so dumb, but appreciate that this disguise is actually pretty good, and a normal mushroom shouldn't be able to see through it, but unexpectedly, a not-so-normal mushroom was standing near them, as it states that Wazi is quite an interesting young fella, as they were cautious about his presence, he continues that Wazi must be a monster being controlled by a human, so Wazi use appraisal to see its information, and it turns out that it is a Shitakanobi and both his level and information is unidentified since Wazi's level is too low, while this shock Wazi as it can even speak, and he knows that he can't fool him with ordinary tricks, but the Shitakanobi felt appraisal has been used onto him, and that is a skill only humans have, therefore he concludes that he wasn't wrong about Wazi being a pet controlled by a human, but Wazi tries to convince him, but Shitakanobi caps was thrown at him, as he closes his eyes, Shitakanobi was suddenly behind them, as they couldn't even see his blade while he sheathed back his katana, while he coldly state that there is nothing to talk about, as the guardian of this territory, the chance that any potential threat gets passed in is zero, since he is named Kage, one of the four great mushroom generals. As Wazi turns around to explain, he soon realized it was too late for him, as he was cut in half and died on the spot. Piggy couldn't believe what happened, and as soon as she realized what happened, she only felt fury, and throws herself at Kage, but he was serious about eliminating all outsider, as he swiftly cancels Piggy's attack, and once she was stunned, he was about to slice her in half, but fortunately the Mushroom King Horns was used, and this was sign for him to go to the King's aid, but it wasn't just him, all of the Mushroom went over to the King, and somehow this also glues back Wazi in his original form and was revived, he was surprised since he obviously died just now, and didn't have any revival coins left, but before he could find answers, he searched for Piggy, and saw her unconscious body, he tries to check if Piggy is still alive, but she was unresponsive, Therefore he cries as he lets out spores since he couldn't control his emotions, and blames himself for her passing, but as soon as Piggy inhales his magic shroom she suddenly was energetic and was clearly unharmed, as they saw that each other was fine, they were thankful and started to bond, as they can now breath in relief that they survive, but the sounds of the horns of the Mushroom King still persist, thus Wazi was hypnotized, but Piggy tries to pull him away, it woke him up at first, but the horns was too strong so now he was hypnotized again, and run as fast as he could to the Mushroom King's aid. In a change of scene thousand of Mushroom are charging at the adventurers, and was an all-out war. Amidst the conflict, a tank blocked the enemies from the rear, the swordsman slices through the upcoming Mushroom, while the archer killed the one who sneak attacks, but still this wasn't enough as Mushroom Trooper were heading towards them in numbers, but they all froze in the spot. As they see Rank Ice Mage appeared to aid them, suddenly Mechashroom also appeared for a surprise attack, he tries to block it, but his ice wall was useless as the drill went through, and pierced his body, this enrages the level 49 Fire Mage, so he eliminates the Mechashroom in front of him, and decides to take him back to the city, the archer reminds him that he will be punished if he run from the battlefield, but to him his companions are worth more than himself, so he doesn't care about the punishments, 
and he joined the guild because of the respect he has for the fire and poison mages that founded it. But from the looks of it, they see them as nothing more than some cannon fodder, since they have watching this entire time without taking any actions. But the tank blocked the upcoming attack and reminds them to focus in the battlefield. While he knocks back the mecha mushroom, the swordsman follows up and kill it. After that Waga tries to convince them to retreat, but the swordman disagrees, because he believes this is how their guild tests and chooses its members, and they have been fighting for so long. Giving up now is something only a fool would do, and if they want to rise to the top, they must take the risks, and subjugating the Mushroom King is the best chance for them to show off. While the tank agrees and back up on the swordman remarks, the swordman adds that he might still be unimportant right now but one day he will rise to the top of the guild and become a sword saint, inspiring everyone who hears it. But unfortunately for them, the Mushroom King used his horns to revive the fallen mushroom. Now he panics. The tank advises them to regroup, but he was knocked out with one punch by a muscle mushroom. Therefore Waga had enough and plans to burn all of them into the ground as he cast greater fireball, but a mage mushroom transform a mushroom to block it while the cannon mushroom fires at will killing Waga on the spot. As the chaos happened from below, the flying boat of the Firebane Guild is just hovering from the sky, and on the flying boats are the higher rank adventurers. Seth Yubel, a sword general, asks Lilith if she's done with her preparations, which she is not, and is trying to control a monster from a far away distance while also avoiding detection and the Mushroom King's control. While the Jonin named Naya kindly asks Lilith to be a little faster since he couldn't let their comrades fight on their own, and asks Marianne an S rank high priest if she can bear to just watch their guild members die, but she was unresponsive. While Borea, an A rank master gunslinger, disagrees and replies that the value of their third rate members are useless, and their guild only believes in result, and he adds that without the order of the vice leader, all they need to do is stay here and watch while the vice leader just look at them and couldn't care less. Meanwhile the needle mushroom gives support by plucking his needles to give it to a normal mushroom, transforming it into a mushroom trooper. But his needles were all gone before he knows it, which wasn't a problem to him since he can make it grow forcefully. Now the mushrooms are ready and were all well equipped for battle. Meanwhile the king was approached by an assassin mushroom, and aimed directly at the mushroom king's horn. Now the adventurers has succeed in destroying the secret treasure of the mushroom king. So the vice leader ordered them to descend and fight now, which they gladly accept. At the same time the Mushroom King was angry at what happened, while the assassin stabs the Mushroom Trooper and making it its pawn, as they attack the Mushroom King altogether. But they were easily eliminated by a bullets piercing their body, and this was done by Bayu, a great Mushroom General. But the assassination wasn't done, as another monster was controlled and sneaks attack, but failed as it was turned into pieces. Now two mushroom general appear, while the king was furious in seeing his mushroom was controlled by humans. After he absorbs the enemy, the king shouts and orders them to charge full force. So they did. Meanwhile, Piggy still wasn't letting go of Wazi, slowing his advances, but he soon regained his will, since the king's horn was destroyed. While he was confused, Piggy was clearly annoyed, but their attentions were brought to the battlefield, as they see the chaos happening in front of them. While this amazed Wazi as he sees a variety of mushroom fighting in the war, so he roots for the mushroom to defeat the humans. At the same time the swordsman was now traumatized, and lost all his will to fight, but suddenly the higher rank adventurers enters the battlefield, as the swordsman could only feel small and look at their backs. Then Seth asks Miss Marianne to send everyone out of the way, so they can fight without fear of causing friendly fire while Naya was kind-hearted as he says a word of encouragement and acknowledged their hard work, before they were sent back. Therefore Miss Marianne cast mass teleportation for everyone to go back and even the corpses wasn't left behind. Now that they are the only adventurers present, the mushroom outnumbers them greatly, but Seth just decide to not waste time, and clear out the rest of the enemy, and with a full swing, he uses Hero Blade to eliminate most of the mushroom on sight. Then Naya casted Shadow Clone to multiply his attack using Reign of Iron skill. While this was blocked by the Mushroom Magicians, they were eliminated precisely by Borea. The Cannon Mushrooms sees him so it simultaneously attacks him. But for Borea they are all too slow, as he still have the time to boast before using Sunset Sleet, cancelling their attack while also killing the Mushroom Cannons. Meanwhile the other Mushroom aims for the innocent and most fragile looking adventurer, 
but she has a secret weapon to defend against them. As she opens her pouch, a furry's hand appeared eliminating the monster that is in front of her. While Wazi sees the onslaught that happened, he noticed that it is just like high-level players clearing waves of low-level mobs. After that Seth orders them to get ready and aim for the king next, so they fire their attack simultaneously to merge for a more powerful attack, but the king wasn't phased by it. As it gets closer, something comes out from the ground, and it tanks the attack head-on, as it grinned with a cool shades, since the attack he took has only damaged it by one, as it was a level 92 diamond mushroom and now all the general are present, therefore they entered the battlefield while the adventurer were thinking how to deal with the diamond mushroom in front of them. But before they could decide a way to subjugate it, the diamond mushroom lowers its shades, as it decided to give the adventurers a face they couldn't forget, so it activates its own light skin stare. But Seth doesn't want any of that, as he activates his vanguard, while Marianne supports him with goddess favor, making the attack redirect all over the place, as Borea was amazed seeing how it can turn dirt into diamond, and wants to make a profit with it. But the diamond mushroom wasn't done and was slowly sipping through the barrier. But fortunately the attack stops, and it decides to go back and looking cool with its shades, and absorb the sunlight, while Seth can finally breathe in relief, as he thinks that even with Miss Marianne's support, he almost couldn't hold off that attack with Vanguard, and it was too close. He almost got everyone killed. Then Lilith points out his damaged hands, but he already tried using different types of recovery potions, but none of them work. So Marianne came over to him, while she activates her angelic powers, and used Angel's Kiss to deactivate the debuff. While Naya was astonished, seeing that she completely healed such a serious debuff, no wonder she is considered as an S rank. After that they praised Marianne and was getting ready to fight again, a bullet has suddenly appeared in thin air, but Seth managed to block it before someone got hit. Now they were alerted and was looking for their opponents, but again another bullet was headed towards them which Borea counters. Then Naya realized something, so he activates magic detection. Now he sees that the mushroom were using stealth magic and are in front of them. Then a cross slash was used, which they dodge, but now they are separated. So Seth orders them to take each one, while the mushroom also spread and block their path of advance, since they can't let them get to their king. Then Naya looks around to find his opponent, but Kage calls out to his attention and launch a barrage of attack which Naya could barely defend, but Marion is supporting him and heals all his wounds, so Kage went straight to Marion, but he couldn't ignore the attacks of Naya so he block it first, now Naya is in the offense, while they battle intensely, Borea is targeting Kage from afar, but before he could pull the trigger Bayu was right behind him, and blows his head off, but he was just a sniper decoy, and the real attack comes from behind, which Bayu blocks it with ease. Borea acknowledged her reaction speed, but Bayu couldn't care about his remarks, so she launches for a counter. Both fighters engage in attacking and dodging maneuvers in order to defend themselves. Then Borea mocks her to make her lose focus, but Bayu launch another attack, which Borea claims that he can see the trajectory of all her bullets, but unexpectedly the bullets change trajectory as he barely dodges it. This in turn irritates him and loses his composure, while Bayu follows up her attacks but he still has a few tricks to show her, as he re-equips a new gun, and materialize a heavy machine gun to spray at Bayou. Meanwhile, Seth asks Marianne for a buff, so she complies, as he gained several buffs before he faced the diamond mushroom. At the same time, Garrett is aiming for Miss Marianne, but it was cancelled since he dodged an attack coming from the furry, as Lilith proudly state that she can smell the nasty stench of a dirty old mushroom, so his little tricks can't help him hide from her. Therefore Garrod laugh as he reveals himself, while he realized that it seems like the ace of their team is that furry hiding in her pouch. So with a tap of his staff, he summons a shroom o' war to launch an attack, which Lilith lets out the furry she's with, to block the attack by eating it. Then Garrod advises her to not feed her pet everything she just want, since it just ate a deadly toxin. So he wonders how she will fight without that savage animal assisting her, but to his surprise, the furry counter-attack but he takes out a Ling Ji shield on time to block it, but even that wasn't enough, and break into pieces as the attack went through and knocks Garrod flying in the air, as Lilith mock him for even attempting to poison her pet, since it was raised on her guild leader's poison, so his poison couldn't even compare. Meanwhile Seth is going through changes as he receives all the buff and transform into a gym rat, while Garrod coincidentally was knocked to the diamond mushroom, 
and now Seth has a perfect opportunity to kill them both, so he swing his sword in full swing to use it as a projectile, nearing his demise. The sword was easily blocked by the king, while Garrett apologized for troubling the king to defend him. Then Seth called for his sword to get ready to fight the king, as he mocked the king for being nothing more than a slightly bigger mushroom. Meanwhile Naya has fought Kage for 93 rounds, and yet he still keep losing, but it is a good thing that Marianne is healing him. If he can drag this out long enough, Kage will eventually run out of mana, but Kage has other plans as he charge at Marianne again, so Naya tries to stop him, but he was mistaken as Kage launches his attacks on him, while Marianne tries her best to stop the cut, but Kage was too strong, as it passed through his stone skin, and even damaging Marianne in return. Now that Naya is dead, Kage states his favorite line, and that the survival rate of any human who attack the Mushroom Kingdom is zero. Meanwhile Boria is still gunning down Bayou, but she uses her hair as an ammunition to make a fungal net in order to block Boria's attack, but Boria still has more ammunitions to offer, but to his surprise he just aimed for a decoy, so he re-equips his weapon and block another attack from Bayou, while she imitates what he said before, to try and mock him. Then he asks her how did she do that, which she answers while lighting her smoke, and as a professional gunner, relying solely on powerful bullets and rate of fire is not enough, and advises him to pay more attention to other aspects. While she talks he reminds her that they are still fighting and was about to pull the trigger, which she advises him again to pay more attention, and look again, since he is the one who's in trouble. So he did, and look at the mushroom sprouting, which he was disappointed about it but he was mistaken as it flashes a blinding light to him, blinding him temporarily. But Bayou still was talking so Boria used his hearing sense to locate her. But unfortunately for him, Bayou anticipated that, as another mushroom sprouts, and release blasts of deafening sound to disable his hearing. Now with two of his senses disabled, Boria decides to retreat, but he steps on a mushroom that instantly grows, which made him bounce all the way back. But now he regained some of his eyesight as he plans to kill Bayou after recovering, while he was furious how he got toyed with by these low-level, trash monsters, and plans to burn the place to the ground, but this also powered the shroom in front of him, as he fuels it with malicious intent it explodes, throwing him like a rag doll, and was thrown back to Bayou, so he tries to pretend to be unconscious, as Bayou got closer he take out his gun but was unable to pull the trigger, as he was covered in slime preventing him from even moving. Now unable to move he could only curse at the pathetic mushroom that is all over the place, but Bayou went over to him and teach him a lesson that there are over 40,000 different types of mushrooms here, and not a single one can be underestimated, but there's only one type of human, bad ones, and asks him who is the trash now, as she pulls the trigger, giving him a deserved death to the face. As the battle happens, Wazi was amazed in seeing how strong the mushroom were, so he wonders if he evolves, can he be as strong as them? but even they're strong, they're still subordinates of the Mushroom King, then just how strong is the King, but suddenly he saw a figure in the distance. At the same time, Seth comes over to the King, but he sees that he's small compared to it, therefore he uses his secret technique and as inhales his heart was filled with energy, and his muscle exponentially grows, so he ignites the War General's battle spirit inside him, now he transforms into a giant that equal to King's height. Then he asks why the king didn't attack him while he was transforming, and did he learn chivalry from them humans, but he adds that he will not go easy on him for that, which the king was annoyed. Then they start their battle as they clash their sword. Seth attacks the king with his might while the king just redirects it. So he attempt to attack again, but the king block it with ease and redirects his attacks again. So he launches numerous attacks while mocking the king, and in turn his blade even reached where Wazi is located which he dodges it in the nick of time. Now he realized that even spectating is dangerous, but suddenly he felt something. As he was wondering what just happened, the system is notifying him of an emergency mission being triggered. While Seth is still battling the king and mocking him, Garrett is fighting the furry that is with Lilith as he realize how strong it is and he cannot let this monster get closer to the king, while he struggled to block its every attack, and even his counter was easily nullified. As Lilith informs him that the furry is immune to magic, now Garrett realized he is completely suppressed. Then Lilith noticed Seth is having hard time dealing with the king, so she asks the furry to come out, but it requires her one dragon bone, which she was hesitant to give, 
and annoyed that her furry has been eyeing the things inside her pouch, while Seth halts his actions, and is thinking that to his knowledge the Mushroom King is only at level 60 at most, and with Miss Marianne's buff, and his own abilities, his abilities have increased seven folds, so he wonders how the king is still keeping up with him, while in deep thought the king mocks him, now this made Seth furious on how dare a monster belittle him, since he is just an overgrown mushroom, therefore he ignites the battle spirit to a hundred percent, and leaps in the air to attack the king with all his might, which the king twirls his rapier before deflecting Seth's attack, while Seth was confident to beat the king's sword, but he was mistaken as he was thrown to the side, and was now suppressed, as he couldn't believe the outcome since the king is only at level 60, then the king follows up his attack, while he was fast enough to block, the king's attack was too much for him to handle, as this pierced through his sword losing his arm and a chunk of his body, this made him return to his normal size, as the king went over to him, he asks it to kill him and be done with it, but he just stands there, now Seth realized that it never put him in its eyes to begin with, and was toying with him all along, as he bleeds to death, now that Seth lost, Lilith gave the permission to the furry to eat the dragon bone, therefore it decides to come out, fearing the furry, Garrod decides that he must stop it, so he charge his ultimate attack and direct it to Lilith, but the werewolf still managed to block it, as it carries his master to safety, Garrod didn't hesitate to attack it, but he was easily knocked out, as he states that he will deal with the battle, he disappeared and was now behind the king, which the king tries to block, but this time he was crushed to the ground. Even shocking Wazi and Piggy, as they anticipate what will happen next, Grey Grey begins to attack with barrage of strikes. Suddenly the two of the generals sneaks attack on him, but he block it. While he look over to them, Bayou asks if he was the one who killed Locke, one of the great mushroom generals, which Grey Grey replies that he has killed too many weakling before, so he wouldn't even remember the names he killed. As they attack, he was so fast he vanished, and the two generals couldn't even see where he went. Bayou was suddenly on the ground, and now Grey Grey is behind Kage, but before he could hit him, he used Cross Slash to attack him, he receives the attack and as he acknowledged Kage's ability since he actually was able to scratch him, then Garrod teleports to the scene and activate magic detection, with sense sharing, in order for them to detect all Grey Grey's movement within 50 meters, they were shocked as they still couldn't see him, while Grey Grey is attacking them from all directions without them detecting him as he uses his monstrous power and speed, while they struggle to even defend. Wazi wonders how strong is the wolf, but the system blocks his view as it notifies him about the emergency mission, then it showed him the rewards as it only requires him to vanquish the demon god Gollum's follower since the system has detected it, which surprises Wazi, but he declined it since the current him couldn't do anything about it, and orders the system to stop blocking his view, because he has a show to watch. Meanwhile the generals realized how Grey Grey did it, and how he is not even serious, and realized the difference in their strengths, as he swiftly went over to them and knocked them both. As it turns out he was a former werewolf king named Lycan, and is a level 92 monster. And now the two generals were thrown where the strange figure was, but they didn't react to its presence. Now Wazi is wondering if they couldn't see the black shadow, and if it is a human or perhaps some kind of monster that is living nearby so he assumes that it must be the golem's follower that the system was talking about, so he decides to appraise it, but he just receives an error instead, as he wonders how could that be, the shadow looks over to him, as this startled him, but the shadow instantly appeared in front of him, in front of danger he thinks of a solution, as he look over for answers, he saw that piggy isn't reacting at all, so he conclude that he is the only one that sees it, while the shadow transforms its part into a scythe and points at him, as it gets closer, he was thinking of ways how to get out of this situation alive, therefore the best solution is to play dumb as a normal mushroom, as he lies down and rolled to retreat, while Piggy thinks that he is playing with her, so she went over to him, now he plans for Piggy to play along with him, so he explains that if he keeps rolling away by himself it'll be way suspicious, so he asks her to push him into the forest, away from the cliff, which Piggy claims that she understood so she rolls Wazi with determination back to the cliff, as he still pretend to be a stupid mushroom, while cursing at Piggy internally, but to his surprise the shadow buys his act, as it turns around and floats away, while it takes out a demonic looking bell and ring it, coincidentally the mushroom king has woken up, while the generals were getting beat up, and although it seems like he is walking over slowly, 
Kage's intuition is telling him that he is continuously attacking with a barrage of fists that his eyes can't keep up with, while Bayu uses her hair again to try and slow down the wolf but it was meaningless as he rips it with ease, but she follows up with the flashes, but he wasn't affected by it, as he points at his eyes and informs them that he has long since been blinded. As the wolf approaches near, their death comes with it, as he launches another attack to finish it once and for all, but his attacks were received by the king head-on, but he greatly sustained injuries, as he regained his consciousness again but somehow his flesh begins to rip, the wolf follows up his attack which the two generals tries to convince their majesty to not do this, but he talks to them, only the generals could understand, while Kage was hesitant to leave, he was barely holding on as the king orders them for the last time, which Kage was loyal but also stubborn as he orders Bayu for them to protect the king, but Bayu knocks him out, as she only accepts the king's commands, while the sage appeared and explained that their king transformation is due to the demon god Gollum and anyone that accepts the demon god's power into their body will undergo demonification and gain a demon king form, but at the same time, they will lose all rationality and become a mere pawn for demon god Gollum. To protect them, their majesty has accepted that power, as he was forced into a corner, and undergoes demonification. While the wolf smelled a familiar scent, and while he felt the same mysterious, magical power as back when Fenrir took the position of king from him, and if his senses are correct, then he must finish this before he can completely transform. Meanwhile the sage asks Bayu to take care of the king's heritage, since the future of mushrooms will be up to her and Kage, which she was shocked to hear, as the sage sends the two of them away from here, while he casts tunneling fungi for them to escape. He adds that he had served three generations of mushroom kings, so he will accompany his majesty to the end. While Wolf used his powerful attack onto the king, he was surprised the mysterious magical power and oppressive feeling is actually getting stronger. Amidst the fog the Mushroom King revealed his new form, as the demonification was complete, and is now a fallen Mushroom King, then his tentacles stretched out to the sage, as he willingly accepts his faith, to him it is an honor to become his majesty's strength once more. After the sage was consumed, the king gained more intelligence and limbs as he can now walk closer to the wolf, he tries to kick it, as he was right, but this thing is much slower than Fenrir, so he believes he can simply tear the king to pieces with his speed, as he attacks the king in every directions, and decides to end it by attacking from behind, but his plans didn't go as planned as the fallen king suddenly turns around, and use demon king's spore, he manages to get away, while he proudly claims that his fur has both magic and poison resistance, as long as he closes his eyes and nose, his spores will do nothing to him, but he soon felt weak, as he noticed that his hands is now infected with decaying shrooms, as he realized that he was wounded by Kage earlier, so he bites his hands off, but the decay spread to his arms already, so he rips his entire arm, but he soon realized that it has spread all over his body already, so he called his master to help him, which Lilith comes to his aid, and puts him in the pet inventory, since within a beast master's pet inventory, they can use their MP to heal their pets, but her inventory started to act all crazy, and her mana points are dropping exponentially. Soon the pet inventory explodes, and it was too late for Grey Grey to recover, while Lilith loses consciousness because of the trauma. So Marianne take her body to a safe place. As they are going back to the ship, the Fallon King launches his tentacles to take them, but its tentacles were incinerated by the Vice Leader, as he orders Marianne to go back to the ship, and he will take it from here, which Marianne was about to offer her help. He firmly states to listen to him, which she understood. Now the vice leader is facing the fallen king, and was looking at it from below. The fallen king inhales to cast multiples demon spores at him, but it was useless since it incinerates when coming close to the vice leader. Now the fallen king finds another way to attack him, so he grabs the diamond mushroom, and use it as a projectile, which made Wazi surprised and he accidentally spoke, until he remembers that the shadow figure is still with them so he tries his best to act stupid again. Meanwhile the vice leader summon a fire spirit, and throws her to deal with the diamond mushroom, so she burns the mushroom, and the vice leader follows with incinerate, burning it until its eyes were the only thing left, as he obtained a triple S rarity crafting ingredients, while the fire spirit wasn't fond of his actions, as he unsummons her, but the fallen king is now behind him, as it opens its other mouth to consume him. After that, it slowly approaches the black shadow, but his belly started bloating, 
as he felt that something was wrong, so it tries to contain it, but he couldn't handle it, as it bursts from the inside. Since the vice leader has activated Rebirth of the Phoenix, and obtained the crown of the king, while he couldn't believe how embarrassing it is that a level 60 monster actually forced him to use one of his trump cards, and it is a good thing no one saw that, and before he leaves he casted Armageddon to get rid of the evidence. While the Dark Shadow sigh as his creation was destroyed, so he leaves the place, so Wazi doesn't have to act anymore, and wakes up Piggy and tells her to run, so they did, but Wazi lost hope as he sees several fireball towards them, but Piggy picks him up and dugs a hole to hide from the catastrophe. After a while, the Mushroom Kingdom is now in ruin and was still burning, and Piggy and Mushroom came out from the hole that they dug, and was perfectly cooked, but the system gave them the rewards in completing their quest, so they leveled up and all their injuries healed, but this does not save them from the fact that the Mushroom Kingdom is now gone. While Piggy was hungry, Wazi is in deep thought, and thinking about the events that he witnessed, and it is not the Mushroom King was too weak, but that the human braves were too strong, then a sudden realization comes into mind, and that if he became the Mushroom King, wouldn't he still be like a weakling in front of the stronger humans? Then the system shows him a medium difficulty mission, and it requires him to find a method to evolve in the Mushroom Kingdom and evolve into the next stage, but he simply state that he doesn't want to do missions anymore which the system tries to convince him that finishing missions and evolving is his fastest path to growing stronger. So he stands up and adds that he doesn't want to evolve anymore, and have decided to be a mushroom brave, as he shouts with determination. At the same time, the tunneling fungi emerged from the ground, and the two generals came out from it, while Kage is still mourning about the king's death. As he decides to go back, they use Maxim sense into him, and reminds him that this is their king's wish and asks him if he wants his majesty's sacrifice in vain, while he still grieves, and without their king, what is there to live for, which Bayou sits down and calls him an idiot, and tells him if he wants to die, he could do that after they have completed their mission, since they must fulfill their king's final order, as she showed the king heritage to him, this made him regain his composure, and now he was convinced that their mission is far from over, few days have passed, Wazi and Piggy are now traveling, while the system keeps reminding him that a monster cannot change their class. Annoyed he asks if the system isn't tired of doing this, and asks it to just show him the map properly, since he wants to know how long it will take before he can get back to the starter village, which it did, as he thinks loudly that now they have been walking for over a day now. If the map is accurate, they should get there by tomorrow, but the system still keeps pestering him about the error, so he asks it to stop and clarifies to it that he will just go to the starter village to take a look, and he is not planning on changing his class anymore, therefore the system stops the message. Meanwhile Piggy looks at Wazi as its tummy growl, but his mind is set on to find a way to change his class, and he believes that stamina potion is enough to satiate Piggy's hunger, as he orders her to go full speed ahead to the starter village, while Piggy's tummy is still growling. In a change of scene, at the place called Source Volcano, Lava, heat in volcanoes fills the place, as the volcano erupts, the rocks that came from it, is a food source of a lavaconda, and they are mostly at level 50 and up, and this creature is common around this place, while the ship is traveling back to the guild, and the Eye of Firebane guild, has barriers that protect them from unexpected projectile, while it ignores an ally as the ship easily passed through it, then a bell rings, to notify the people of their arrival, the vice leader went straight ahead to the main castle, as he opens the door, a kid runs towards him and happily welcomes him, as it turns out that kid is the guild leader named Balin Hawk, and a level 119 poison master, then he asks if he has the materials that he request, which he takes out the crown, and gave it to him, which made him happy to receive it, as he jumps and acts like a kid, then the vice leader asks him for the thing he promised to give him, so he halts his celebrations, and takes out the medicine he synthesized for his big sis Marianne, but it slips from his hands, which the vice leader catches as he seemed to be used to this kind of things, and he adds that he has sent all the corpses to Balin's lap just as he ordered, which he was thankful for, and so he went on his way, but before he leaves, he asks him if the Mushroom King undergoing demonification and turning into a demon king, was also part of Balin's plan, 
to which he smiles got darker, as he turns around and feign ignorance as he doesn't even know what a demon king is. So the vice leader decides to never mind it, and tells him to just call for him if there is anything else he needs. And now that he is outside, he orders Marianne for them to go. As they were walking Marianne suggests for them to stop this, since so many people died because of her. He responds that he was the one who ordered them to go there, and they will leave once he finds a way to get rid of that poison in her body. As for the ugly stuff he will take care of it. Meanwhile Balin descends using a spiral staircase which leads to the ceiling altar, with the golem's heart, now in front of it. He throws the crown into the lava, and as it melts completely, the lava slowly rises up, and now another part is complete. The cat spirit queen eyes, and mushroom king's crown have now been absorbed. Now there's only one more ingredient, while the true follower of Gollum is beside him. Whether he sees it or not we do not know for sure, as his smile gets darker with his intentions. Now that he is close in obtaining the true love's heart, Gollum's power will be his, while the place trembles because of this. Two days later, the two are still traveling. They have met all sorts of weird monsters on the way here, and it is a good thing Piggy is faster than them, but for some reason, the system stopped responding after displaying the error message last time, and it is kind of boring without anyone who can talk to him, and the mission interface also got stuck on this mission, but it is a good thing that the other functions still work, as he look at his ability panel, next is inventory, which he remembers that he initially wanted to use decompose to absorb all the spoils left behind from the battle, but that bastard fire mage scorched the whole place to the ground, the only thing left was the skin of the werewolf king, and just thinking about it makes him angry, since he has spent a few more days at the mushroom kingdom while waiting on the cooldown for decompose, then he used it on the magic staves while sitting his cake on it in a most satisfying way, but still the magic staves didn't give him anything good, most were heavily damaged too, so they only gave him about a hundred experience each, which he realized using decompose on just anything isn't very effective, and then he attempts to use decompose on the werewolf king's pelt, which the result is even worse. Not only did it fail, the cooldown was still triggered, and it made him waste a whole day waiting for nothing, which the system informs him that the target's magic resistance is too high, and advises him to try again when decompose reaches a higher level, as Wazi is angry at it for not warning him earlier, and shouts at it to give him back his time, and that is not fair, but actually, the system already explained the limits of decompose, which he just forgot. Suddenly he noticed that Piggy is acting strange. As she collapsed, he used a praise to know the problem, as he was shocked to see that he can now see other monsters' abilities. But with further investigations he sees that Piggy seems fine, and wonders why Piggy suddenly faint. So he asks Piggy what's wrong, so he offers a stamina potion, and a health potion, as he was clueless on what happened to Piggy, while he dangles the apple in front of her. Her eyes locked on the apple, so she instinctively went for it, as she was desperate to eat it, but this made Wazi think that Piggy felt better, so they started to continue their path. Now that they are very close to the starter village, he noticed the snail monsters are starting to appear again, and since they are close to the starter village, he takes out a recall scroll, and activated to take them to the starter village, and when he used it, magic circles formed below them, and magic started to form, but it was cancelled and the system informs him again that monsters can't use the recall scroll, which Wazi was angry, since the troll system, says to him the distance was too far so it couldn't be used, and now that they are closer, it is telling him monsters can't use it, and he asks if it is toying with him, but it just showed him his current mission, so Wazi waves it away as he tells it to stop trying to make him do that stupid mission, he can't even use a recall scroll as a monster, he wants to become a brave, and it can't stop him, Wazi is still optimistic as it doesn't matter to him if they can't use the recall scroll, since he is not in a rush anyway, and if he can evolve at level 20, that must mean that the class change also happens at level 20, as he smiles while planning to farm newbies, since it is the safest way to earn experience and level up. After that he taps Piggy for them to go, but she was unresponsive, so he asks her if she is feeling unwell and offers a health potion, and tells her to hold on a little more. Once they level up, they can get rid whatever illness she has, as he was clueless of the situation Piggy is in. While in the distance the boar and the chieftain is looking at them from afar, specifically at Piggy. Few moments passed, Wazi and Piggy is near at the starter village teleportation gate, 
so he used appraisal to see its information. Now he knows that it teleports the people when they are in critical condition. So no wonder the newbies didn't die when he defeats them last time. Unfortunately, the appraisal didn't tell him when the newbies would come so he had to wait there. Coincidentally, the newbies started to appear, as they are now energetic and hopeful to level up this time. The lovely looking girl appeared again in front of the snail, as she brings down judgment to kill it brutally, and the other kids follow, as they stab, slash it, and burn it, as they are now confident since there are now a higher level newbie with them. But Wazi is not going to let that happen, as he appeared and cast Spore Explosion, and once they are too busy trying to breathe, he swiftly beats them to a pulp, with this lord here, who dares to harm his little snail friends, and went on knocking down the slightly higher level adventurer, while Wazi noticed that the experience that these newbies give is a little low, but luckily another punching bag appear on the scene, which Wazi was very delighted, as the newbies were energetic to kill the snails, but they were beaten by a mushroom instead. Now the second wave of newbies are killed, and he earns 630 experience points, then the third wave with 540 EXP, and the fourth wave was a little more smart as they climbed the platforms, so that the mushroom couldn't get them, while Wazi just smile with malicious intentions, as he sees his prey just delay the inevitable, while the adventurer gained a false sense of security. Wazi used Mushroom Bash to leap and now the fourth wave of newbies killed, and he earns 720 experience points. After a day of manual labor and slaughter, they rested in front of a campfire. Wazi offered the health potion as a dinner, as he taught that the potion could help make Piggy's hunger go away, but Piggy didn't even want to look at it. This concerned Wazi, so he looked at her stats while he wondered why she didn't want to eat, since he hadn't given Piggy any potions today, but her HP and SP were still okay so he thought it would be fine. Then he tells Piggy to just sit back and rest, since she has been carrying him all the way here, and must be too tired, and to leave all the experience farming to him. Then he looks at his attributes, which made him ecstatic to find out that he is now level 18, and all it took was a day of farming newbies, and as long as he keeps this up for a few more days, he will be able to reach level 20 safely, and since it is night time, he decides to sleep and save stamina potions for tomorrow. So he sleeps besides Piggy and say goodnight to her, while Piggy opens her eyes, to see Wazi, as a mushroom-shaped steak. So this filled her with excitement and went for a bite, but she regained her senses and controls her hunger. While in the distance, the boar chieftain is furiously looking at Wazi. The next day, Wazi wonders why no one is showing up today. Coincidentally they showed up, but now they are scared and unsure. Unexpectedly now they are with a more experienced adventurer, because the village head asked them to protect the newbies, and to hunt the mushroom, as they wonder why there is a mushroom here anyway, since the mushroom kingdom was destroyed recently, but they assumed that it must be a stray left behind from a previous wave, and what surprised them more is the village head even hired a level 40 war general. Speaking of mushroom monsters, the blue-haired adventurer heard the axe guy fought with the mushroom king before, which he proudly states that, he was still a newbie following two seniors back then, and was unfortunate that they met a monster wave. So in order to let the seniors retreat safely, he stayed to hold the Mushroom King back, and it was a shame he was too weak back then, but he still managed to injure it, and it must be because of that injury that the Eye of the Firebane Guild was able to defeat the Mushroom King. While he boasted about his lies, Wazi appraised them, and was thinking that, it is a little risky to challenge them, as the two are already as strong as him and Piggy and there's even a level 23, but to his beliefs, fortune favor the bold, and as long as they can take the other two out, Piggy and him should be able to team up and take care of the level 23, and even if they can't defeat them, surviving and running away shouldn't be an issue with his potions. So he tells Piggy to wait for his signal, but Piggy was out of it, but he didn't notice it, as he used Spore Explosion, and while the adventurer's visions were blocked, he targets the newbies first swiftly, this alerted the three, then the tanks asks if they would save the newbies, which the other two responds that the newbies are just baits, and the reward for killing the monster is a lot higher, so they just aimed for the monster, as Wazi attacks them, the tank blocks it, but the attack just went through, defeating him instantly, which surprised them how powerful the mushroom monster they are dealing with, while Piggy on the other hand tried to help, but was too weak to stand up, so she collapsed. Then the axe guy used Tomahawk Cyclone to clear out the spores, and he sees that there's even a ribbon pig here, and he has heard a lot of gourmets would pay a high price for this, 
and would make a much bigger payday than the mushroom. Then the blur-haired guy went to kill it, but Wazi was there to protect her, knocking the blue-haired guy to the ground, but he used the potion to heal. The axe guy advises him to stay back if he can't do it, which the blue-haired guy still insists on fighting, while Wazi asks for Piggy to stand up, which he was still clueless on what's happening to Piggy, while Piggy is just staring at him with glistening eyes. As it turns out Piggy now sees him as a mushroom steak. At the same time the axe guy is still boasting that he can fight them both, and takes out a potion, which blue hair guy asks what it is. He answers that this is his secret weapon, a berserker potion. So he drinks it all, and now he is full of berserker spirit, and his level is increasing exponentially, and now he is a level 38 as he states that. Although this can only last 10 minutes, it will be more than enough to take care of them, while Wazi curses, since who would have thought that he had such a powerful trump card, so with no choice he decides to use his secret technique too, and attempts to run as he shouts for Piggy to do the same, but the axe guy uses earth cleaver, and break the terrain to block their path of escape, now with walls in every directions, they can only face the adventurers, at the same time Piggy is still looking at Wazi like a stake, and has clearly lost control over her desires. Unexpectedly the adventurers can be heard pleading for their life. Suddenly the walls collapsed, as the adventurers comes with it. The axe guy couldn't believe the outcome. He even drank the potion but was still defeated by a pig. After that Piggy ragdolls him and toss him away. Now that Piggy knocked the adventurers, Wazi and Piggy has leveled up three times, while Wazi was still baffled on what he witnessed, and was wondering how did Piggy get so strong, but Piggy was still out of it as she turns around to look at him, and was definitely eyeing him like a snack and was drooling all over the place, so Wazi used appraisal since it leveled up just now, and to see what's wrong with Piggy, and to his surprise, Piggy's satiety has reached zero, therefore she is now in berserk state which he was shocked since he thought that stamina points is supposed to be satiety, and now he realized that drinking potions didn't help relieves Piggy's hunger. With this information, he tries to reason with Piggy, but Piggy lost control as she could only look at him as a food. Realizing this he tried to run, but Piggy pursued him, as he apologized to her, while dodging her advances one after the other, and was thinking what to do, since if he gets hit by Piggy, with her attack stat right now, he will be one shot. But he can't drag this on forever either, because Piggy is losing HP as time goes by, as he curses at himself, to not realize it sooner, because he was perfectly fine drinking potions this entire time, so he never bothered collecting food, now that Piggy's in this state, he can't get food even if he wanted to, while he was thinking if he could just let her have a bite a little bit, but to his surprise a perfectly stacked apples is right in front of his path, while this puts him off a little, he was in no way right to question it, so he points at it, hoping for Piggy to see it, which she comes closer but went straight for the pile of apples as expected, then Wazi waits for her nervously, as he anticipate what's about to happen next, but Piggy comes out fine and has now fully recovered her cuteness, as Wazi can now sigh in relief, and decides to sit, in order for Piggy to take her time eating, while he wonders who left a pile of apples here in the middle of nowhere. After that, Piggy's fully satiated, and Wazi is now planning to sneak into the starter village and steal the secrets of class changing, so they decide to go through the teleportation gate, while the boar chieftain is standing from the distance while looking at them depart, and it turns out was just looking out for them at the distance, as he dealt with the level 40 war generals and his companion, and probably the one who left the pile of apples for Piggy to eat, while Wazi felt butterflies in his stomach and his hands trembling in anticipation, since he is about to enter the starter village, for the current him, the humans at the starter village are like babies, and he is the adult who is going to be stealing all their candy, as he laughs while thinking about doing horrific acts. While he says out loud, starter village this lord is coming for you, but he hits a warning sign, as this filled the place, and a flyer comes flying at his face, and as he looked at it he was surprised, how could it be possible, that this world's language is written in English, but he decide to forget it, and assumes that it must be a part of the perks of transmigrating. After all he can understand what the humans were saying and read the words on the system. Meanwhile at the starter village, an endless stream of people entering and exiting, suddenly a high-level monster appeared, causing panic, but before it could kill anyone, it was dealt with quickly, while the arrows almost hit Wazi. Now he remembers that villages and towns always have invincible NPC guards, therefore he thinks of a way to enter the village. As he looks at Piggy, 
he got an idea. Then a hooded individual is walking amidst the crowd, as they gossip about the current happenings in the village, while the hooded individual is dangling an apple in front of him. As he was about to enter, the sentry soldiers ask him to stop, so he did, but the soldiers just reminds him to dispose of his apples properly after eating, or he will be fined for littering. As it turns out the hooded individual is Wazi, wearing a mustache made from piggy's fur, and using a robe from the mage that was killed by the father hawk, and is using the apple to guide piggy forward, using its smell, as he taps himself in the back for being such a genius. In a change of scene, the center of the village is brimming with life, and with different variety of shops were available, such as a potion shop, weapon smith, monster barbecue, and a library. While Wazi is thinking that although he has seen this kind of scene multiple times while playing games, it's a completely different feeling being here in person, but he decides to find a place to collect information on how to change class first. While they were strolling he noticed that everyone gathering around in a single place so he went over to look what's happening. As it turns out, the newbies have gathered and was talking about how they couldn't go out anymore to level up, and couldn't collect ingredients for their class change, so now they're hiring a level 60 brave. But they lose hope, since a level 60 brave wouldn't be in a starter village to begin with. While Wazi hears this he remembers hearing that the snail daddy shell was used for class changing. While the newbies are discussing on what would they do now, since the price of snail shells is now over 50 gold coins each, the rich people can still afford it, but what about them, and if they don't hurry up, they might just miss this year's class change ceremony. Which the baldy just faced the truth and tells her that there's nothing they can do. The class change ceremony will be held this afternoon. Even if they can go out right now, they might not collect enough, not to mention there are high-level monsters out there right now. Which she asks why would they hire a level 60 brave to fight a normal mushroom. He answers that the mushroom monster wasn't normal, not only did it have a bunch of abilities that normal mushrooms don't, it's also intelligent and knows how to strategically use its abilities. They couldn't escape, even after they climbed onto the platforms. Hearing this Wazi now realize why there were almost no more people showing up, and it's because he scared them all away, but it's also a good thing he never met the level 40 brave, and not to mention if they somehow really hired a level 60 brave, after receiving all the information he needed, he decides to go now, but unexpectedly he trips, and now their cover has been blown, and they are exposed for everyone to see, so he cowers down as he fears that the people will call those sentries by the gate, but he was ignored while the newbies wonder whose pets they are, and the owner must be very rich to be able to buy these monsters since their popularity has been skyrocketing recently. He noticed that they are not attacking and now see other monsters walking around too, since Beastmaster can sell monsters they have tamed to others as pets. However, the level of control other classes has over monsters is low, so they can't control high-ranking monster species. Now he assumes that they think he is a pet, with this it makes things much easier for them. Therefore he follows the most familiar looking character he saw and blend themselves as a pet, and before they realize they are now at their destination, so they leave the group to go to the village's head. Now that their goal is up ahead, they can't be seen walking around all alone without a human, so they follow the next human who walked past them. As they were too busy conversing about meeting each other coincidentally, then the black-haired adventurer was wishing he had chosen to become a priest instead of a beast master since the biggest guilds are constantly recruiting priests and healers for their teams, which the orange hair responds that he is looking down on them beast masters, and reminds him that the strongest beast master, Lord Barbaro, is ranked third in the entire Brave Mainland, he's only ranked behind the Sword Saint, and the Elemental King, those two legendary figures, and it's said that even angels and demons were subdued by Lord Barbaro, and they should also try their best and maybe one day they can also tame a powerful high-ranking monster, which the black hair wasn't too optimistic as him, as he states that the angels and demons are beings that are untouchable to even high-level braves, and he wonders what level Lord Barbaro has reached to actually be able to tame them, and as for people like them, they are more likely to win the lottery than reach that level, which the orange hair asks where is his ambitions, and advises him to dream big if he wants to achieve more. While Wazi was just now informed that there are angels and demons in this world. 
Now that they are in front of the village head's house, they felt nostalgic and was reminiscing the past. While this was the perfect opportunity for Wazi and Piggy to go, as the two continues to talk and was envious of each other, for having a mushroom monster that's rising in popularity right now, and a rare ribbon pig, which they both thought the other secretly summoned them a while ago, as they realize that the two pets are not theirs, they look back at it, but they were gone before they knew it. Meanwhile the newbies are waiting outside, for the village head to appear, as they are starting to get impatient, the door finally opens, and the village head named Broccoli emerged from the dark while he was barely holding himself to stand, and was apologetic since he overslept, but the newbies still respected him so they greeted the village head, then he orders them to go inside, so they did, while Wazi is now in his robe, and was thinking that this village head seems to be a little senile, so he should be able to sneak in without him noticing, but as he was the last one to enter, the village head stops him, while Wazi thinks his cover has already been blown. The village head tells him that outside food is not allowed in the house, so he took their apple, which Piggy tries to revolt, but Wazi managed to stop her. Now without the apple they were struggling to navigate the place, but they still got through from the dark hall. Then Wazi was amazed to see the divine tree in front of him, and the thousand of books that is gathered here, and this made him think. Looking from the outside, he thought this place would be like a small wooden hut, who would have thought that such a majestic tree exists here? Then the village head tells them to put the materials in front of the divine tree mother so they can start. While Wazi asks himself, wasn't the village head behind him, and why is he suddenly so energetic? Then the village head asks everyone to bring their materials out and pray to the divine tree mother, she will be the one to help them unlock a class based on their talents, and once the ceremony is over, they can come back tomorrow to find out what class they unlocked. So they did what they are told, but the village head noticed that Wazi is just staring, and advises him to quickly bring out his materials, which he was hesitant, and asks if he can use other things as a replacement, since he has something more valuable than a snail shell which the elder says no, and clarifies that other than snail shells, he doesn't need anything else, and asks him if he is here to cause trouble. Wazi retreats, as he noticed the village head is like a completely different person, and wonders why he is so determined to get snail shells, while the system appeared, and informs him about the previous mission failing, so a new mission will be issued, which annoyed Wazi since he is in trouble right now so he talks to it irritably, but the village head hears him using monster's tongue, so he approached Wazi as he states that humans can't hear them when they use monster's tongue to speak to each other, and asks him who he is. As Wazi was still talking to the system, he asks what does he means by monster's tongue, but the village head suddenly vanished, as he appeared in front of him and was about to strike, while the system issued the new mission, so they were teleported before the village head could kill them. Now they are suddenly teleported to the penalty space. Wazi wonders what happened, but he soon realized where he is, so he asks why he is getting a penalty for not doing a mission, which the system explained that because he has continually refused to do the missions given by the system, he has entered the penalty space, and his goal is to jump up 10,000 platforms, and if he fails to complete this within the time limit, he will be penalized with death, which the timer has started counting down. This greatly annoyed Wazi as he curses at it for being a petty son of a bitch, because it never mentioned there was a penalty for declining missions. But the system is still ruthless as ever, as it doesn't care, and just wish the player all the best, and it recommends the player to start moving as the timer has started, which Wazi shouts at it to get back, but he soon realized that it was useless to shout at the scammer system, as he wonders what to do now, since he has no choice but to do this, if he doesn't, he will die. 10,000 platforms in one hour, that's almost three platforms a second, so he has no time to waste. He then orders Piggy, for them to go, since they have to make up for the time they already lost. While he looks at the platform he was thinking that with his mushroom bash, getting up by a few platforms at a time is possible, so he used it and was successfully at the nearest platform he could jump to. Then he asks Piggy to quickly come up, since their life is at stake. But Piggy was just circling around and was trying to tell him something. Now he realized that Piggy couldn't jump that high, so with no other choice he carries Piggy on his back. Now he successfully was able to jump on few platforms already, but this puts too much strain on his body. So he was thinking to rest, but he knows now is not the time for rest. So he took out his potions to keep going. After that he started to leap again, but while they are in the air, Piggy sneezes. This made them fall few platforms. 
which they received damage. So he is thinking if he misses his jump a few more times, he might just die before the time is up. And looking down, it doesn't seem to have a bottom in this place. It was a good thing they landed on a platform, otherwise they would instantly fail. He then tells Piggy, that was too dangerous, and advises her to warn him before she does that next time, or else they are going to fall down again, which she claims she understood, but he knows that she doesn't. Then several mushroom bash is used, and potions devoured as he jumps through the platform without stopping. He made progress slowly but surely, while his mushroom bash was leveling up since he has been using it continuously, while he was thinking that even though it's hard, carrying Piggy while he jump is quickly leveling up his mushroom bash, and as the level gets higher, he can jump higher, with a shorter cooldown. Right now, he can pass 10 whole platforms with a single leap, and before he knew it his mushroom bash reached level 10 and they are now in front of the last platform, while there is still 2 minutes remaining. He was thinking that as long as he can make this jump, they will be able to escape from this place, but the distance is a little too much, so he advises Piggy to not move, since they can't afford to make any mistakes here. After preparing themselves, Wazi uses Bash to leave this death trap, but he failed as they fell several platforms again, while he was cursing since they didn't even get close, but he went back to try once more, but he kept on failing again and again. Then as he was about to try again, Piggy interrupts him with a lick. He tells her that now is not the time, but Piggy hops off from him and nudges him, telling him to go without her. He realized what she meant, while Piggy just smile at him. As tears comes out from him, Piggy comforts him, so he used Mushroom Bash again, and without Piggy, his max level Mushroom Bash was easily able to bring him to the last platform, as he was thinking perhaps this was all planned by the system to help him grind experience for his abilities, but in turn Piggy was left behind, so he asks the system if his assumptions were right, and that this is his punishment, so Piggy shouldn't be affected by the penalty, which the system informs him, regardless if the host completes the requirements or not. Once the time is up, the penalty space will collapse. As for the result of whatever is still inside, there is only death awaits them. Now that there is only 42 seconds remaining, he looks at Piggy and apologize as he looks up at the exit. And so he jumps. Now he is back with Piggy. This shocked Piggy, while he state that he will never leave here without her, which Piggy revolt and was trying to convince him otherwise. But his mind was clear as he looks at her and tells her again that he will not leave her behind, because they are going to leave together. This action made Piggy realize something that she never knew before, so she hops on Wazi's back again, and for the last attempt, with hope and determination, they use Mushroom Bash again, so they got closer than ever before, but still that wasn't enough, therefore they fall for their death. As they were falling, Wazi closes his eyes, as he curses that they are really going to die this time. But he soon remembers what he saw in the Mushroom Kingdom, and just like how that bomb shroom shot itself forward, now he knows what to do, but there is just 5 seconds left in the timer. He grabs on Piggy, and now it was all or nothing for them, so he uses Spore Explosion to his limit and rapidly lets it out, as he unlocks Mushroom Jet Stream, and was able to complete the mission in the nick of time. After completing the mission, they were teleported back from where they left. Luckily, Piggy fell on Wazi softening her fall. Piggy looked at Wazi with glistening eyes. Wazi noticed that no matter what happened, she always had a smile on her face. Then he shouted at the system, asking if he could do whatever he wanted since he had cleared the punishment. However, it did not respond, but still, he now appreciated his system, which wasn't useless after all. He had only spent an hour in the penalty space, but it was already night outside which helped them escape the village head. He tapped Piggy to follow him since no one would bother them now, so it was time for them to change their classes to Brave. While Piggy was staring blankly, entranced with Wazi as she remembered what he had done back then, he noticed she was not following, so he called for her again, and she happily followed him. Now in front of the materials, Wazi believes that these snail shells should be the secret in changing class. According to how adamant the village head was, he wonders what's the connection between the divine tree and these snail shell, and how does it help the human class change into brave. With further investigations, he witnessed the little green lights get absorbed inside the pot, so he took a few of those jars and pour it all in a more bigger one, to be the super class change material. Although he didn't prepare any snail shells, he believes that it should be fine if he borrow from others for a bit. With over 10 portions he borrowed, 
the Divine Tree Mother should be even happier. So without delay he started to worship, but to his surprise, nothing's happening. So he asks himself if his methods were wrong, but he followed what the village head told the other people to do. So he assumes he needs to empty his heart like they show in those TV dramas and praise the Divine Tree Mother. So he did, but there's no reaction at all. Now he believes that his method of worship is wrong. So he tried another way of prayer, and was committing blasphemy one after the other, and now he was exhausted but still nothing was working. Now he wonders how are humans able to class change by simply leaving the snail shells here. Losing hope, he started to think that monsters are really destined to never undergo class change. Now that his heart has wavered, the system showed up, and was advising him to give up and go back to doing missions and evolve properly, which Wazi perceived it as a taunt, but he already made it all the way here. So he refused to leave just like that. So he was thinking really hard for a way. And if there isn't, he will make a path himself. But he couldn't concentrate since Piggy is making some noise in the background. So he turns towards her to ask to keep it down. But he saw Piggy is eating the little green lights, which he tells her to stop eating everything she sees, because it might upset her stomach. But surprisingly Piggy leveled up, which he was shocked. Now he wonders where those green energy coming out from the divine tree. So he tried to absorb it, and to his surprise it was an experience points. With this he appraised it, and it is actually a condensed magic power. Now he knows humans can't directly absorb it, so they use the snail shells as a medium to transfer the power to them. He came to a conclusion that the secret to class changing is not the snail shells, but this condensed magic power instead. Therefore he immediately decides to absorb it and tell Piggy to leave some for him. And as they eat more, they leveled up, but few bottles of potions have been used. Wazi is now exhausted, he leveled up quite a bit, but his mobility as a mushroom is too low. And he was thinking if only he could gather it all in one place and absorb it. Then he tells Piggy to drink some stamina potions too, and advises her not to tire herself too much. But she was still energetic as ever, and was now a level higher than him, making his confidence crumble, as he really can't beat Piggy when it comes to eating. And he bets, more than half of all the energy here has already been eaten by Piggy, so he could only sigh, since being a mushroom is too disadvantageous. He continued thinking of a way to gather all the energy into one place, with no choice he called out for the system, but it still tells him that he couldn't undergo class change, but he just ignores it, and went straight to look at his inventory, and was looking for anything he could use. After that he went to his attribute panel, and was looking well hard enough, so he saw his decompose ability was now ready to be used. Then he looks at the divine tree, and since he is here already, he might as well play it big. So he used Jetstream, and spin majestically to land on the divine mother tree's head, which made Piggy worried as she was circling around. But he tells her that it is okay, and to just sit down and watch him. So she did, and now he calls onto the great divine mother tree, and apologize for what he is about to do as he sits down his cheeks on her head to commit heresy, and started decomposing, and its component was a biomatter, plant, in wood type, so the decompose ability has increased its effectiveness. Now condensed magic power was entering his cheeks, as he was serious about decomposing it with all his might, then the system warns him about the immense amount of energy, and absorbing it may cause him unknown changes, so it asks if he wants to continue, which he already reached to a point of no return, so he continues to absorb it all. Now this made his level and ability increased exponentially, but Wazi has no plans on stopping, absorbing everything, from the leaves, to the branches, and to every part of the Divine Mother Tree, as it now dries up, and whittles away. But it wasn't enough for Wazi, so he keeps on absorbing it to the last drop, and now even the beautiful figure of Mother Tree is drying up, and as he absorbs it, his dump truck was expanding, and after the intense event, the decomposing has finally comes to a conclusion, and now his cake evolved into a whole bakery, since there's still way too much energy left over that he couldn't absorb, as he struggles to hold onto it, while he tries his best absorbing it, and with all his willpower and dedications he tries to prevent it from coming out, since he knows what will happen if he fails, but it wasn't enough, as his chrysanthemum couldn't help it any longer so it blooms, and Wazi could only shout while a great amount of energy comes out from his cheeks, as he cries in agony, the energy ricochets around the place, and it hits Piggy, and as the chaos happens, the village head woke up, but luckily he decides to continue sleeping in his room, beside the sealed golem's left hand, 
and it turns out its unsealing requirement is a bunch of snail shells. Meanwhile, the other energy that came out from Wazi's cheeks flew out from the village's head's house, and now traveling from place to place, and it lands on few familiar figures, such as the Boar Chieftain, the Two Mushroom General, the energy even got to the Castle of Time, and hits a doll, and some energy even landed on the sunken world, in the Pentachrome Desert, the Source Volcano, Land of the Dead, that night, a shower of beautiful lights illuminated the night sky of the entire brave mainlands, as if heralding the coming of a new era. The following day, the place was trashed because of what Wazi let out, and it seemed the system was acting strange, and it turns out it was upgrading, and it consumed 5 million experience points. Now the monster system has been upgraded to a brave system, and it congratulates the hosts for successfully changing class into a mushroom brave, and it only awaits confirmation. Wazi opened his eyes, and couldn't believe that it worked, so he didn't hesitate to accept his new class. Instantly, his mushroom hands became human, so Wazi checked his face. Now Wazi confirmed he had turned back into a human, to check if he is not dreaming. Wazi looks at his other mushroom, which it was present and greeted him, making him ecstatic. Then Wazi wonders where Piggy went, so he decides to stand up and find Piggy, but since he was a mushroom for so long, he feels a bit weird to have a human body again, therefore he needs support with his hands to stand up, but he accidentally touched Piggy's face. Now Wazi tries to wake up Piggy for them to leave before the village head comes, but he soon realizes he is touching two Piggies, which Wazi turns around to look, but he was so surprised that he started bleeding from his nose, while he asks who is beside him. But before we show you the images, the mushroom police arrives, since it detected an abnormal amount of lewdness, Therefore it just puts some tape here and there, for a more family-friendly experience, and before it leaves, it reminds the viewers that lewdness is temporary, but regret is eternal. Now let us go back to the scene. Wazi was shocked to find out that there was a beautiful woman beside him, and he wondered what her identity was. He slaps his face, because he has just turned into a human he assumes that he must be hallucinating, since he doesn't remember anyone else being here last night. But then he realized something. Now he wonders if the beauty in front of her is Piggy. While he was in deep thought, she wakes. So he turns away for her to not feel uncomfortable. But she jumps towards him instead. Which two Piggies also greets him. She embraces him because she is happy to see her mushroom was okay. But Wazi couldn't hold it anymore. As her two Piggies were on his face. So he pushes her away. As he tries to calm him down. And convince himself that Piggy is so cute and innocent. How can he take advantage of her like a pervert? Can he still call himself a human if he does that? And with this he obtained a new ability, called Sage Mode, while Piggy still hugs him. But now the Sage Mode can make him keep calm. Then he can sense people outside of the house. Now he realize what situation they are in right now, and that if the people outside comes in and see the mess he left here, they will definitely be caught and punished. In panic he turns to Piggy but his Sage Mode level is too low and cannot suppress higher level of stimulations, as he knows bleeds, so he took out clothes for them to wear, and it was a good thing they have this robes he looted from those magicians, otherwise, even if they were able to escape, they would still be caught and punished as perverts, while Piggy sniffed the robe that Mushroom used before, as Wazi was thinking of a way to escape, with no choice he decides to use Spore Explosion to create a diversion and escape the chaos. But he knows this place is too big, so he will need to release it with all his might. But he just lets out a small fart, which he questioned what happened to his abilities, while Piggy tries to cuddle Mushroom again. But Wazi stops her since he knows they have to get out of this place as soon as they can. So he tries Spore Explosion for the second time, but he just farted again. Now he felt despair as he wonders what happened to his abilities, so he called forth for his system, which it appeared and informs him that his abilities did not disappear, but because the body of a human is different from a mushroom, he will have to relearn how to use them, so he asks it sarcastically if it thinks he has a time to relearn them right now, but the system just informs him that it has been upgraded, so it suggests the best way to get used to his new body is to do the brand new mission, as it requires him to eliminate 10 level 20 monsters, which made Wazi more angry as he shouted it for only knowing how to give missions. So the system just asks Wazi to choose a name for himself instead. This made him more furious as he asks it if it is ignoring him on purpose, cause what he need right now is an information to get out from this place, as he shouts at it, because all the other people's systems try to help them get stronger with cheats and OP skills, but it on the other hand, 
only knows how to ask him for money, and all he want is his OP cheat ability, which it replied that he never gave it money. While this made Wazi speechless, it tries again to ask for his name. Wazi now realized that it is better to rely on himself, so he just accepted a random name that the system generated, so he could proceed to look at his inventory. He looks for something that might be useful for them. He even puts his head in, to look more closer, while the system asks him to be gentle, since after being upgraded, it has also gained emotions and human intelligence. After searching for a while, he finally found the recall scroll, and they should be teleported back to the fountain if this works. While he remembers the system said monsters can't use it, and although he looks like a human and has human class, he has this feeling that he is not entirely human, as the village head finally woke up. So now they don't have time to overthink it, with no more options, he activates it, now a magic circle formed below them, while he hopes for it to work, at the same time the people has started to get closer, they close their eye and hopes for a miracle, and when the village head and the newbies arrived at the scene, they were both surprised, as the village head sees all the mess, while Wazi successfully teleports, while the newbies were saying it must be the energy that shot through from here that the whole village was talking about, but the village head explains that it must be because there were less people for the ceremony this time around, that the energy from the divine tree was too dense and caused a little commotion, so he tells them not to worry, and just follow him to the tree, while he states that he has been here for so many years and that he has seen it all, and even if something did happen he can easily take care of it, as he arrived at the place where the tree was, he soon realized that he was wrong, as the Divine Mother turned into a grandmother, shocking everyone who witnessed it. Meanwhile, Mushroom and Piggy have now teleported to the center of the village, as other humans teleport to the spot as well, now they can sigh in relief, while Piggy is curious about her newly acquired body as she feels her hands and feet, while Wazi is thinking the change from a monster to a human body is too big, and now he can't use his abilities, and his movements are a little awkward, therefore he decides to focus on getting used to his new body before anything else, at least with a human appearance, it will be a lot easier to do things, he can also gather information on Gollum's followers a lot quicker, as he was in deep thought, his concentration was broken off due to the people looking at his general direction, so he realized they were looking at Piggy rolling around the ground and was showing too much skin for her own good, so he tells her to stand up and listen to him. Now he realizes he needs to settle their basic necessities first, and decides to buy Piggy some clothes and food, which makes her excited, as they first visit the tailor shop to change clothes. Next was the weapon smith to acquire a weapon, and just like that, Wazi's gold coins are gone. Now he only has enough for a few more days of lodging and food, so he needs to find a way to earn some money. While now he realizes that life is simpler as monsters, then Piggy tug at him to look at him with puppy eyes while pointing at the snacks, which he didn't mind to buy her something to eat, as this made her happy. At a later time, Wazi checks his appearance, as he is glad to look human again. He notices there is something new in his inventory, so he wonders where he got it from, as he assumes that it was because he used decompose on the divine tree. Therefore he acquired a divine tree branch, it only has plus one attack, and he has to charge it with magic powers too, so he felt discouraged to use it, and decides to try it some other time, since understanding his body is the most important right now, so he looks at his attribute panel, as he saw it. He asks the system if it made a mistake since he couldn't believe he leveled up over 30 times, but he doesn't feel any stronger. He was so shocked he even asked the sleeping piggy, but she didn't respond. So he used appraisal on her, but he failed to use it. He asked the system that even if it couldn't give him the abilities back, it should at least tell him why he couldn't use them. The system answers that the body of a human and a monster are completely different, and the way his abilities activate and release are also different. First he needs to feel the magic power inside his body. Although humans aren't as sensitive to magic as monsters, they have finer control over it. It suggests the hosts to close his eyes and concentrate on feeling the magic power coursing through his body. So he did just that, and use a praise once more. Now he can see Piggy's attributes, which he was surprised she is level 47 now. They both got so strong all of a sudden, but then he got a sudden headache, so he asks why. To which the system answers that it was because humans have finer control over magic. They have to consciously turn abilities on and off. Otherwise, overdrafting the mana in his body can cause him death, giving him a little heart attack. But luckily the system was only joking, 
as it clarifies he will just lose consciousness at most. And thanks to the new upgrade, the system learned how to make jokes, which Wazi didn't enjoy very much. A few moments later, a drunk man is walking the streets at night, complaining how frustrating it is, because high-level braves are coming to the starter village. As he walks, he steps on a goo and thinks it is a feces, but unfortunately, it is much more terrifying than that. A snail covered in black goo is staring at him, disgusted he tries to kick it. Still, the snail envelopes his feet with black goo. Now he tries to pull it away, but it just bit his hand. Now he realizes his life is in jeopardy, so he shouts for help, but the black goo already covered half of his body, and with just a matter of seconds, he was devoured. In a change of scene, the snail is now inside a building, as it follows the power of the divine tree. It enters a room, and now the snail is in front of Wazi, and it turns out the village head controls this snail, as it looks at him with raging glowing eyes. Since Wazi is the one who completely wasted his many years of effort, he should have been the first to obtain Gollum's powers, but he couldn't do anything to him now, since the sun has already risen and was burning the snail he controls. So he tells the sleeping Wazi to consider himself lucky this time, but he will remember him. And in rage, the village head crushed the thing he is using to control it, so the snail disappeared. While Wazi is dreaming about Piggy, then Piggy stands up on her hind legs and reveals a zipper on her back. As she zips it open, a feet came out from her, as the village head emerged from the Piggy costume, telling Wazi he found him, which made him wake up from his deep sleep. He sighs in relief as he realizes it was just all a dream. Now that he is finally awake, he stands up and decides to do some missions. A few moments passed by, they used a train, and arrived at the Granite Mountains. As the system rewards them with experience points since using any type of transportation is one of their starter missions. Wazi and Piggy are now walking, while Wazi is loudly thinking that he was able to better understand human society here through these starter missions. First was the extermination of 10 level 20 plus monsters, which allowed them to get used to their human bodies. Then it was accepting three bounty requests at the inn, which allowed him to understand the life of a brave, and he even got a new ability called Danger Sense. Lastly, it was to use any type of transportation, which leads them here to the Granite Mountains, and they are here since the first of the three bounties is to destroy the Deadwood monsters that are flooding in the Granite Mountains. He has killed a bunch of them before he leveled up, so he believes this shouldn't be a problem but the description says that they like to live in damp places and if that's the case the place that they are currently on doesn't look like a place they would live in, and they haven't encountered a single one after walking for so long. This leads him to believe the hard part of this mission is actually finding the possessed stumps, as he could only sigh since the bounties are a lot different from the system's missions, so he really is not sure how to go about this, but they need money right now, otherwise, he won't be able to buy food for Piggy. Suddenly the system informs him that it detects an enemy, so he turns around to see several tree stumps are now behind them, so they get ready for battle, as he uses a praise on them, showing him their level. Now he wonders why there is a much larger one than all the ones he has seen before, which the system reminds the player that this is a world with its own ecosystem. Naturally, monsters in different habitats will learn to adapt to them and evolve into various forms. Now he knows, but Piggy and him can deal with them just fine. So he tells Piggy that he will leave the ones at the back to her and he will take care of those two in front of him. But before Piggy starts, she carefully puts the apples down, as she tells the apple to wait for her to come back. After that she grabs her weapon and strikes at the stumps, eliminating them instantly. With this she was hungry again, while Wazi was amazed by Piggy's incredible strength. Suddenly the tree stump attacks him, but the sage mode was activated so he could dodge it easily, and using his human form, Mushroom Bash becomes a powerful burst of strength in his legs, and using these bursts of speed, he can now do Mushroom Sword Dance, killing the stumps in front of him, but there was a wave of stump coming towards him, while it is true that he will run out of stamina if they just keep on popping up, but unfortunately for them, they are made of wood, so he casts Spore Explosion onto them, making them grow mushrooms on their entire body, completely draining their health. And with that Wazi and Piggy completes their mission, and once they turn these in, Wazi plans to go celebrate with some food, but the system suddenly detected danger. As the tree frantically wiggles around and started to form, this made Wazi wonders if they can also revive like mushroom, so he appraised the killed stump, but their HP is still empty, while the strange stump is still transforming. 
It even takes Piggy's apple, and now it transforms into a level 60 elder tree spirit, which shouted at them after transforming. This surprised Wazi, so he asks what is that? The system explained that it was an evolution. A giant possessed stump must have absorbed all of its companions and evolved, while Piggy didn't hesitate to attack it, because it took her fruits, which Wazi warned her that is a level 60 monster. So as soon as her axe touches the elder tree spirit, it shattered into pieces, and it seems the tree spirit is a man of culture so without hesitations, it holds on to Piggy and lifts her upside down, which Wazi didn't like, so he uses Mushroom Sword Dance to free Piggy from its dirty wooden vines. This made Piggy look at Wazi with adoration, but Wazi puts her down since he couldn't carry her for that long because she is too heavy for him. Still she hugs him, then the system warns them of the danger, so they turn to look at it. The tree spirit started using nutrient deprivation. Now the tree spirit switched to its Trent form, which Piggy didn't like to see her fruits drying up, so she charged to attack it head on. But the Trent was too strong for her, so she was knocked to a tree. Now that Wazi's weapon is broken, and even Piggy, with her insane attack power, can't close the level gap, he realizes he needs to run, but wonders if he can escape while carrying Piggy. But before that, he still has his type suppression. So he casts Spore Explosion, and successfully hit the Trent. Now it grows mushroom on its body, but it used Bark Shield and peels off its infested layer, and went straight to Wazi, with no choice but to fight. The only weapon he has left is a Divine Tree Branch, so he attacked the Trent with it, but the Trent was unfazed, and was about to launch an attack again. So Wazi tries to dodge, but he soon realized he was too late, as the attack of the Trent crushed him to the ground. While Piggy saw that Wazi was hurt, so in rage she leaps towards it, while she shouts that it was not allowed to hurt her mushroom and use Piggy Punch. But the Trent was confident in his strength so he retaliates with his own attack. But he soon realized that was a mistake, as his body reveals a crack, and was blown into bits. This shocked Wazi. Now he knows that Piggy is too OP. But then she lost her consciousness and was about to fall down. But Wazi catched her, and lies her down gently. And he asks if she was okay and tells her to not scare him like that. But Piggy suddenly turned back to her monster form, surprising him again. Meanwhile, somewhere in the Tempest Grasslands, the people in there are talking about how the Eye of the Fire Bane Guild has been expanding non-stop, and the Sword Saint Guild is starting to move again, with all the weird things happening lately. As the number one guild, they couldn't just stand there and watch. Then Wazi appeared on the scene, and made it back safely. They went straight over to the owner of the inn to complete a bounty request. As he put down the bag, he opened it, revealing to the owner that he killed the Elder Tree Spirit, so he rewards them. Wasi was surprised to receive a lot of money, so he questioned if the bounty was that high for the Elder Tree, which he answered that the Elder Tree Spirit had been on the bounty list for some time, so his reward was tripled. While the people who saw him turn in the corpse of the Elder Tree belittled him and thought he hired high-level guards to beat it for him, while the others wondered how much money he got. Then he asked if there were any other bounties he could accept, which the owner gladly showed to him. This made Wazi shocked to see only two rank A missions left. The owner explained that lower level bounties are usually completed not long after they are posted. He suggests Wazi take the mission to catch the criminal duo, since many guilds and bounty hunters have been trying this mission lately, so it will be easier for them to find a team. Although the rewards will be less, it'll be safer too. And since they can defeat the Elder Tree Spirit, they should have more than enough strength to do a rank A mission. This made Wasi think that if either he or Piggy ran out of mana and exposed their monster forms, they might be the one who gets turned in as bounties instead. But then if he is able to get closer with some high-level people, he might be able to find clues on Gollum's whereabouts. So he decides to take a look first and adapt to the situation later. And so he accepts the bounty. The owner tells him that a couple other braves like them have accepted this mission, so he asks Wasi if he wants help from him to team up with them, which he was thankful, but he declined the offer, and explained that he is used to working alone. This made the owner worried, so he asked if he was sure. Although the mission is rank A right now, the difficulty could increase any time, which Wasi says that it's fine, and thanks the owner before he leaves. His statement made people inside the inn think that he's over his head since there were already over 30 victims who died trying to complete that bounty, while a man in the corner wearing a cowboy hat might have taken an interest in him. Wazi gives Piggy some apples before they go on their way, and he says he will get her something different to eat when they reach the train station.
A few moments pass by. They are walking in the middle of nowhere. Wazi feels they are being followed, but he assumes that he must be overthinking things. After all, this is the way to the train station. Then Wazi talks to his useless system, since it even dares to say it has been upgraded, but it still can't provide him with clues on Gollum's whereabouts. The system replies to him to just do the missions. Destiny will naturally guide him towards the clues, like he met one of Gollum's followers in the Mushroom Kingdom. Speaking of the followers of Gollum he asks if they are monsters or humans, and what their levels are like. The system answers that there are both humans and monsters among Gollum's followers. The system adds that it is not omniscient, so it doesn't know who they are, but it can guarantee even the weakest should not be under level 100. This surprised Wazi, making him squeeze Piggy, so she accidentally let go of her apples. While Wazi is still thinking loudly, he thought that once he hit level 60, he would be able to fight them together with Piggy, but if even the weakest is level 100, he could only sigh, as he wonders when will he ever be able to finish these missions. The system informs him that there is another way. The demon god Gollum's resurrection requires all six of his sealed pieces to be unsealed. He can stop the resurrection if he can find one and manage to destroy it without unsealing Gollum. This made him change his plans, so he asks where the seals are located, which the system responds that it doesn't know. So he takes out money from the inventory and asks the system how much money does it want. The system clarifies to him that it has already been upgraded, so it is not interested in some stupid gold coins anymore. Besides, it really doesn't know where they are, but it can tell him that when the six braves originally sealed Gollum, they sealed him in the areas with the highest amount of energy. Wasi didn't appreciate the vague information and thought the system was being useless again, but suddenly it sensed danger, so they were alerted and saw three figures blocking their path. The leader of this trio asks Wazi to hold on for a moment, because they just want to speak with him, and he introduces himself as the Vice Guild leader of the Serpent's Death Kiss Guild, and they wish to invite him to join their guild, and he hopes Wazi will not reject their invitation. While they are talking, Wazi used a praise on them to see their levels, and he thinks that compared to monsters, the most dangerous beings are still people with zero morals. He can take the other two, but the leader's level is too high for him. So Wazi says to them that he politely reject their invitation, and throws the gold to the ground to give it to them since he doesn't want any trouble. The man accepts it, but he also asks to leave the ribbon pig behind, so they can pretend this never happened, which Wazi didn't want to, so the woman immediately attacks him with a poisonous circle blade, but he blocks all her attacks, and he counters it using his feet with mushroom bash, sending her to a tree. The archer then launches serpent-like arrows towards him, but his mind is clear since he has Sage Mode activated, so he used Spore Explosion to not only to dodge the attack but also to close the gap with the Archer, and counters him with Mushroom Bash. The two were knocked out quickly, so the leader was trying to compliment him, but Wazi didn't hesitate to use Spore Explosion and attack him mid-sentence for them to run away, but unexpectedly his feet was caught by a tentacle, and throws him to a tree. Now the leader asks Wazi if his parents never taught him not to interrupt others while talking, and to think he can shoot spores. It's quite an interesting little trick, but unfortunately, it's utterly useless in front of him. Then the woman recovered and went to attack Wazi again. He dodges it, but another serpent arrow was launched towards him, which he blocked with his branch. As he was distracted Piggy was caught by the enemy, and they noticed that he was quite fond of this ribbon pig. Still, Wazi was enraged, as he warned him to unhand her now. The leader laughed and asked if he doesn't, what is he going to do about it? but suddenly the toad was shot, freeing Piggy from its grasp. The man with a cowboy hat returns Piggy to Wazi and tells him to leave this place to him, which made Wazi delighted, and he asks Piggy if she was hurt, which she shows that she is fine. Then Wazi wonders what is the identity of the cowboy uncle. As he says his thanks to him, the trio was now alerted by the presence of an expert, so they asked of his name, to which he replied that he was just a cowboy who happened to be passing by. At the same time, Wazi picks up his gold coins, and runs from the scene since the cowboy uncle asks him to leave it up to him. Meanwhile, the vice leader uses their guild's name, the Serpent's Death Kiss Guild, a subsidiary of the Eye of the Firebane Guild to get out of the situation. Still, the cowboy says he knows who they are, and he also knows all the braves they have robbed and killed. So, as an ally of justice, he will now sentence them with a death sentence. At a later time, 
Wasi is on his bed and is thinking that the waters of the brave mainland are even more deeper than they seem. If he hadn't met that cowboy uncle from back then, he might not have been able to leave in one piece. Wasi initially thought he had already become strong after reaching level 57. However, he realizes he is still far from being comparable to real experts. Initially, he wanted to swiftly level up and stop Gollum from reviving, so he could go back to Earth. But now, he asks himself if he really wants to do that. As he looks at Piggy, in order to protect him, Piggy used up all her mana. Yet today, he almost lost her again. He now realizes he needs to get stronger so he can protect her, while Piggy is sleeping comfortably as she rolls around the bed. Then he calls for his system, so he could take out the branch from his inventory. He completely forgot about this thing until earlier, and he felt it changed a bit after he placed his mana into it, so he tries to charge it with magic powers. Now it is glowing, and his mana is dropping like crazy, so he calls for his system to help him get all the mana potions from his inventory, which it supports him, and as his mana potions were used, the branch started to shine brighter. Still, his mana also started to drain faster, and as he struggled, he soon saw a result. The branch suddenly started sprouting mushrooms, and the place was soon filled with a bright light. After that, the system congratulates Wasi on successfully binding with the divine tree branch, and it has now transformed into a mushroom rapier. He was happy that it worked, but he was completely drained because of this, so he collapsed on his bed. The next day, Piggy was licking his face, still half asleep Wazi pushed her away, and as soon he realized it was morning already, he woke up, but he was surprised to see Piggy turned back into a human, as he realized his hands were not touching Piggy's face but her other part, which made him nose bleed, while also leveling up his sage mode. Then they decided to go down, while Piggy hops onto his back, he tells her not to mess around on the stairs because it is dangerous, and as they walked towards the door, Wazi was in deep thought, since he couldn't find anything out about his newly acquired weapon with appraisal, and all it says is that it is a unique weapon. As for how strong it is, he will need to test it out. After they were outside, they were greeted by the cowboy uncle, as he states that he didn't expect Wazi to have a teammate already. Then he suggests for them to find a quiet place to talk. Now they are in the middle of nowhere, and before the cowboy uncle introduces himself to show sincerity, Wazi already used a praise on him. Now he knows that he is a level 73 master gunslinger named Dick Farrell. At the same time, Farrell shows his badge, which Wazi pretends to be surprised, but in reality, he doesn't recognize it at all. Still, Farrell buys his act and says that what Wazi assumes is correct, and that he is a member of the Sacred Sanctum Guild, one of the top six guilds in the whole Brave Mainlands, and he is under orders from the Saintus to patrol this area and keep the peace. Wazi then thanked him for saving him yesterday, but he doesn't understand why Farrell went out of his way to look for him, while he is wondering what's he after, because not only did Farrell help him out yesterday, he even came knocking on his door first thing in the morning. Farrell responds that protecting the peace of the brave mainland is their mission, so there's no need for thanks, and he states that he will be blunt with them, so he expresses that he wants to team up with them to hunt down the criminal duo which Wazi wasn't convinced, as he stated with how strong Feral is, he doesn't think Feral will need their help, so he asks why him. Feral replies that it's simple, he wants to protect him because Wazi's purity of heart is high, this made Wazi even more confused, so Feral used purity judgment on him, which Wazi think it was appraisal, so he was worried that his identity as a monster was revealed, but before he could say anything, Farrell tells him that there was no need to be startled. Although his purity judgment is not as good as the Saint of Sophia's gaze, it can still determine the purity of a person's inner heart, and in order to recruit people to stop an impending calamity, the Saint has tasked him with finding people who are pure of heart. After traveling for two months, he is the first person whose purity reached the requirement, but before he could finish his statements he was so surprised to see a 100 points purity. He cursed out loudly, this made the atmosphere awkward, so he regained his composure and explained that this was the first time he had seen someone other than the Saintus whose purity level is maxed out, so he lost his cool there for a bit. Wazi then says he doesn't fully understand what Feral meant, but it was his choice to protect them because of their purity level, so they don't have to accept his proposal, which Feral states that he knows they are still suspicious of him, but if they want to catch the criminal duo, working with him will also significantly increase their chances and safety. So he tries to explain, 
Although he has more than enough confidence in facing both of them head-on, he will need reliable teammates to watch his back since they are going to venture into their turf. The Sacred Sanctum are justice advocates, and they only work with people with a high level of purity. That's why he has chosen to work with the two of them. This made Wazi rethink his choice, as he asks why the criminal duo who's been traveling around would suddenly hole themselves up in the ancestral ruins of the mushrooms and allow themselves to be surrounded which Farrell says that it's exactly because they are at their strongest there. After the Mushroom Kingdom was destroyed, people found the Mushroom's ancestral ruins. However, because there was no longer a king, none of the real experts paid the place any attention. The criminal duo took it over and made it into their base. They aren't letting themselves get surrounded and waiting for people to enter their trap. Regardless of who enters, they would be inexplicably besieged out of nowhere by those two. It's said that one of them uses a gun, while the other uses a blade, hence their title, Criminal Duo. Based on this, it's highly probable that they didn't just set traps but also plan escape routes for themselves. That's why this isn't something anyone can do alone. For the sake of justice, he asks to take them down together, and the reason he is teaming up with him is not because of how strong he is but because his purity level is high. This way, he can leave his back to him without worrying which Wazi was about to refuse again, but he used righteous persuasion and asks Wazi to trust him. The Sacred Sanctum is an ally of justice, and they only fight for justice, so he can have all the treasures they find in the ruins, since he only wishes to stop the duo from causing any more harm, so he begs Wazi to lend his power to him. Righteous persuasion greatly increases the target's trust in the user, so Wazi believes that Feral shouldn't be a bad guy since he helped them out earlier. Moreover, it'll be safer to travel with a strong companion. Although his identity is a bit sensitive, it should be fine if he hides it properly. Therefore, he accepts his proposal and teams up with him. Feral gives his party stone to them, and he says that once they defeat the criminal duo, he will surely report his achievements to the Saintess. Now that they are a team, Wazi introduced himself as Duo Amo. He adds that they should focus on completing the mission first and talk about what happens with the bounty afterward. They shouldn't waste any more time, so he asks them to board the train right now, which Feral says that there's no need for that, while he takes out a scroll and toss it in the air to shoot it with his gun, therefore activating it, which Wazi was amazed. Feral explained that it can instantly take them to any location he has placed a mark on. Now they are teleported to the Mushroom Kingdom, which Wazi was amazed at how there is actually such a convenient item. Feral explained that the teleportation scroll he used was a tier higher than the recall scroll. Still, there should be items that are even stronger than this inside the ancestral ruin. This made Wazi think about the opportunity to make it big. While they were talking, several braves have gathered in one spot. Then Feral points to them where the ancestral ruins is located. It seems that there are braves who got to the place first. So they head to the front of the entrance, and just with Feral's badge it made a commotion among the people who see it. Now Wazi realized from everyone's reaction, the sacred sanctum is really incredible. Now he is starting to feel more and more confident in completing the bounty. After standing in the front, Feral asks why everyone is just standing out here, and are they not planning to go in? One of the braves answers him that it is not that they don't want to, it is just that they can't. This made Feral surprised because it wasn't like this the last time he came here to scout the place. Now everyone is thinking of a way to go inside, while Piggy is eating her fruits furiously, but suddenly a man shouted for them to get out of the way, and that they are a bunch of useless weaklings, so he asks them to watch him smash the barrier to pieces with his hammer, while Wazi whispers to Piggy that they should ignore that kind of person in the future. And at the same time, the big guy uses body strengthening and with a full swing, he strikes the barrier making a shockwave, and even the stone crumbles near the barrier, so the people were amazed by his strength, but the barrier still holds, therefore they retract their astonishment to his strength, making him angry, so he challenges them to come and try breaking the barrier, which the other people try to ignore his taunt, but Feral accepted the challenge, which the big guy tries to discourage Feral, since he was confident in his strength, so he doubts Feral could even break it, but Feral just passed by him, then the big guy saw he is from a big guild, he mocks him for thinking that he is a hot shit because of that, but he was ignored, so this made him even more furious, while thinking that he has seen countless weaklings like Feral who only knows how to flaunt the name of a big guild, and this bastard doesn't put anyone in his eyes, so he launched himself to Feral like a raging bull, to see if the big guilds actually live up to their reputations, 
and attacks him with all his might, but Feral was composed as ever, as he quick draws, and used Drill Shot to obliterate the big guy's hammer while also hitting the barrier. This shocked almost everyone at the scene, while Piggy is still happy in her own world with Wazi. Now the big guy knows he is fucked up, and with just a slight nudge from Feral, he lost his balance and collapsed on the water. Then they went closer to the barrier to see if they had broken it, but to their surprise, the bullet was still spinning on it, but it wasn't able to break it until its rotation diminishes. Wazi couldn't believe his attack could not break the barrier, which Feral explained that his drill shot can pierce an entire mountain, yet it can't break this barrier. Perhaps they can't use brute force to solve this problem. Wazi was frustrated since they came all this way for nothing, and his treasures were gone just like that. Feral responds that this entrance is actually a transportation gate, so the space inside should be isolated from the outside world. This should be the only entrance. If they want to go in, their only hope is to hire a high-level mage proficient in breaking barriers to come here. Wazi approached the barrier and could only sigh since he thought they would be able to earn a bunch of treasures today. Feral tells him not to fret it. There are plenty of high-level mages in the Sacred Sanctum, so he asked them to come with him, and he will take them back to the guild headquarters in the Pentachrome Desert to find someone to break this barrier. While Feral is thinking although the plan has yet to be completed and he needs to collect more, the Saintus should be satisfied as long as he can bring these two who are pure of heart back. Then he states that the Pentachrome Desert is too far for the teleportation scroll, so first, they will go to the Castle of Time, then board the flying ship there. But Wazi couldn't hear him, since he was wondering why the barrier felt a little shaky. And when he touched it, the barrier cracked and breaks into a million pieces, shocking everyone that have witnessed it, which made Piggy happy while Feral asked him how did he do it. Wazi couldn't answer his question because he doesn't know either, but he suddenly thought of an excuse. So he tells them that, before they came here, there must have been many people who had attacked the barrier, and besides the muscle uncle and his attacks just now, the damage must have pushed the barrier to its limits. Him pushing it was merely the straw that broke the camel's back. This statement made the muscle man regain his confidence and accepted all the credits, and Feral accepted the excuse, and the entrance was now open, so they all decided to go in. Now that they are inside, the mysterious duo was surprised since their barriers are only open for those of their mushroom clan, and wonders how they break it, so they conclude that the intruders must have brought a high-level mage with them. Therefore, they decide to be careful, but no matter who they are, they can't let them find the core area, and that will be easy since they can just kill them all. Meanwhile, Wasi is amazed by the scenery inside the starting area of the mushroom ancestral ruins. So he tells Piggy to look at it, and it is as if there is a sea of stars on the cave ceiling, and it feels as if his entire body is invigorated from just looking at it, and that is because mushroom species have an affinity for dim and moist places. Within these environments, they will have an increase in recovery, which he doesn't know any of this. Then, one of the braves suddenly run, thinking he will be the first to get the treasure, and with this, others follows him, but they soon realize that was a dumb choice as the first brave stepped on a mushroom mine and got himself killed. Now the others see that there are mushroom lurking in the area. Then a teacher lectures his student about this mushrooms, and they are called mushroom mines. When a bomb mushroom stays dormant for a long period, they will evolve into mushroom mines, and they can either avoid them or defuse them using ice magic, which she was thankful for the teacher's guidance. Then the student asks about those golden mushrooms, and they are glowing and look pretty harmless which the teacher has never seen one before either, so he assumes that it could be the treasure they were looking for or a trap, so he advises her that they shouldn't be rash and should properly inspect it first, and since he believes most traps require a certain amount of pressure to trigger it, so he went to touch it in order for him to inspect it, but his methods were flawed, so his body was thrown in half by an anglerfish looking mushroom, the student was shocked to see his teacher die in front of her eyes, so she cries for help, but there is no one to help her, since other braves were occupied with their own survival. But Feral has easily controlled the situation and is guiding on what to do, while Wazi and Piggy stomped on a mine mushroom but it didn't activate, which he wonders why. Suddenly an anglerfish appeared before him and surprised him, but he was just ignored by it. So now he realized, although he may look like a human now, he is still technically a mushroom species. Then the muscle uncle is now in confrontation with that angler mushroom, so he copies Wazi, since he saw him stay still and the angler mushroom should also ignore him. However, 
it still opens its mouth. Now he questions why it is still coming over to him, but suddenly Piggy launched Piggy Punch knocking it over. This made the other angler mushroom look over their way. So now few of them charge at Piggy, and because Piggy is now in danger, Wasi mans up and face the angler mushroom. While he is sweating nervously, he still had the guts to threaten them. The angler fish then turns away, which Muscle Uncle now believes Wasi is an expert. Meanwhile the angler mushrooms are blown to bits by Feral one by one, but then one of them attacks him from above, and to his surprise, a bullet comes out from his mouth, which he dodges in a nick of time, and he counters with a drill shot. Feral felt another presence coming from behind him, so he instinctively dodged the bullets, and with another drill shot he counters, then again another one appears on his blind spot, which he barely dodges the bullets, and as he dodges them he was wondering what the gunner's identity, even if their skills are only a little worse off than him, but they can hide inside the mouths of those terrible monsters, and as the barrage of bullets aimed at him, he was left with no choice, so he decides to use his trump card, he takes out the bullet, and loads it in his gun, then he jumps to dodge the attack, and use the ultra purification round, the mysterious gunner knows what's about to happen, so she retreats, while some of the monsters weren't fast enough, as they wither away, and at the same time, all of the braves was enveloped by light particles and was healed back to their top shape, now the people realize how strong the gunslinger from sacred sanctum really is, Feral clarifies that, it was a special bullet blessed by the saintess, not only do monsters burn when exposed to the holy light, but it can also heal injuries for humans, but even with Feral's miracle bullet, others felt hopeless as they lost their companions and experienced standing on death's door, they are now discouraged to continue, but suddenly Feral blasts his gun at the air, gaining their attention to him, and now he tries to convince them, saying defeat is temporary and that he believes everyone who could survive up to this point is more capable enough, and as long as they persevere, there is nothing that can stop them, which made the people agitated and furious, as they explained that they are just here for the treasures, and defeating the criminal duo is his own goal, not theirs, therefore Pharaoh mocks them for chasing after material things, and for having a weakling mentality, and the difference between them and the top fighters is dignity, which they don't have because they exchanged it with money, and for them to take back their dignity he asks them to come with him, but they were not moved by his bullshit and cringe dialogue, so they tell him to piss off, and they mock him for being an entitled douche, and unlike him, they don't have a complete set of high-level gear to protect themselves, which Pharaoh mocks them again, and he tells them that attitude is precisely why they will all forever remain as weaklings, this statement just triggers them more, but before they could respond, he promised on the dignity of the Sacred Sanctum Guild, he will use his life to protect everyone, and he will not take a single treasure as long as they help him defeat the criminal duo, and then he combos his speech with righteous persuasion, to be more successful on changing their minds, and he says all the bullshit he could muster, he even used Wazi's name together with him, now the people were touched by him, and was starting to change their opinions, still they were unsure, but suddenly the muscle uncle stepped up, as he decided to stay and join them, this made an effect as the others follows him and decided to stay too, and now they even changed their mind to vanquish the criminal duo, instead of finding the treasure first, while Wazi was amazed and thought that his uncle Feral was so awesome, since he was able to bring out the righteousness in everyone's hearts, then Feral ended his speech, with a quote from what the saintess said once, hope is precious, justice shall always prevail, after Feral convinces the Braves, everyone works together to avoid the traps, and with teamwork, they can easily kill the Angler Mushrooms, while Feral has no trouble dealing with the monsters all on his own. After that, he notifies them that it is getting late, so he asks everyone to set up camp here for the night, and they will take turns to stand guard later. A few moments later, the camp was set up, Piggy was now cooking her food, and Wazi finally rested his cheeks, as he exclaimed that he didn't expect this to take such a long time, and was wondering how big this cave was and if they are lost. Which Feral, after arriving at the scene, replies that they won't get lost, since he has left marks on the path here. As long as they don't loop back, they will get to the core area by tomorrow, and the task will basically be done by tomorrow. Then Wazi praised Feral for being excellent earlier, to which he responds he is overestimating him since everything that he has now was given to him by the sacred sanctum. He was once a petty criminal who did many evil deeds, at least, until he met the Lord Saintus. 
in the flashback years before he became the righteous feral. He call himself the Punisher Dick, and he was even torturing someone. But suddenly the saint disappeared before him, healing the wounded, and illuminating the scene with holy light. And it was when he met the Lord Saintess that he found out the true meaning of existence. The Sacred Sanctum is the guild with the greatest number of priests in all the brave mainland. Because of this, they can produce countless types of healing potions. Priests and potions are indispensable to anyone who wishes to adventure. Thus Sacred Sanctum became one of the continent's most influential guilds. It's a shame that he is not a priest and can only serve as a mere fighter for the guild. But, as long as he can serve the Saintess and continue to spread hope and justice through the continent, he is content. This story amazed Wazi, as he couldn't find a word to respond. But a man was approaching from behind. Suddenly he whispered into his ears, surprising him immensely as he asked what is he trying to do. To which he replied that, he was too hot-headed and did some rude things earlier today. However, even then, he still saved him from those monsters. So he wants to give him the meal box he prepared earlier today as a token of friendship. This development surprised him even more, as he wondered why does he feel even more disgusted by the muscle uncle's current behavior compared to his arrogant attitude earlier. Still, as soon as he saw the cute lunch box, his demeanor changed, but Piggy was instantly behind him. So she snatched the lunch box away and ate all of it in one go. Wazi smacked her for that, and he told her that she couldn't do that, and asks where are her manners. Piggy looks at Wazi with googly eyes, as she touches the remaining sauce on the launch box, and asks what manner is, while she licks her finger and touches Wazi's face. This made him retreat, as he exclaims what is he going to do with her. The muscle uncle laughs, and tells them that it is fine, he has prepared a lot of them, so they can eat as much as they want, as he takes them out for everyone. Now the atmosphere is an upbeat, and Wazi enjoys the delicious meal that Muscle Uncle prepared. He would never have guessed that Muscle Uncle is such a great chef just from looking at him, which Muscle Uncle proudly states that he actually likes cooking more than adventuring. Once he saved enough money, he will quit being an adventurer, go home and marry his fiancée, start a restaurant, and maybe raise a few little ones. Wazi backs up on him, saying that he believes in the Muscle Uncle, and with his skills, his restaurant will succeed. Wazi adds that Muscle Uncle's fiancée must be really lucky to have such a great chef as her future husband. Speaking of his fiancée, he takes out a photo of her. He tells him that she is actually a very talented archer. So Wazi took the photo to look at it, as Muscle Uncle happily continued his story and that his fiancée would be in charge of entertaining the customers. While he worked in the kitchen, they had already planned out their future long ago. But to Wazi's surprise, Muscle Uncle's fiancé is the archer he met before, so he states that he thinks they are both really suited for each other. Then Farrell asks Wazi if he has thought about his invitation to join the Sacred Sanctum. This makes Wazi think, although he will be able to obtain information quicker if he joins a big guild, the risk of being exposed if he met a high-level priest or magician who could see through his current form, and it is like he willingly enters the tiger's den, so he made an excuse not to join saying that he is neither a priest nor strong enough to be a fighter, and he doesn't think he is suitable for joining the guild. Farrell clarifies to him that the saint has specifically told them to look for those pure of heart to join their guild, so he is sure that he will be able to join if he wants to. And besides, if he obtains the saintess recognition, he will be able to become a core member. Core members can enjoy numerous benefits that people outside the guild can only ever dream of, which the muscle uncle congratulate Wazi, since this is an opportunity that many other people will never get, Wazi tries to reason that he is actually not much familiar with guilds, so Muscle Uncle explained to him clearly, about the six strongest and most influential guilds, in all of Brave Mainlands, and they are namely, the Sword Saint Guild, a guild for warriors, Sacred Sanctum, the Guild of Priests, Tamer Alliance, the Guild of Beastmasters, the Spirit Forest, the Guild of Rangers, the Eye of the Firebane Guild, the Guild of Mages, Pirate Sea of Thieves, the Guild of Rogues. These six are considered first tier. There are also a bunch of strong second tier guilds, such as the Walrus Ivory Guild. After the second tier guilds, there are numerous smaller guilds, such as his Muscle is Life Guild. The strength and resources of smaller guilds are too little. Most of them are just made up of people who share the same interests, and that's why they usually travel around alone. However, the first and second tiers are more formal and typically watch over territories. 
they can amass large numbers of braves for raids. Even unaffiliated people would join the raids to gain recognition and become official members. This information made Wazi realize that it turns out the Eye of the Firebane guild that burnt down the Mushroom Kingdom is one of the top six guilds in this world, and the Mushroom King was completely helpless against that masked man. People as strong as him, he is sure there are more of them in the other guilds. The strength of the human guilds is too scary. Muscle Uncle continues that is why it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to be invited to become an official member of the Sacred Sanctum. But still, Wazi reasons with them that he is still mapping out what he wants to do, so he will pass on joining guilds for now, as he thinks he would be crazy to send himself to his death by joining one of those guilds. Muscle Uncle laughs and accepts his reason, but adventuring isn't the only thing they can do. Some people are also like them, wanting to settle down instead of fighting all day, and there's a great guild competition a month from now. If he has made up his mind, he can go join it. If he performs well, he can look for a guild that matches what he wants to do. After their conversations have gone long enough, Wazi believes that the timing should be okay, to see if there is any information about the Golem seals that are being passed down among the humans, so he changes the topic and asks them if they have ever heard of the demon god Golem seals. Muscle Uncle respond that it is just a myth, and asks what is wrong. Wazi explains that he was just wondering, since Gollum will be revived if all six tablets sealing him were able to be unsealed, shouldn't there be people protecting the seals? Which Feral suddenly was alerted by Wazi's statement, so he asks Wazi if he has seen the tablets sealing Gollum, and where? Wazi replies as he laughs faintly, that he just heard about it from a wandering storyteller, he has never seen it. He was just worried if it was true and demon god Gollum were to revive, all of Brave Mainland would be destroyed. Feral was unresponsive, while on the other hand, Muscle Uncle tells Wazi not to worry, and the guild leaders of the top six guilds are all experts whose strength ranks in the top ten in the entire continent. Even if demon god Gollum were to revive, they wouldn't lose, and he adds as a small flex, that his guild leader is also a powerful expert. Suddenly someone pokes at him, and it turns out, it was Piggy asking for more lunchboxes. Wazi says no, as she has already eaten her share. But Muscle Uncle is kind, and tells them that it is all right. And although his meal box can't recover health or boost attributes, as long as it can make others happy, it is enough. He has plenty more, so he asks them not to hold back, which everyone happily wants to have a meal box. Now the atmosphere is quite jolly, as they enjoy the meal box that Muscle Uncle made, and are happily enjoying each other's company. They even tried an arm wrestling competition, in which Piggy easily wins, and now everyone seems to be happy, and it seems like the past is behind them. Then Wazi looks at his surrounding, to see Feral standing on the corner all alone, so he approaches him, and asks why didn't he join them, since he is the reason why they are even together right now. He responds that it is fine, he was just doing what the Saintess asked him to do, to bring hope into everyone's heart. At a later time, after they have finished partying, now everyone is sleeping while Feral stands guard. Then Muscle Uncle awakens as he feels he is about to relieve himself, so he stands up and goes to do his business, and as he finishes and was going back to his bed, he stumbles on something and faceplant on the ground. Still faced he asks how can she be sleeping right now, shouldn't she be on guard in case of an attack, but to his surprise, she was covered in blood and that's why she was lying on the ground. So he went over to look at her if she is still alive, but she was long dead already. With this he plans to warn everyone as soon as possible, but someone started cornering him. So he shouted to his companions to wake up since there is an enemy attack, but the enemy advises him to stop wasting his breath. Hearing the enemy's voice he soon realized it was Feral all along, while he continues to tell him to not bother shouting, since he has surrounded the area within five meters of him with his magic silencer so no sound will be able to escape from this place, and then they both take out their weapon, while Feral laugh at him, and asks if he really doesn't understand the gap between them, he responds that he does, but all he needs to do is cause a large enough commotion and wake up everyone, but before he could even swing his hammer at full strength, Feral already passed by him, as Feral compliments that was smart of him, but he couldn't do that since he already cut all his ligaments and tendons, defeating him instantly, now in death's door, he asks him why kill them after giving them hope, which he replies that he is just doing what the Saintess asked him to do. Only after experiencing hope can one create the purest form of despair. After a while, 
Wasi and Piggy wakes up since it is almost their shift. Then he wonders why no one called them, but his question was answered instantly after seeing the corpse piled in front of them. The shock could be seen on his face, but suddenly he saw Feral dragging Muscle Uncle's body. Then Feral states that he originally didn't want them to see this, and apologized since he couldn't protect them, and blames the criminal duo for being too sinister. They killed everyone without making any noise. If he wasn't alert and woke up in time, he would have died too. Wazi runs towards everyone and Muscle Uncle, but Farrell says to him that he knows it is hard to accept, but they need to persevere while he covers Muscle Uncle's corpse. Then he notices the picture of Muscle Uncle's fiancé is on his feet, so Wazi takes it, while he could only question why, since everyone was so happy last night, and he tries to hold his tears, but still couldn't because the situation is too much for him. As he could only asks why did it turn out like this, Farrell tries to comfort Wazi, as he tells him that they need to stay strong, they have to take down the criminal duo, and avenge them, this dead of life, he will make sure to make those two vicious bastards return it tenfold, and he swore on his name that he would kill the criminal duo and bring them to justice, and they must kill them so that their brothers and sisters may rest in peace, while he uses righteous persuasion, which Wazi is still heartbroken, so he agrees with Farrell. Farrell tells Wazi that he knows he is still young, so he understands that he is agitated, but he advises him that they cannot let their emotions get the best of them when they fight their enemies. Wazi responds that he knows that and he just wants a few minutes to say goodbyes to Muscle Uncle, which Farrell permits him to, so he turns away and wait for him up ahead. Now they tell Muscle Uncle to rest in peace, and he will make sure to avenge him. Then he places the photo on Muscle Uncle. At the same time, Wazi adds that if he ever meets his fiancée, he will personally pass the news to her. He then decides to turn the picture around, so that Muscle Uncle can look at her and may rest in peace. But then he was shocked to see a spiral pattern left on the picture, as he wonders what it is. After that, they are now traveling towards the core, and they encounter various monsters such as an angler mushroom, then a stinger mushrooms, and a shroom bee, which Feral dealt with efficiently. Still, he wonders why it seems like all the monsters are coming after him. Wazi explains that it is because they know he is stronger, so they go after him first, which he believes Wazi's reason. Still, the monsters had wasted too much of their time, while he was wondering what the identity of the criminal duo was, and that there were no signs of that gunslinger that can hide in the mouths of the angler mushrooms, since not only they are proficient with the gun, they can also even control monsters. Then they decide to just keep moving, because they might get surrounded if they stop, and as they walk, Wazi looks at the wound of the monsters that Feral killed. Suddenly, he connects it with the symbol on the picture. He doesn't want to believe it, but his trust on Feral started to waver. While this happens, the criminal duo is spying at them from afar. Few moments passed by. They are now at the entrance of the core, but then Piggy tells Wazi that she is hungry. He realized that Piggy hasn't had anything to eat since they woke up, but he didn't expect that they would spend so much time here, so they're completely out of food while Feral is still in front of the entrance, as he is thinking to himself that, this core area should be behind this door, and he is sure the saintess will be delighted if he brings the treasures and these two back, so he puts his hands on the entrance and with all his might, he tries to push it, but it didn't move an inch, now he is wondering how weird it is that he feels like his strength was being absorbed by the door, with no choice he can only try breaking it, so he backflips to retreat to have a momentum for his attack, and now he used quick draw drill shot barrage, striking the door simultaneously. It made a crack on the surface of the door, but it returns back to normal. Wazi was surprised to see not only it can stop Feral's bullets, it can also heal itself. But Feral has few tricks to show, as he quick change and turn his gun into a dagger, and he charge at the door slashing it few times, which Wazi was surprised that Feral can also use daggers, so he assumes that it might have been really him who killed his companions. So now he plans to get away from him, but he knows that he can't make it obvious, or they might get killed if he gets alerted. Now that Feral's attacks on the door were healed, Wasi steps up and asks Feral to let them try. He then whispers to Piggy before they try something. Then Feral asks what he is planning. He responds that he is not sure if this will work either, but it is a combo skill that he can use with his teammate, and it is a special skill that only the two of them can use together. But before they start, he tells Feral that he is too close, the ability might hit him, so he advises him to stand at least 30 meters away. Feral was suspicious, but he followed Wazi's warning, 
and now that he is far away, Wazi used decompose to create a hole, but he need to control it so that it is only big enough for him and Piggy to go through, and he knows he only has one chance. At the same time, magic started to burst and filled the place with it, as Wazi tries his best to control his power to make an escape, and now that his hands began to sink in the door, he commands Piggy to push him with all her strength, so she did, and went through the door together. Feral realize what is happening so he tries to catch up to them, but the door has returned back to normal, now he know he was played, while on the other hand, after the decomposition was complete, Wasi receives experience points and obtained a new ability called Spore Manipulation, and a single-use Great Wall Mushroom. Now that they successfully went through the door, they ran as fast as they could, while Wasi thought to himself that the symbol at the back of Muscle Uncle's picture must be telling him about the drill shot. And now that he knows Feral can also use the blade, it would explain the cut wounds on all those bodies. And since he dared to use the blade to attack in front of Piggy and him, it probably meant he was getting ready to get rid of them too. While he asks himself why is it always the human heart that is the most twisted, why he was stupid to fall for his speech, and why did he trust him so easily before, he decides that it doesn't matter now. And what matters is that he needs to focus on finding a way out first. Then as they ran through the dark hallway, they saw an exit, so they ran faster, but to their surprise, it led to a descending stair path, which Wazi land on her cheek while Piggy perfectly landed on her feet. And as Wazi opens his eyes, he now realizes he is in the treasure room. They saw murals on the walls as they looked at the room, telling a story about the past. Mushroom people were present in it, but now was not the time for sightseeing, so Wazi quickly approached the treasures and since he remembered someone saying there was a teleportation scroll here. Hence, he searches for it. He soon realizes that there is too much stuff in this place, so he asks the system if it can take everything here and help him sort them, which it says that it could, but suddenly he is alerted by an upcoming danger, so he grabs Piggy and dodge the upcoming bullets. Wazi wonders how he catches up so fast, and the difference in their level is too high. They can't fight him head on so he needs to buy time for the system to find a teleportation scroll. Therefore he used manipulation, combined with his great wall of mushroom. He believes this should hold him for a while, but he hears a loud sound like an explosion, and with each strike, he knows Feral would be able to break it soon. And after a few more strikes his worries were right, Feral easily break the wall, as he explained that all he had to do was hit the same place a few more times for it to break, and as he steps closer, he asks Wazi to tell him. When did he realize it, and asks if was it fun toying with him, but with no choice they get ready and they take out their weapon. At the same time the criminal duo was surprised to see Wazi's mushroom rapier, while Feral is still spouting his bullshit and stating that, he was surprised Wazi was able to escape the influence of his righteous persuasion, so his mental strength is higher than he expected. He originally wanted to take both of them back, but it seems like leaving one of them alive is enough, as he vanish. He appeared in front of Wazi, and was already holding his hands, and attacks him. Wazi activates Sage Mode, but, the attack was too fast. Even with the Sage Mode, he still needs help seeing his movements properly. But before he was hit, Piggy attacks Feral from behind, which he halt his attacks on Wazi to block Piggy's attack. But now Piggy is the one who receives Feral's attack and is now on the ground, while Feral tells Piggy to calm down, since he is sure the Saintess would love to get her hands on her so he advises her to be good and stay there. At the same time Wazi attacks him as he has turned his back on him, but Feral easily blocks it, and turns towards him, since he will now sentence Wazi with death penalty, and without hesitations he attack Wazi in a frenzy, while Wazi could barely even keep up at all, and he even receives the kick from Feral and was sent crashing to the treasures. Now on the ground, his will to live still wasn't diminished, so he tries to take out his potions, but as soon as it appeared, Feral shoots it, now only despair is on his eyes, then Feral stomps on him, while Piggy was hopeless as she couldn't even stand up, now at death's door, Feral says his goodbyes and pulls the trigger, but the bullets were blocked by the mushroom crown, and the criminal duo appeared behind Feral, as soon as they make their superhero landing, they sigh, at how the humans just love to go around killing each other, but still, it doesn't matter, with them here, their chance of survival is 0%, at the same time, Wazi is wondering what's the glowing thing in front of him is. Then the gunner sighed, since she initially thought they would finish each other off. But things changed a little bit, as Bayou emerged from the smoke. 
Wasi was surprised to see the gunslinger, and afterward, Kage also emerged from the smoke, which surprised Wazi even more, to see him so short, so he asks if he was a dwarf, which Kage was angry at him for calling him a dwarf, so he corrects him that he is a shinobi. While Feral points out that they keep on saying human this, human that, it is as if they aren't human themselves, and so he leaps to attack them, while in midair he happily states that, it is convenient for him that his cover story he made up comes true, and the two of them will make the perfect scapegoat, all he has to do is kill them and tell the others that they are the criminal duo, but as he spouts his bullshit, his weapon was dulled with a single slash, now Kage teach him a lesson about his movements being too excessive, and he might as well go back to peeling potatoes with those skills, after that he used mushroom skewer pierce, attacking Feral multiple times, now Feral realize he is dealing with an expert, and he was caught off guard, since he didn't expect these two to be so strong, so he quick change and used drill shot towards them, but his attacks was easily dodged by the two, as he steps back, Bayou mocks how pathetic he is, since he is proficient in both the blade and the gun, but a master of neither, while Feral has still few tricks with him, as he launch a bullet that swerves and attacks her from behind, but Bayou only felt disdain by his attempts, while Kage was serious about it, as he blocks the attack for Bayou, so Bayou could focus on fucking up Feral. As he received damage, he was shocked to realize that, these two are stronger than him, and he wonders what these experts like them doing loitering around here, instead of taking the treasure away, so he assumes that they are also here to collect despair, and they're the saintus opponents, so he plans to get out of here and warn the saintus, and as the action happens, Wazi now could finally stand up, so he goes straight to Piggy, he sees she is still unconscious and in a critical state, so he tells her to hold on, and gives her a health potion right away, then she regained her consciousness, and as soon as she opens her eyes, she saw that Wazi is in front of her, therefore she hugs him fiercely, but Wazi received damage because of this. Meanwhile, Feral retreats while he takes out a mysterious bullet, and shoots it in the air, casting a transmutation curse, now he laughs because with this bullet the saint is blessed him with, even the strongest opponents will fall before him, and as Kage launches for the kill, but the curse finally took an effect, while Feral laugh hysterically, since he believes he is the one ending them, not only does it heals him, but it will place a powerful curse on all his opponents, turning all of them into monsters. Now they are surprised that they are back to their original forms, while Piggy waves at Wazi, and goes over to him, as she circles around happily at Wazi since she can enjoy his mushroom spores again. Meanwhile, Feral is still on his high horse, as he believes that there is more than enough time to kill them a hundred times over, and tells them to feel despair as they struggle like babies trying to learn how to walk, their movements, their magic, they will have to relearn everything, and of course, he won't be giving them time to do that, no matter how strong they were, they are nothing but low rank monsters now, and as he finished his dialogue, Kage can't help himself but laugh, and thanks him for what he did, which Feral was confused, and Bayu responds that he is the one who will feel despair, while Kage is set to give him his 100% gratitude, this makes Feral even more confused as he feels that their aura is getting stronger instead, but his worries are not needed, since Kage has already passed by him, and with a cross slash, he was granted a quick death. Now lying on the ground, and as he was dying, he could only wonder why they had gotten stronger after turning into monsters. At the same time, he refuses to die like this, as he still needs to go back to the Saintus, and wants to stay by the Saintus' side, but he can only hold onto his badge, and his despair is absorbed in it. After the battle was ended, Wazi asks Piggy what are they going to do now, then something clicks inside Wazi, as he realized the samurai in front of him is the Yasuo Mushroom Uncle that killed him, while the two generals are planning to kill them, even if they appear to be harmless, Kage approached them, now in front of Wazi and Piggy, he raised his sword, Wazi pleads that they are all mushrooms here, suddenly Kage halt his attacks, and it seems like he is struggling, then he drops his sword just right on front of Wazi's jewels, shocking Wazi to his core, but Kage suddenly kneels, and it turns out, his body isn't listening to him, so he assumes he can't control his body anymore because he has stayed in human form for so long, but as if that can stop him, the chance of him letting an enemy escape is 0%, so he grabs his sword again and tried attacking Wazi and Piggy with a cross slash, but he was suddenly forced to kneel again, but now the crown is in between them, with this, 
he should realize by now what is happening, but he is an idiot, as he was still wondering what happened. On the other hand Bayu realized at the moment she catch a glimpse of it. Meanwhile, Wazi and Piggy, after opening their eyes, saw the crown, glowing with a bright aura. This made Piggy excited, and went to the crown to lick on it from all directions, which Kage was in a rage to witness, as he sees it as a desecration of his tribe's legacy. So he leaps to Piggy, and attacks her, but Wazi steps up to block the attack, therefore he was forced to kneel again, and since he was stubborn, he tries again which he failed again, but he still struggles to get up, since he refuses to believe that he can't kill them. After 10 attempts later, he should know it by now, but he still tries and fails again, while Piggy still has her tongue out, as she was ready to lick the crown again, Kage shouted her to stop, but she continued to lick it, now defeated, he accepted reality, while Bayu calls him an idiot, for still not understanding what it is happening, and that is all because of Wazi, which Wazi was also shocked, so he tells them, that they must have misunderstood something, since he doesn't know anything either, but suddenly the crown started to float, while Piggy tried to catch it, but it floats straight to Wazi and drops on Wazi's head, and merged with him, the system congratulates Wazi, for obtaining a heritage item, which shocked him, but suddenly an aura burst inside of him, and a crown mark appears on his mushroom cap, after that, the system appeared in front of him, informing him that he had completed the Ancestral Ruins exploration mission, in which he obtained experience points and a superior teleportation scroll, and he completed another mission, the final evolution, and also the King of a Race mission, in which he obtained a massive amount of experience, and four abilities, such as King's Majesty, Race Mastery, Domain, and Reverence Strengthening. He wonders what all of this is, so he opens his attribute panel, showing him that he is now a level 60 Mushroom King. He couldn't believe it. At the same time, Kage couldn't believe it also, as he believes Wazi is a human, so he stands up and tries to take back the king's heritage, but he is forced to kneel again, making him look like an idiot, even to Wazi's standards. Meanwhile, Bayu now raises her gun, aiming at Wazi, and tells Kage that he will never be able to hurt him with his attacks, while Wazi tries to reason with her, and suggests talking things through like civilized mushrooms. However, she still pulls the trigger, so Wazi just closes his eyes and brace for the attack, but the bullets are just fireworks, so they are amazed by it instead, and Bayu finally can say to his majesty, that they have completed his final mission for them, and have found the new king, so without hesitations, she approaches Wazi, and kneels before him, and greets the new mushroom king, shocking both Wazi and Kage. Afterwards, in the sacred sanctum, four powerful persona are attending the funeral of Feral, Lucretia, the guild leader of the sacred sanctum, says her farewell to Feral and he may rest in peace since he has realized his true value. Then Fenrir the White Wolf King, states that he never thought that Feral, a street thug would be able to collect enough to spare, and even have found the final ingredient they needed. Then Kamazot's king of maze-like caverns, Sanguine King, responds to Fenrir that nobody will think he is smart if he just state the obvious, to which made him angry, so he asks if he wants to fight him. While the conflict happened, Barbaro, the guild leader of the Tamer Alliance, calls Lucretia as owner, and asks if the final ingredient really has been confirmed, to which she responds that they have. Then she tells them that she needs to go, since the meeting is about to start, and they all must accomplish their part of the plan in the coming days, such as Kamazots will keep monitoring those people, and Barbaro will be handling the matters of other guilds, and she must report any movement of the Sword Saint. Then as Lucretia passed by Fenrir, he noticed he didn't get a mission, so he asks what about him, to which Kamazots lets out a small laugh and responds that he should just stay here and be a good guard dog and go make himself useful and take a piss on the ground to scare off any small animal. Fenrir had enough of disrespect, and he knows he shouldn't let this slide, so he started transforming, while insulting Kamazots, calling him a rat that learned how to fly, and he will carve some manners into that rat head of his, to which Kamazots didn't cower as he was about to transform too, and was even delighted to have a chance to teach a mutt a lesson. Now they are ready to go at each other's throats, but before this got out of hand, Lucretia pats Fenrir's head, and tells him, how can she forget him, and it is only because he is here that she can feel safe, he is her strongest shield, instantly diffusing his anger, as he thanks his owner, after that, she raises her chalice, and praises the demon god, 
and offer the pure despair from a soul, pouring blood into the jar, and inside it is the sealed demon god Gollum's skull, and its unsealing conditions is a pure despair from ten thousand souls which is now completed, and the head of one who is pure of heart, and once they offer up the last ingredient, may demon god Gollum descend and usher a new era. At a later time, somewhere in the land of the dead, six columns stands tall, and with a corresponding colored staff placed to it, then a crow appeared and it lands on the violet staff, and it looks to the left, and looks to the right, then it asks his so-called friends if they are here, to which no one responds, so it transforms its beak into a large microphone, shouting the meeting is starting, simultaneously the colored staff shines, and a hologram of the people who uses it, materializes their image. Zuzu, the crow, apostle of the land of the dead, guarding the seal of demon god Gollum's right leg, sees that little Sua is not coming again today, it expresses that it miss him so much, still, he just decides to continue with the business, and start by taking a look at everyone's progress, as he transforms into another creature, the village head, Broccoli, expresses thoughts, saying he still doesn't like this place where they can't hide anything, still, now their progress is now displayed in front of them, for everyone to see, it seems like everyone has made progress compared to last time, Zuzu suddenly sighs, as he wonders how Sua is doing on his end, still, it's okay, they must believe in their friend, then he transformed again, while saying he believes they will be able to welcome their master back to this world very soon, then he asked them if any of them noticed anything from the prophecy, the two immediately says no, but Lucretia is being extra, she raised both of her hands in the air as she exclaimed, that the sky will announce his arrival, the earth shall give birth to clouds, when ten thousand lives gather together, the legendary brave shall appear, and then she asked to have such an absurd criteria, will the prophecy ever be really fulfilled, and compared to the legendary brave that only exists in the prophecy, their biggest obstacles are still the sword saint and the elemental king, and if they can get rid of them, no one will be able to stop them from reviving their lord demon god Gollum. Broccoli expresses his scorn and responds, that only if she knew the true power of those two, she wouldn't make it sound so easy. He adds that, before they inherit the power of Lord Gollum, even if they attack them together, they wouldn't be able to fight the sword saint. Not to mention, there'd still be the elemental king. What's more, Sua hasn't appeared for over thirty years. They don't even know if he's still alive, or what happened to the seal he was in charge of. So, before they inherit a portion of Lord Gollum's power, he suggests that none of them mess with the Sword Saint or Elemental King. Zuzu transformed again, and he responds that, Prudence can sail a boat for ten thousand years, as Village Head Broccoli said, they should be careful with their actions, but there's no need to be too tense, and asks him why don't he stay behind and play later. But before he could respond, Lucretia responds that she suddenly remembers that Village Head Broccoli were defeated by the sword saint before, so if any mental demons are plaguing him, she can help him cleanse them, while she laughs mockingly. This made Broccoli agitated, so he asks her as a threat, why don't he kill his way into her sacred sanctum then, and why doesn't she mind her business, a group of trash that only knows how to drag others down. Zuzu diffuses the situation, by telling them to please don't argue since they are all friends here. Then Pascal asks Broccoli, if his assumptions were right, he should be able to open the seal in a month or two with his current speed, and once he inherits Lord Gollum's powers, he might be able to defeat the Sword Saint. To which Zuzu transforms again and responds that's not something they can be sure of. From what he knows, the divine tree that Broccoli spent so much time nurturing was ruined. It can't help him absorb the magic of Lord Gollum anymore. Of course, he also can't help the newbie braves change their class, so no one's helping him collect materials. This made him glare at Zuzu furiously, to which Zuzu was surprised and transformed, as he asks if he said something wrong. Lucretia didn't let the opportunity to mock Broccoli pass by, as she tells village head Broccoli that what happened was a huge shame, maybe he will be the one who ends up dragging them down, and maybe he just have to hand over the Tempest grasslands to her, as she laughs mockingly. He responds that he doesn't need her to stick her nose in the Tempest grasslands, this old man naturally has his own solution and if she dares try anything funny, he will ensure she will end up in pieces. After that, one by one disappeared, to which Zuzu was surprised since he thought they would stay behind and play with him. Then he looks at Pascal, the only one left. He responds that he couldn't either, 
because he still has many things to do. Zuzu pleads that it will be just for a little while, but he disappeared also. Zuzu could only sigh. Now they were all gone again, and just when he finally got to see his friends again, ever since little Suo went missing, no one had stayed to play with him anymore, and he wonders if he was alright. He suddenly got an idea. Although they left, he can just make his own friends, so he shout them to come out and play with him. So they did. Meanwhile, after leaving the meeting, Broccoli opens his eyes, decides to walk, and curses at those who doubt him. He states that he will show them that he is not useless without his tree, so he swings his staff, but it missed his target. Still, with his fiery eyes, he is determined to catch them himself, so he shouts at the snails to stop moving while he was struggling to catch it. The newbie sees him pathetically hunt the snail. The one with horns asks his friend if they should help him, to which he exclaimed no, since he refused to help them change class when they lacked just one snail daddy shell last time. The horn kid has heard he was once a super powerful expert, but even he couldn't escape old age. He now has to spend so much effort to kill a single snail, to which the friend responds. That's why he said, what's so great about being a brave? They might as well just find a way to make money and get rich. After that they just leave, while the village head is getting beat up on the cheeks by the daddy snail. As he was getting eaten up by the snail daddy, he was thinking about his choices. When he first chose the seal, he thought it would be easy. Who would have thought that cursed stone would make it so that he will be severely weakened whenever he leave its side? And to think he would fall so low, with humiliation and willpower, he managed to beat up the snail. Still, he also sustained injuries, and now he is so tired. He used to be one of the strongest people, and to think that just a bunch of snails can do this to him now. So he curses at Wazi since it was him who ruined this old man's master plan, as he threatens him in his mind. If he catches him again, he plans on devouring him whole. Meanwhile, in the Mushroom Kingdom, the four can be seen resting at the top of the walls. Wazi asks what exactly is going on, to which Bayu call him Majesty, and responds that, as he can see, the Mushroom Kingdom is slowly recovering, while Piggy is playing on the side. Wazi clarifies that, what he meant is, how did they get here all of a sudden? All he did was think about it, and they were suddenly here, as he asks himself if this is an ability that all the kings have, since he only gave a thought and that ability suddenly activated by itself. Meanwhile, Kage was still being an idiot and couldn't accept reality, as he asks how can a mere mushroom monster become the king of the entire mushroom race? There must be a mistake, so he relaunched an attack, while Wazi is in deep thought about his ability and has decided to try activating it again. So when Kage slices downward at him, Wazi has activated his domain. They were teleported instantly to a new location, making Kage think Wazi is a sly person, as he was plunged into a pond. However, still, this didn't stop him, as he tells Wazi that him acknowledging him as the new king, the possibility is 0%. As he launched another strike at him, Wazi activates the domain again, so they teleported to a new location, which Kage lands head first again. Bayu asks his majesty Wazi, to please, stop playing around, and suggest to return to the place from a while ago, since there are some official matters she must inform him about. Wazi understood, and he basically grasped how to use this ability anyway, so they teleported to where they were a while ago, face planning Kage again, which Wazi didn't intend to, as they were clueless why Kage always lands on his face. Now Wazi knows that, domain, allows him to freely travel within his domain, the Mushroom Kingdom. As for the other abilities, they're all passive, such as, King's Majesty, an ability exclusive to the rulers of a race. All monsters of the same species will listen to his orders, but he cannot force them to kill themselves. And then Race Mastery, all racial abilities' effectiveness increased by 100%. Mastery speed of racial abilities is also significantly increased, and the reverence strengthening the king will get stronger as the number of monsters who worship them increases. Meanwhile, in the background, Kage is still struggling. To him this is impossible, while he crawls to Wazi, but then Bayu tells him to stop embarrassing himself, and asks if he didn't see how Wazi teleported them around the Mushroom Kingdom. That was an ability even the previous king hadn't mastered. So to say, the king's heritage did not make a mistake. No matter how unwilling he is, he is now their new king. Kage responds that he knows, but all the previous Mushroom Kings had their king form, but this guy, he has already become the king, 
so he wonders why he still look like a mushroom monster, and he asks how can he leave their race if he looks like this. Listening to their conversation, Wazi realized that the stupid mushroom uncle is right, since he is now the mushroom king, and his level has reached 60. He wonders why haven't he evolved, now that he has obtained the king's heritage, shouldn't he evolve into a super powerful mushroom king form? So he asks the system if there is some kind of bug. The system answers that, because the player class changed into a mushroom brave, he can no longer evolve, and his monster form has been locked as mushroom monster. However, because he received the king's heritage, a weird situation has been created where the player evolved into the mushroom king species, but still kept the appearance of a mushroom monster. Wasi suddenly remembered that he had sacrificed his ability to evolve in exchange for becoming a brave, so, that's why he still looked like this even though his species changed to a Mushroom King, and as he was talking to the system, behind him, Kage is mocking Wazi, because Kage could only see him mumbling to himself, and asks Bayu if does that look like a King material to her, but she ignored him, and went over to Wazi, and perhaps, this was all destined, she asked his majesty, if did he also get hit by the shooting stars, Wazi was confused on what she meant by shooting stars, so he asks, which she clarifies that back then, when they were looking for the new Mushroom King, they were hit by a bright light that fell from the sky. After they woke up, they gained the ability to transform into humans. Now he realizes what shooting stars meant. While Kage assumes that it must be the doing of those humans, they made him turn into that disgusting form, so he states that if he ever find the person who did that, he will chop them into strips, as he lets out a killing intent, which made Wazi's cheek clench after hearing Kage's statement. Wazi nervously laugh, while he states that their assumption were right. Piggy and him also turned into humans after being hit by that shooting light, while Piggy is just happy to be here. Then they suddenly transformed back into humans, and it seems like the curse's duration is over, but this sudden transformation made Piggy lost her fruit as she cries for it, while Kage is also crying his lungs out, weirding everyone out, to which Bayu sighs and explain that it can't be helped because Kage is an idiot and can't change back to his monster form. This surprised Wazi, so he asks if it is possible to change back to their monster form. She responds that, it is possible, and she asks to not tell her that they can't do it either. Wazi explained that they have never tried it before, so he asks how does she transform back into a monster. So she demonstrated, by tossing her cigar into the air, and willingly change, just like that, which they were amazed by it. And while Piggy also transformed back into her monster form before, but that was only because she exhausted all her mana, and he didn't expect they could transform at will. Bayu explained that it's pretty easy, they just have to feel the energy from the shooting star and assimilate it into your body. After that, they will be able to transform at will, as she demonstrates to transform again at will, while Kage still isn't finished crying. Still, Wazi asks him, if he can't just do the same thing and transform back, so he stops his overacting, and hops back, to answer him, he tells him that it is easy for him to say, and asks if he thinks everyone can feel and control the energy from the shooting star that easily, which he demonstrate that he could, while humbly boasting, saying that he never thought about doing this before and imagined he would be forever stuck as a human, clearly hitting Kage's pride, while on the other hand Wasi, was hugged by Piggy's two Piggy. Bayu adds salt to Kage's wound as she states that it's actually not that hard, it's just that he is too stupid, because he doesn't know how to control the mana inside his body properly. The mana from the shooting star and the mana inside his body clash with each other, resulting in his current state. He is neither a complete human, nor an entire monster. In the end, he can't use the full power of either form, Kage couldn't let his image be ruined just like that. So he exclaimed that it's really not as easy as they say and it's because she is used to controlling her mana, and this kid Wazi has the boost from the king's heritage, and if it's really as easy as they say, he wants to see that girly try it, to which Wazi was enthusiastic to ask Piggy, to give it a go, and he says it's really easy, and advises her to just think really hard of turning to her monster form, therefore, she did what he tells to, and squeezes his soul out, while she thinks hard about her monster form, but she failed, which made Kage really happy, and he laughs, since he proved them wrong, but his celebrations was short-lived, when Wazi offered apples to her, so she successfully transformed back into her monster form, as Wazi tells Piggy that she is amazing, Kage's pride was kicked into oblivion, 
so with no more image to hold on to, he started to scream his lungs out again, which surprised Wazi and Piggy, but Bayu had enough, so she shoots him in head, knocking him out cold, while terrifying Wazi and Piggy at the same time, but before they could react, she told them to relax, since that was a blank. Now that Kage has been dealt with, they can talk about official matters. Bayu talks to his majesty, and as he can see, the Mushroom Kingdom is slowly recovering, but the truth is, the Mushroom Tribe is already gone, without the accumulation of their tribesmen. This place is actually no different from any other, that's why they need him to lead them to prosperity once again, and only he can bring back their lost tribesmen. Wazi asks how can he do that, to which she decides to just show it to him. Using spore-filled bullets, with hyper-evolution, she shoots the ground, and sprout different kinds of mushrooms, then she explained that these are the spores of different mushroom species that she collected earlier. She places them into bullets that will allow her to grow them back anywhere she needs them instantly. Wasi gets what she is saying, and that they can use spores to grow mushrooms and nurture them until they grow stronger. But, Auntie, since she can do it, he asks why she needs him. She responds that, compared to the 40,000 mushroom species that used to exist, the types of spores she collected are only a drop in the ocean. The only one who can bring them all back is him, his majesty. So he waves his spore manipulation, which makes Piggy ecstatic to get a hit, and calls Bayou Auntie again, as he states that he was able to grow mushrooms with his spores before, but the mushrooms never turned into monsters, to which calling her Auntie really puts a toll on her ego. But still, she responds, he should be able to do it now, because he is now the Mushroom King, he should have the regal spore ability. This made him think, since he doesn't remember seeing an ability like that when he looked at his status, so he assumes his spores automatically became regal spores the moment he became the Mushroom King. Only the regal spore can spawn the most basic mushroom species, Mushroom Monster, which can then evolve into any existing mushroom species. As long as His Majesty continuously grows more and more mushroom monsters, they will gradually evolve and recover the strength of their tribe. This made him determined, so he used Spore Explosion, and expect his little mushrooms to come out, but to his surprise, nothing was happening, so he wonders why, and asks if his spores are not effective. Suddenly the system answers his questions and states that a king has many abilities, the player has yet to unlock them all successfully, and asks him to increase the proficiency of his skills. Bayu also clarifies that, although he is now their king, he received the king's heritage not too long ago, he still have plenty of room to grow, to which he understands. Then he calls Bayu Auntie again, and asks her if does she have a way to help him gain experience quickly, to which she shove her gun to his face, as she calmly and politely asks his majesty, to call her Bayu not Auntie. Wazi instantly complied, so this made her happy, and regained composure, and she states that of course, she has a way to help him quickly grow, since it is also one of her missions to help his majesty grow stronger. Seeing her calm down, he suggested to just call him Duo M.O. instead of His Majesty. She asked why, to which he explained that it is because, he feels like he doesn't have what it takes to be the King of the Mushrooms just yet, and that he is still too weak to help the Mushroom Tribe recover its original strength. But when he grows stronger in the future and can lead the Mushroom Tribe back to prosperity, it won't be too late to call him Your Majesty then. And with this speech, he gained a new ability called Righteous Persuasion. While Bayu thinks despite obtaining the power of the king's heritage, he is not arrogant, so if he can maintain this attitude, he will grow into an incredible king one day. Now that Wazi's statement moves her, she tells him that she understands, and calls him Duoemo. After that, Wazi asks him what should they do now, at the same time Kage regained consciousness, so he somersault towards Wazi, while saying isn't obvious, they need to take revenge, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, they must flatten the humans from the Eye of the Firebane Guild, which made Wazi remember the masked man and asks if he is insane while shouting, because he doesn't want to die yet, but the Savage system has other plans with him, so it congratulates the player for triggering a new mission, the Mushroom King's Revenge. Afterwards, Wazi and his companions are now riding the train, and as the train travels to a canyon, an unknown group of bikers is on top of it and looking at Piggy, earnestly. Meanwhile, Inside the train, it is packed with a variety of people. The conductors are walking back and forth, while others are staring with their hard eyes at Bayu. Being a simp, 
offering their services, which Bayou appreciates. Still, on the other hand, Kage expresses his scorn, saying that they are despicable humans, since he was constantly ignored because he looks weird. While squeezing Wazi with his hands, Bayou admits it is much easier to move around in human form outside the Mushroom Kingdom, to which Kage responds that he can easily outrun this thing the humans call a train in his original form. While Wazi look at him with annoyance as he thinks this stupid muscle brain kept screaming about seeking revenge, but it turns out he doesn't even know where the Eye of the Fire Bane Guild is. Bayou then states that the ticket collector said a while ago that the train tracks in the Source Volcano region were destroyed, so, they will have to get off in a nearby village and wait for the rising platforms to reach their destination, which Wazi was intrigued by these rising platforms, but before he could ask more questions, a douche appeared in front of them, asking how could such a beautiful lady like Bayou be sitting here with the rest of these peasants, and why don't she come and sit with him in his luxury cabin, to which she coldly tells him to scram. Still, this douche is persistent, so he asks if she is refusing him because of the fugly one sitting in front of her. This statement makes Kage even more furious as he squeezes Wazi even more. Still, the douche with a tool for a head wasn't done belittling Kage, as he adds that, he wonders which cave this goblin crawled out from. Therefore, before he could even finish introducing himself, his head was detached from his body. Wasi was surprised by this outcome, so he takes a look at what happened to the head. But as it stops rolling, it pops out a body. It shouts for his servants to help him, which Wasi was even surprised more as he wonders if he is even a human. In contrast, the servants pick him up, as he still isn't aware of what happened to him. So he curses how useless his servants are since he assumes that they did not help him put his suit on properly. So the lock suddenly popped open. Now embarrassed they leave the scene. Meanwhile, other adventurers ignores them as they were busy talking about different subjects, such as the assassin-looking guy, states that the Castle of Time is a great place to train. But he must say, not only are the people there annoying, the entrance fee is really expensive. The elf lady responds that she still doesn't understand why the guild would send all of them to drive out of here monsters. She could have handled this mission alone. The shaman-looking guy calls her Miss Ali Fay and responds that they shouldn't question the guild's decision too much. Also, they shouldn't ever underestimate their enemies. Meanwhile, the knight is chugging his alcohol, enjoying his drinking it. He was happy that this sure hits the spot, and he wonders what the liquor in the Castle of Time tastes like. The shaman calls him Sir Adrian, and asks him politely to think of his image for a bit, to which Adrian calls him Edmund and asks him why is he always so upright. They got Lord Eugene, the Dragon Knight, backing them up for this mission, with him on their side. What could possibly go wrong? Hearing this news made the assassin excited, since Lord Eugene is a super strong expert who used to be a part of the Sword Saint Guild, while Adrian is still convincing Edmund not to be so uptight because their guild also has a lot of experts. Even Ely Fay became a beer rank combatant candidate after joining their guild for just a few days. But Edmund was not moved by his happy-go-lucky attitude, and now was agitated as he tells Adrian politely to mind his manners, and if only he was a little more disciplined and drank less alcohol, he would have been promoted to be ranked long ago. But as a happy-go-lucky person, he'd rather be a C rank for life than to do what Edmund said as he chugs his alcohol again. Even without his eyes you can see he is disappointed, as he ignores him and puts his attention towards Ely Fay, and asks her, why did she choose to join their guild? But the assassin responded that, it's obvious because their walrus ivory guild is pretty strong. Edmund tells him that he might not know this, but as a member of Fay tribe, Miss Ely Fay could have chosen to join the Spirit Forest, one of the six great guilds. The assassin asks if can all the members of the Fae tribe join the guild that easily. Edmund responds that it is of course not easy to join that easily. But as he knows this, Miss Ely Fay is a genius ranger. She is more than qualified to join the guild. But Ely Fay express her scorn towards the spirit forest, as she explained that the guild simply doesn't catch her eyes, which her teammates knows that's a cap. So they were just silent and couldn't find a word to respond, and went awkwardly silent. While Ely Fay is thinking to herself that she will prove to everyone that even without his father's backing, she, Ely Fay, can still shine, and will forge her own path. Suddenly Adrian stands up, and he decides to not spoil the mood. So he shares his prized wine with everyone, which the shaman instantly says no. A few moments passed by, the train finally arrived to its destination, so everyone stepped out and went their way. 
Now Wazi's group is standing in front of a pole, looking for directions, while Wazi, staring at his system, and according to it they still have quite a way to go, but as long as they keep going like this, this should be the shortest path to the source volcano, as he points to where they should go. As they walk, Wazi is in deep thought, thinking to himself that the system said before, that the seals are hidden in places with large energy concentrations, then it shouldn't be too far-fetched to think, maybe one of the seals is hidden in a volcano, and these two are going there for revenge, but he is only going there to look for a seal. Kage suddenly states that, since they are the ones taking the initiative to attack this time, they must make sure to not spare a single one of them. Now that they are ahead of Wazi, he instantly calls for Piggy. Since his mushroom body is too slow he is thankful that Piggy is here. As he mounts to her, now they are back to their original duo, so he commands for them to run, therefore she runs like a wind, but to Wazi's surprise, he was left behind, since Kage is holding him, as he asks what is he trying to do, and although he hates to admit this, Wazi is still his king, as such, he will be training him just as he did for the past few kings, which made him confused, but Kage clarifies that, if they want to take down those humans, just Bayu and him will be far from enough, so from now on, he will be teaching him how to fight properly. Wazi asks what kind of training, to which he answers that it is his hell on earth training, and now it officially begins, and before he could respond, Kage already grabbed him by the cap, while Bihaya tells him to relax, since Kage was also the teacher of the last king, so he can trust his training, while Piggy just had came back from realizing that Wazi wasn't with her. A few moments pass by, the two ladies are now sunbathing, laying on a big mushroom cap, while the system reminds Wazi, that if his stamina points reach zero, he will enter an unconscious state, as Wazi begs for Kage to permit him to take a rest, but he just got a bonk from him instead, and he asks how can he give up so quickly, and he's not allowed to stop until he passed out from exhaustion, still Wazi tells him that, he really can't go on much longer, but Kage repeats himself, saying that, unless he faints from exhaustion, he is not allowed to stop, and also commands him to call in teacher, as Kage bonks him multiple times, to which Wazi complies, while Kage smiles menacingly, as he thinks to himself that, this is what Wazi get for making him kneel down for so many hours, as long as he used the facade of training him, he can hit him as much as he wants even if he is the king. Wazi suddenly transforms back to his monster form, as he runs out of SP, and enters an unconscious state, so Piggy comes down and picks him up, as she is concerned by what happened to her mushroom, so he looks at Kage and tells him that he cannot bully her mushroom like that, still, Kage ignores her as he states that this level of combat prowess is far from enough, so he tells Bayu that she should also teach a thing or two to Piggy. At a later time, now they set up a camp, Wazi open his eyes, and see Piggy is holding him, but it seems like he was just dreaming, as he tries to kiss Piggy, but in reality, Kage is the one holding him, telling him to wake up and got squeezed instead. Still half asleep, he shouts since his cute Piggy turned into an ugly monster, and jump out from Kage's grasp to retreat. Still confused, he asks what happened because all he can remember is he was in the middle of his training, and he asks where is Piggy and Bayou. But as he turns to his right, his question were answered, as he sees the two of them are now soundly sleeping, sheltered by the huge cap they got. Kage tells him that he is noisy, and asks how can he be so weak, fainting after just a little training. Now he remembers his stamina points dropping to zero, and his head hurts. The system appears and tells him that it is because his stamina dropped to zero. He entered an unconscious state for six hours. This made him realize that he would be eaten alive if he fainted in the wild, so he must make sure never to let his stamina points drop to zero if he is alone. Talking to the system, Kage asks what is he mumbling about, to which he answers that it is nothing, he just thought that he might have died if they weren't around. Kage tells him that there is no need to be so pessimistic, he has just started his training after all. Wazi responds that, it is his fault that he is not able to evolve, he initially thought that he would be able to get past the limit cap as a human and get stronger, but he was too rash. Now he is locked in the form of a low-ranking monster. No matter what he learns in the future, his form will still hold him back. Kage asks who on earth said he needs to evolve to grow stronger, which surprised Wazi, since he believes that it is a common sense after all. Kage then adds that, who said low-ranking monsters couldn't become stronger? This confuses him even more since that is also a common sense, 
but he suddenly exclaimed that he is an idiot to believe that, and tells him that, his strength is not determined by what form he takes but by the determination of his heart, he can be strong as long as he is 100% determined. This just made Wazi sigh, but he thanks Kage for trying to cheer him up, but if he were to become the Mushroom King like this, he would just drag everyone down. So Kage bonked him again, and tells him to watch carefully. Kage spits his leaf, and as it flew in the air, he swings his sword, slicing its stem into pieces. With this, Wazi was amazed. So Kage asks what does he think, and was that strong? He answers that it is very strong, super strong, but Kage states that, he is also Wazi's so-called low-ranking monster. This surprised him, so he asks how's that possible? Therefore he looks at the distance, and answers his question, that it all started over 40 years ago. In the Mushroom Kingdom, a bunch of mushroom monster can be seen lining up, one of them hops in the front, and transforms into a needle mushroom, and gives the needles, for the mushroom monsters to transform into a mushroom trooper. But amidst the crowd, one of them distinctly looked like Kage, is holding a flaxed needle, and as he gives his limp needle to the mushroom monster, it couldn't help but cry, since it didn't evolve into a trooper, making Kage a laughing stock by his mates. Now embarrassed he runs from the scene, because as a needle mushroom he was not able to provide the other mushrooms with weapons, so in everyone's eyes, his existence was irrelevant, he was destined to be a weakling, until, one day, the humans once again invaded the mushroom kingdom, so the king commanded them to charge, facing the humans head on, and amidst the crowd, Kage is holding his flaxed needle, and is still determined to charge and fight the invaders, and as soon as he got close to a human, he stick his needle, but his attack was futile, since it wasn't hard enough to penetrate the adventurer, so he got kicked to the face instead. Still, his determination wasn't diminished, as he takes out another limp needle from him, and charge at the adventurer again, but determination doesn't win battles, so he was easily stomped onto the ground, and he was being belittled by his opponent, but with his performance, the adventurer let his guard down, so before he could land his killing blow, he was easily knocked down by another mushroom, then Kage looks at his savior and see that he is holding a katana, with a cool hat hiding his face, suddenly the mysterious mushroom leaps, and knock out the humans one by one, seeing this happen with his own eyes, Kage can't help but be amazed by the mysterious mushroom, meanwhile, several humans are pushing a cart, since the guild leaders said as long as they get all the wine to the front lines, they will be able to defeat all the mushrooms, so they did just that, and as it got closer to the mushrooms, a fire mage set it on fire, making it explode, but before they could ignite all of it, another mushroom emerged from the ground, and extinguished all the fire, still the fire mage was determined to finish his mission, so he readies for another attack, but the mushroom was faster than him, as it cast a sand stream cancelling his attacks, and with that, the other mushroom charged, and the adventurers now realize their guild leader's plan failed, so they retreat, now that the humans are gone, they know that they won, and they are happy since they even got wine that the humans failed to ignite, and are now ready to party, while Kage is on the side looking sadly from a distance. At a later time, the wine is entirely empty, the party has completely ended, and now all the mushrooms, and even the king has completely passed out drunk, while Kage is still sitting from the side all alone. Suddenly a magic portal formed and an adventurer appeared, as it turns out, the young broccoli laughs as he saw his plan was a success, who would have thought it'd be this easy to infiltrate the Mushroom Kingdom, as he takes out his staff, he wonders how does he get the Mushroom King to demonize, but he decided not to care, as long as he can complete this mission, he can inherit a part of Gollum's power, but suddenly he felt an attack on his legs, as he turns his eyes to look at Kage, determined to defend his king, but he was easily knocked out by broccoli, still determined, Kage obtained a new ability, speech, now he could talk, as he tells Broccoli that, he won't let him hurt the king, but Broccoli was ruthless, as he didn't hesitate to approach him and was ready to kill him quickly, but luckily, his attack was blocked, by the mysterious mushroom from the battle earlier, but Kage already sustained huge amount of damage so he fainted on the spot, a handful of minutes later, Kage regained consciousness and flipped over to see what is happening, now a sword master has completely overpowered Broccoli, and he is sitting on the ground completely injured, Broccoli gritted his teeth, and calls the man in front of him, the Sword Saint, and ask him what his problem about him attacking the Mushroom Kingdom, but the Sword Saint, 
didn't answer his questions. Instead, he just tells Broccoli that he has indeed fallen, since he knows that he has been contacting the followers of the demon god Gollum. Although he doesn't know Broccoli's goal here in the Mushroom Kingdom, it must be because he has made a deal with Gollum's followers. This made Broccoli wonder how did he find out, but the sword saint swung his sword and tells him that his desire for power has clouded his eyes, and he will never allow the demon god to return. So he called him old friend and said his goodbyes, but before he could strike, Broccoli takes out an absolute contract scroll, and Broccoli says that he knows his mistakes, and for old time's sake, he pleads to spare his life. Then he swears on this absolute contract scroll that he will immediately disband his guild and never leave the starter village again. Otherwise, he will lose all his magic power and all the strength in his body. So he retracts his attack, only cutting his hair and his staff, and he takes the contract. As he leaves, he tells him to not ever dare to think of doing anything evil again. At the same time, Kage sees all this happen with his own eyes, and even the sword saint transforms back into a mushroom but he lost his consciousness again. Kage suddenly opens his eyes, and gets up, as he wonders what happened to his king and everyone else, so he stands up to look for answers. Arriving at the place, he was delighted that everyone was alright, but to his surprise, the mysterious mushroom was beside him. As he acknowledges him since, he didn't back down even in the face of an unbeatable opponent, to protect his family, so he tells him that he is a pretty good kid. Kage noticed his injuries was bandaged up, so he realized he must be the one who saved him, and when the mysterious mushroom was about to leave, Kage kneels in front of him, the mysterious mushroom asks what is he doing, to which he calls him benefactor, and answers that, he doesn't know what mushroom species the mysterious mushroom is, but he also doesn't know if he will ever evolve into something as strong as him, so he asks him to teach him the way of the sword, because he wants to be as strong as him, the mysterious mushroom asks why does he want to get stronger, to which he answered with determination in his eyes, so that he can protect this place. So the mysterious mushroom tells him that his swordsmanship training is very harsh, and asks him if does he think he can handle it, to which he answers absolutely. After hearing his backstory, Wazi is still looking at Kage, which bothers him, so he asks what is his problem, to which Wazi asks if it's that all, and how he can stop there. What about his training arc, because they are just getting to the good part, Kage asks what's there to talk about, in any way he has already thought him the training, which Wazi was confused and asked when has he ever thought him, other than nearly causing him to die from exhaustion, but before he could finish his statement, Kage proudly claims, that it is exactly what it is, and that's the way to become stronger, to train to the point of nearly dying from exhaustion, then once he has recovered, he do it again, day after day after day, this statement made him think about a popular manga he saw before. So Wazi just ignores him, and calls out to his system, and ask, if can he, a mushroom monster, really get stronger by repeatedly pushing his body to the limit. It answers him that it is indeed possible to increase his attributes by training his body. So he opens his attribute panel to look at his stats, and to his surprise, his attributes went up. Still, his level stayed the same, but he only got 1 point of attack and 10 points of mana and HP. Even after training to the point of exhaustion, he noticed that this is a little inefficient. The system tells him that the closer he is to his limit, the more his attributes will increase. Still, it does not recommend him to train in such a fashion. The efficiency is too low, and he will be very vulnerable in his unconscious state. So he asked if there is another way to help him get stronger, to which the answer is no. Kage then asks Wazi to stop talking to himself over there, and he is telling him, that as long as he can make it past the first bottleneck, he will get a lot stronger. So Wazi asks how long did it take him to finish the training, which he answered by raising his five fingers. Wazi assumes that he meant five months, to which he clarifies that it is five years, shocking him completely. As Kage adds that, although it is a little unpleasant to hear, needle mushrooms like him are still stronger than the basic mushroom monster, so in Wazi's case, it would take him 10 years, which made him even more surprised, but he clarifies, that would be the case under normal circumstances, however, he has the blessings of the king's heritage, so it would be much faster, the previous mushroom king only took one year to finish his training, and, of course, what they were doing right now was simply breaking down the limit of his body, he still needed to teach him swordsmanship after that, and that would take quite some time as well. Hearing all this training made Wazi sigh, as he lies on the ground, 
since he knows that Gollum's apostle won't just sit there and wait for him to get stronger. But then he remembers what the system said to him just now. The closer he is to his limit, the higher the increase in his attributes. Therefore it clicks to him, while Kage is still looking at the distance and talking to him, saying that he will probably train him and not let that kind of tragedy happen again. But he noticed Wazi was not listening to him, so he asked what is he doing, but Wazi just ignored him and went on his way. As he calls him uncle and explained to him that he suddenly remembered that he had something to do, to which he says that he already told him to call him master not uncle. Still, instead of beating it to him now, he decides to just train him even harder tomorrow, while he puts down his hat and sword, and as he looks at it, he was suddenly in a daze, as he remembers the past where he is with his master, and the happy memories that comes with it, but also the bad ones, as he also remembers that his master also killed the previous king, since the previous king was also turned into a demonic fallen mushroom king, a painful memory is just buried deep in his heart, so he just closes his eyes. Meanwhile, in a pond full of glowing eyes, swamp fishmen enjoy their time there and are playing around the waters. Suddenly, a golem's apostle appears above them, and it takes out the bell. As soon as he rings it, the swamp fishman becomes enraged and went rabid, as they attack each other like they own each other's money. Now the pond is in chaos, while the apostle is still ringing his bell. A few moments pass by, a single fishman survives the onslaught. Therefore, the apostle rings his bell again, giving it immense power, so its body exponentially grows, and it begins to mutate into a different entity entirely, as it grows horns, and became more demonic-like. Still, it wasn't enough, so after it was done transforming, it ate all the bodies it could get, and absorbed all of them, making it more powerful than what it previously was. After assimilating it exited the pond and went straight to a village. Now that the apostle successfully created an abomination, he went on his way, and vanish. Meanwhile, it is the second day of Wazi's training arc, and when the sunlight hits Piggy, she wakes up with full energy, and goes down to look around at her surroundings. However, she couldn't see Wazi anywhere, so she called out to Kage, but he was still in a daze. So, Bayu picked Piggy up and asked where's Wazi for her, to which he responded, that brat was doing something the entire night, as he pointed to the haystack to tell them Wazi harvested that all. At the same time Wazi emerged from it, as he thinks that should be enough, and he is so tired right now. With a 1 SP left on him, he was still determined to do the last step. So he takes out a mushroom bowl from his inventory, pushes under the haystack, and he takes out a live slime. He squeezes the slime for its juice. After he is done using it, he tosses it back into his inventory, and without time to waste, he immediately sits on the juice and use decompose to its full power. This surprises both of the generals, as Bayu feels a powerful magical fluctuation, so she concludes that it must be a king-level ability, and Kage couldn't believe Wazi can even perform such a thing. Wazi is decomposing the haystack faster than before. After he completely decomposed a stack of herbal grass, he gained 12,500 experience points. Still, he wasn't done, so he inhales a huge amount of air to vomit what he absorbed, and make a super potion. Drinking this would instantly cure all status conditions, and with a sweet and mushroomy flavor. The system congratulates him for successfully concocting the super potion, and rewarding him with a new level 6 ability called Potion Crafting. Wazi collapsed on the ground because he is too exhausted and too tired to even speak, but Piggy appears to the rescue and goes over to him. So Wazi tells her to help him and point towards the super potion he just made. So without hesitation she went over to it, and pick it up, which Wazi signals a job well done. So she opens the potions, which Wazi was ecstatic to drink it, as he points towards his mouth. So Piggy couldn't misunderstand, which Piggy nods furiously, and claims she understood. So without hesitations, she gulps down the super potions to its last drop, which Wazi couldn't believe what he saw. But Piggy is happy to do her job, while Wazi's soul left his body. Suddenly, Piggy felt immense energy flowing inside of her, and her body was trembling because of it. An immense aura came out from her, and now she received a drastic increase in vitality, which the limit had already been reached. She levels up a few times, and her digestion has also leveled up two times. And because of this, she obtained two new abilities called Endless Vitality and an Enhanced Physique, and she is looking like she is ready to kill a Chimera Ant King Guard if she encounters one. 
Meanwhile, Wazi's soul has left this world, as he dries up from where he lies, and now his SP reached zero, and entered an unconscious state again. Three days later, Bayou and Piggy are sitting beside a river, and is meditating under a shade, which Piggy is clearly having a hard time concentrating, as she keeps on looking at her surroundings, which Bayou notice what she is doing. Piggy looks where Wazi is, and hops down from the platform she is sitting on, to go to Wazi. Still, Bayou has other plans for her, so she shoots Piggy, launching a net to wrap her like a ball ham, which she tries to escape from it by transforming back into her human form, and telling Bayou to release her. Bayou approaches her, and acknowledges Piggy's ability to speak, has improved, but her focus is still lacking, so she strictly tells Piggy for her to understand that she will continue her training with her, to which Piggy complies. Meanwhile, Wazi is training hard with Kage, as Kage is motivating him like a master should, while he tells Wazi that he is still too slow, and he has only been pulling for a day, so Kage asks him if he is going to slack off again, while Wazi is gasping for air, since he has only one SP left again. At the same time he is thinking that, he was unconscious for a day, and Decompose also failed once, altogether. He wasted three days in an instant, but at least he manages to successfully create another super potion. So when his SP reached zero, and was about to enter an unconscious state, he drinks it up, energizing him completely, and making his SP return to 100. With this he runs like he never run before, even launching Kage from his seat, to which Kage was impressed, since he thought Wazi was gonna faint again, so he acknowledges that he is improving faster than he expected. Wazi proudly explained that it is because of the potion he made after gathering thousands of herbs, but Kage wasn't listening, as he laughed joyfully and takes all the credit, saying that it must be because he is a great teacher, that he has actually already learned to properly use his strength, to which Wazi agrees sarcastically. Wazi then asks Kage for advice if his assumptions were right, in gaining more if he was closer to his limit, but Kage shouts at him instead, and tells him if he has the energy to think, he should just use it to pull harder, so Wazi did what he was told, and as he was pulling the cart, Kage explained to him since he must know that because of their species barrier, low-ranking demons need to exert ten times the effort to achieve the same result as a high-ranking demon, so there's absolutely no time to be lazy. Only after they achieve multiple breakthroughs can they stand toe-to-toe -to -toe against a high-ranking demon, which Wazi responds that he thought so too, but he was bonked instead by Kage, so he asks why he hit him, he wasn't slacking, to which Kage asks him, if he thinks this little bit of improvement is enough, because he believes it is about time he increased the difficulty, and strike at him, so Wazi must keep pulling the cart while dodging his attacks. Time passed by so fast, but they didn't let it waste a single moment, as they kept on training themselves to be better, and increase the difficulty with each passing day, but as the challenges got difficult, their progress and strength increased with it. Now Wazi is now buffed as he kept on pulling heavy things, while Piggy is now more focused than ever before since she kept meditating while listening to Nickelback, but still, this wasn't enough for Wazi, so even when the others were resting, he was still training. The 20th day arrived and Piggy was in her battle stance, as she was facing a giant stone golem, for her test, with Bayou's go signal, she went to attack first. The stone golem, uses a level 10 hardening to receive Piggy's attack head on, so when Piggy lands her Piggy punch, the golem wasn't phased, and it takes its chance to counter attack, knocking Piggy to a boulder, now that Piggy has taken damage, Bayou advises her to not just keep using brute force, since there are plenty of beings with strength greater than her, so she has to focus and find the opponent's weak spots, to which she responds that she understood, as she stands up, she closes her eyes, this made her wild instinct ability to level up, the golem launches multiple strikes at her, but she easily dodges it one after the other, and as she was in the air, she sensed the golem's weak spots, so to not waste any more energy, she swiftly used Piggy Punch to attack the Golem on all its weak spots. The Golem still has activated the level 10 hardening, so it manages to launch a counter-attack, but its attack didn't reach Piggy as it shattered to pieces. Now she finally completed her test. She calls Bayou as her big sis, as she happily states that she did it, so she asks if she can go play with Mushroom now, to which Bayou permits her to go, while she is thinking to herself that, although Piggy is a little childish, her learning ability isn't bad at all. As a companion of the king, 
This little piggy is a rare talent. Meanwhile, Kage expresses his scorn, as he states that, those potions are nothing but external items, and he has gotta rely on hard work if he wanna get stronger, while Wazi is gasping for air, and is completely dehydrated, and his super potions is now empty. In contrast, he states that he still can endure it, but his SP reaches zero, and he collapses on the floor. Still Kage acknowledges his hard work, but Wazi still reaches his limits, so he decides to end today's training. Suddenly Wazi is covered with a glowing aura, and light fills the place. As Wazi successfully breaks through, the system congratulates him for that, and informs him that his attribute growth rate has been increased, and he obtained 80,000 experience points, so he levels up. Wazi was amazed how he feels like his whole body's lighter, while Kage is shocked beyond belief since he couldn't believe Wazi breakthrough but it has only been less than a month. Wazi proudly states that it is exactly as he expected. Kage asks what does he mean, to which Wazi tells him that it is just like what he said about having a breakthrough layer by layer, and that he just added a clever little trick to the training for breaking through. He did the harsh training normally, but whenever he was about to faint, he simply took a sip of his potion, so this allowed him to keep accumulating momentum by repeatedly reaching his limit, until he couldn't hold on any longer, finally unleashing it all in one instant, and that is his little trick, the closer he is to his limit, the more significant the improvement, this amazed Piggy as she supported whatever Wazi said, and Bayou acknowledged that was very smart of him, but he will need enough of that potion on his neck before it can be accomplished, on the other hand, Kage states that he doesn't understand a word he is saying, but since he has broken through, then, it is about time they start the real training, and he tells Wazi not to get cocky, since the training will only get harder from now on, and it is time they do some combat training, which Wazi isn't so thrilled about, as he thought breaking through is the last step, but it turns out, it is just the start. The next day, in the habitat of the Mantis, several Blade Mantis can be seen knocked out, and now Wazi is facing another Mantis in one-on-one -on -one battle. Wazi uses his Mushroom Sword Dance, while the Mantis uses his Inch Instant Blade Draw, and as they clash their abilities, Wazi receives a damage on his face. In contrast, the Senior Blade Mantis lost. With this outcome, Piggy celebrated Wazi's win, while the two generals stayed calm. Wazi then talks to Kage, asking if he saw that, and boasts that his combat techniques are pretty good, to which Kage calls him an idiot because that was just the warm-up. Wazi was confused, so Kage tells him that, in front of real experts, underestimating his opponents for a single moment can lead to his death. Suddenly he felt something. A blade was suddenly unsheathed. Luckily he blocked it in the nick of time, but it knocked him back. Now in front of him, is a level 78 Grandmaster Blade Mantis. When a Blade Mantis reaches the peak of the Way of the Sword, it will evolve into a Grandmaster Blade Mantis. After evolving it will become the sword teacher for all the Blade Mantis in its territory, and if two Blade Mantis Grandmasters meet, they will duel to the death. Wazi then noticed, for a level 78 monster, its offensive attributes are too strong. Kage responds that, it is just a minor difference in rank, and as a king, he should at least be able to do this much. Wazi tells him that even after he fully break through, his attributes aren't a match for this thing, but the Grandmaster isn't playing around as it leaps to Wazi, while he was still talking, and it uses a Grandmaster level blade cleave on him. At a later time, they have set up a camp to rest, and Piggy is busy being helpful, stacking herbs, while Wazi is badly injured. He then tells them that was way too hard, so he asks if can't they find an opponent that at his level. Kage replies that, if it was someone else, yes, but not him. This confuses Wazi, so he asks why, to which Bayou responds that, it is because he is training to become a king, only by fighting opponents of a higher level can he show his full potential. Then Kage adds that, among the humans that attacked the Mushroom Kingdom back then, many of them were of a higher level, but all of them were beaten back by the previous king anyway, all except the last one. The generals then tell him that there are two areas he needs to improve on right now. First, there are a lot of excessive movements in his sword play. Second, he needs to learn how to bring out the true strength of his weapon, the Mushroom Rapier. Wazi was clueless, so he asked how, to which Kage explained to Wazi that the Mushroom Rapier is the legacy weapon of the Mushroom Kings. It will appear by itself in front of the King through miraculous ways. Although he is not sure how he got his hands on it, he can tell that Wazi is not fully compatible with it yet. 
and he is yet to find a combat style unique to himself. This confuses him more, since he believes that it is just a normal sword. Other than being unbreakable, it doesn't have any other abilities. Meanwhile, Piggy is still busy stacking herbal stems in the background. Bayou then states that the late king's rapier was formed from 1,000 absorbing mushrooms. That's why it has the ability to absorb and release energy. This made Wazi realize that no wonder why the level 60 Mushroom King could beat that level 69 warrior back then. It turns out that his weapon had a unique ability, and with this, he assumes that all he has to do is learn how to make his Mushroom Rapier absorb and spit out energy, which he earned a bonk to the head for being a dumbass. Wazi asks Kage why he hit him. He is a patient, to which Kage asks him if he was even listening. Then Bayu explains that, throughout history, all the mushroom rapiers were unique. Their attributes are based on the king wielding them, so each king has a different fighting style. So she advises Wazi to think carefully. Then she asks how did he get his mushroom rapier. He answers that it came from a tree branch. Kage is shocked to hear what Wazi just said, so this made him facepalm. As he sigh, since he believes it is over, and they are doomed. In contrast, Wazi picks up his sword and remembers something, but before he can say it, his wounds open up again, and all of his mushroom juices come out from him. The next day, in front of the Temple of the Mantis, the Grandmaster Blade Mantis is sitting all alone meditating, and Wazi is in his battle stance to challenge it again. So Wazi charged at the Mantis, which it opens its eyes as Wazi got closer, and it knocked him to the ground. Kage sighed as he saw Wazi getting his ass handed to him again, but Wazi wasn't done. So he went for another attack, but the Grandmaster Mantis just cleaves through him again. Therefore Bayou declares that Wazi failed. However, Wazi's fighting spirit isn't diminished as he asks to try again, and went to charge at the Grandmaster Mantis for another round. And as their attack clashed, and the Grandmaster Mantis confidently put his sword back in its sheath, but he was surprised to see Wazi is still standing. In contrast, Wazi was now more confident as he claimed that he finally saw the Grandmaster Mantis's movements, and his Sage Mode mastery has increased from level 7 to level 8, to which Kage is proud that there's little improvement, but that doesn't mean he can defeat the Grandmaster Mantis now, as he was knocked to the ground again. This made him realize that seeing its movements aren't enough, it's useless if his body can't keep up. Kage then points out to Wazi that he has gotten rid of a lot of excess movements, but it is still lacking. And if he can't win against something of this level, then what will happen when he faced the Eye of the Firebane Guild? Bayu tells Wazi that he has a talent, since he was able to improve so much in less than a month, so she advises him to try his best to activate the special ability of his Mushroom Rapier. But Wazi is visibly frustrated, because he really doesn't know what's the special ability of his sword, but he's still charged to attack. And as they fight, Bayu reminds him that he has the King's heritage, and he is the only one who can do it so she advises him to recall how his sword was formed. This leads him to more questions than answers, as he asks himself how a branch of the divine tree transformed into the mushroom rapier, and what's his connection with it, while Kage assumes that, as a mushroom king, Wazi doesn't even look like a mushroom, so maybe that is why he can't use his sword, but suddenly something clicks inside of Wazi's brain. As he heard these words from Kage, he finally realizes something. When he uses mushroom bash, while in his human form, it turns into an enhancement of his legs that allows him to dash and jump with incredible power. When in monster form, he is using the abilities of a monster, but as a human, his abilities will change into something suitable for a human to use. Strictly speaking, it is no longer an ability, but mushroom magic. Although Piggy and Ant Bayou can also transform between the two forms, he is different from them. Using the Mushroom Rapier, he can use it to freely change his abilities between the two forms. This will allow him to combine his Mushroom abilities and Mushroom magic into one. What's more, that tree branch originally had the ability to accumulate power. With that, he could store magic power and use it to dish out an extra powerful attack or replenish his own. Meanwhile, Kage is amazed at how Wasi is utilizing his ability to transform between human and monster forms to throw off the Blade Mantis Grandmaster's rhythm, and Bayou acknowledges that Wazi is closer to unlocking his full potential, while Wazi just obtained a new profession, called Magic Swordsman. On the other hand, the Grandmaster Blade Mantis is now serious, so it uses its ability called Oscillation. Now the speed of it greatly increased. 
the two of them both charged at the same time, and at the speed which only a few can reach. The mantis strikes, but Wazi dodge it, and now he is behind the mantis, so he didn't waste his opportunity to attack it. But now the mantis is in rage, as it counter-attack with multiple strikes, which Wazi was able to dodge, utilizing his ability to transform. Then he leaps towards the mantis and uses spore explosion to hide his whereabouts. But the mantis learned from his mistakes so he waits for Wazi to appear. So when Wazi emerged from the clouds of spore to attack it, the mantis can now clearly see Wazi. So without hesitations it separates Wazi's head from his body, which shocked the three immensely. Unexpectedly, multiple of spore clone Wazi emerged from the spore clouds. This confuses both Piggy and Kage as they asks what happened, while the multiple spore clone Wazi uses their abilities simultaneously and confuse the blade mantis. Now that the mantis was overwhelmed by the multiple clones in front of it, it just decided to cleave its way to lessen the clones, but it wasn't enough, as Wazi proudly claims that this is his new ability, and it is called the Mushroom King's Regal Spore, and uses fourfold mushroom sword dance, and successfully strike the Grandmaster Mantis, completely defeating it. After that, his spore clones vanished, and the system congratulated him for defeating an elite monster, and he has received 15,000 experience points, and he increased his heritage ability, Regal Spore to level 10. This outcome makes him happy, making him blush. At the same time, Piggy is happy for him. Then Bayou states that, every cloud has a silver lining. The Regal Spore can only be used to spawn the most basic mushroom monster, but because Wazi's form is also locked to that form, those spawns can also transform into a human. He is likely the only Mushroom King that could do this. So, she concludes that the Mushroom Tribe is in good hands, which Kage 100% agrees with her. A few moments pass by, the Blade Mantis Tribe bows as a sign of respect. As Wazi's group leaves the place, Wazi just discovered that Kage and the Grandmaster Mantis know each other, to which Kage tells him that, they met when his master and him was training in the Tempest Grasslands, and the Grandmaster Mantis hadn't evolved at that time. Then he tells Wazi that it is enough of talking and orders him to move faster. Bayu was just informed that Wazi has an ability that shows him a map, so she asks Wazi, how far is the Source Volcano from their location? Therefore, Wazi looks at his map and tells them that they are still quite far away. Based on their speed so far, it will take them about six more days. To which Bayu responds that it is too slow, and Kage shouts at Wazi, as he asks how can he still run at the same speed. That is the previous him, he has already improved so much, so Kage decided that he has only three days to reach the Source Volcano, which Wazi realizes what Kage is saying is right, he is stronger now, and with his improvement, Piggy, Bayu, and Kage, might be able to snatch a tablet from Gollum's apostles, so with this, he happily picked up the cart, and went on their way. The closer they got to their destination, the more bandits and ferocious monsters appeared, but Piggy and Wazi were able to beat them back without any problem. And now, Wazi is at level 62, and Piggy is at level 60, and they are more powerful than ever before. A few moments pass by, the system reminds them that they have a mission yet to be turned in, and a gold inn is nearby, so it asks them if they would like to visit the nearby gold inn, to which they decide to go since it is just on the way. Inside the Gold Inn, Wazi tells them that, it will be quick, so he asks them to sit down first, and to promise not to cause trouble, to which Kage tells him to just do that and reminds him not to forget to ask for information about their targets. Without wasting time, Wazi went over to the owner, and turned in a mission. Hence, the owner looks at the mission information, and see that all the mission takers have completely disappeared. No one has yet come to collect the bounty, as he is the only one to collect the bounty after their designated collection time, he will be given the entire reward. After receiving it, he is reminded about Muscle Uncle, so he feels sad, but Piggy is with him, so she comforts him, which he appreciates. The owner then shows some of the new missions, so he gladly looks at it. However, he is surprised to see there are so many missions to kill monsters attacking cities. Moreover, all of them are high difficulty missions, the owner explained that there'd been a sudden increase in unknown and vicious monsters in the Tempest Grasslands. They have destroyed many towns. Although the Sword Saint Guild has already sent out members to slay these monsters, there are too many incidents too far apart for them to handle everything in time. So, some towns are still in danger, 
he reminds Wazi that a monster that can destroy an entire town is not to be trifled with. He can look at all the adventurers here and see for himself. Even the six great guilds have suffered casualties. Wasi states that he originally planned on taking a mission on the way, but he thinks it is better to avoid unnecessary trouble. Suddenly Kage appeared beside Wasi and called him an idiot, and asked him what is he afraid of, and no matter how strong those monsters are, can they be stronger than the enemies they would face? So he told Wasi to just take it as the next part of his training, to which Wasi realized what Kage is saying is right, since he is not the same as before. Worst comes to worst, there is also Bayu and Kage with him. With this he is now confident to see just how difficult an S-ranked mission is. Therefore he asked the owner, what is the monster closest to the route leading to the source volcano? The owner responds that the closest monster on that route should be mission number 3, and the difficulty is A rank. But before he could finish what he is saying, Wazi accepts the mission. Then Adrian drunkenly approaches Wazi from behind, surprising both Wazi and Piggy, while he tells Wazi that they have also taken that mission, and asks him to come with them, to which Wazi politely refuses, but Adrian is so drunk to understand personal space, and keeps pestering Wazi, as Adrian tells him that they are also from the Walrus Ivory Guild and they are very very strong, but luckily Adrian had too much to drink, so he collapses on the spot. So his guildmates picked him up, and apologized to Wazi's group, for Adrian's behavior, but suddenly Ely Fei appeared in front of them, and she stated that, on the way here, they went to all the places that were being attacked by these unknown monsters, although the Sword Saint Guild members had already cleared the battlefield, but judging from the traces left and the amount of destruction, those unknown monsters are no joke, and as she was talking, Wazi notices her ears, he concludes that she is from the Fey tribe, so he uses appraisal on her, now he sees that she is only a level 33 spirit archer, while Ilifei still has the audacity to suggest that, they should forget about going there, and to not overestimate themselves, otherwise, they will only be heading towards their own death. Wazi thanks her for the reminder, while he was thinking to himself that, this is his first time meeting someone from the Fey tribe, however, her level is too low, but the way she talks and the fact that she is part of a big guild, made Wazi assume that she is just hiding her strength. Meanwhile, Elifei's words trigger Kage, so he tells her that he will cut her down, and then they will see who is overestimating themselves, to which Wazi tries to defuse the situation, but Bayu steps up and tells them to let her handle this. So Bayu went over to Elifei, and call her little girl, as she states that, since she is a member of that arrogant Fei tribe, then, her profession must be some type of ranger, as it so happens, she is somewhat of a sharpshooter herself, and when Bayu is close enough to Ely Fei, she asks her if she dares to have a match with her, to which Ely Fei replies that she doesn't scare her. Suddenly a spear guy appears in the scene and asks Ely Fei not to cause trouble, since they are about to set out, he asks her to just focus on the mission at hand, to which Ely Fei is annoyed by his presence. The spear guy, introduced himself to be, a combat instructor of the Walrus Ivory Guild, and his name is Eugene Gate. He is also Elifei's team leader, so he explained that she's got a sharp tongue, but she does not mean anything bad. As her instructor, he apologized in her stead, but suddenly he noticed Bayu's beauty, and was mesmerized by her. So he kneels on one knee, and rephrases what he said, and since their destination is the same, he asks politely to allow him to escort Bayu, and calls her beautiful miss, to which Bayu coldly tells him to scram, by her instant rejection, he now likes her even more. Ely Fei calls him an idiot, and tells him that she won't waste any more time here, as she leaves the scene. So he stands up, and since they are all headed to Lift Station Town, he will see Bayu again, and he will be sure to wow her with his valiant figure in battle in their next meeting. It won't be too late to accept him then. So, he says his farewell and went on his way. As Eugene is leaving, Bayu asks if Wazi also detects it to which he responds that he senses an aura of a monster on his body. Kage states that it is not just any monster, it is a dragon. Bayu adds that, being able to tame a dragon is not a small feat, that person is anything but weak. Now Wazi knows he is a legendary dragon knight, speaking of which, he doesn't think he has ever met a monster of the dragon species yet. Kage responds, so what if it's a dragon, the last time one of those tried to attack the Mushroom Kingdom, he made it into a side dish for his alcohol. Bayu tells them that they should also get going, otherwise, 
Wazi's mission target might get stolen by them, which Wazi was excited about, since he kinda wants to see a Dragon Knight in action. A few moments passed by, they were now inside the lift station town, and people were running around in panic. Bayou couldn't believe a single monster had done this to a human town. With no time to waste, they decided to go to where the battle is, while Piggy and Wazi feel an uncomfortable magic fluctuation emanating from that direction. After they arrive at the scene, Bayou asks Wazi to switch to his monster form, to not expose their identities for now. She commands them to try to find a higher vantage point, and she asks Kage to come with them too. Wazi asks if it is a good idea since Kage can't transform after all, which Kage didn't like to hear. Still, they traveled together anyway. Meanwhile, the monster attacks the adventurers with an energy beam, but it was deflected by Adrian with his holy bastion skill, and redirected to itself, blowing its head off, so one of the faces on its waist withers away, and the monster regenerates, but before it could attack again, Ili Fei follows up with Arrow Dance of the Butterfly's skill, hitting several magic arrows into its chest, so another face withers away, the assassin follows up with double rotating slash, but his attacks weren't effective, and his enchanted purple viper daggers were dulled, now the monster got its chance to retaliate, so it spits acidic vomit towards the assassin, but it was nullified by a fire magic flame wall, by Edmund, then he states that, this monster seems to be some kind of fish species, it has a thick layer of mucus covering its scales, which allows it to mitigate physical damage, if they want to damage it, all they gotta do is burn off all the mucus, so he cast a firewall that burned the monster, now it is vulnerable to physical attacks and is weakened, a dragon pulse ability pierced its heart, now Eugene appears at the scene, riding a dragon, and without hesitation, he descends and uses dragon soul spear strike to end the monster, the townspeople were amazed and celebrated, since they believed the monster was now defeated, while from the rooftop, Wasi was amazed to see the fierce attack of the dragon knight, but Kage was disappointed, since he thought Eugene tamed a powerful dragon, but it turned out it is just a common one, while Bayou states that it was too flashy. Humans love to waste their magic power on this sort of flashy yet inefficient attack. At the same time, the other adventurers celebrate their victory as they assume that their job is finished. Edmund praises Lord Eugene, worthy of being a dragon knight, while Ili Fei boasts that she will surpass Eugene very soon, but their fight is far from over as the spear of Eugene was thrown in front of them, and when they look up, they saw Eugene is being entangled by the tentacles of the monster, while his magic power is being drained. In a pinch, he calls for his dragon, so it formed a fire in its mouth to attack, but it got pierced instead, but the monster's attack wasn't finished, as its tentacles slashes downwards, slicing the dragon in half. Shock can be seen on Eugene's face. At the same time, the other adventurers launched their powerful attack to help Eugene escape, which also made things hard for them to see, as dust covered the place. Still, Adrian felt something was coming over, so he stepped forward to block the attack, but the monster is now more powerful than ever before, therefore it pierces his shield, killing both Adrian and the assassin. Adrian's last words are to warn his guildmates to run and save themselves, but, Ely Fay was too shocked to even move, so Edmund went to her and cast his magic barrier to deflect the attack, but the monster was too much for them to handle, so the barrier breaks, and both of them were knocked out. Hit that like button and thanks for watching.